and welcome to another day of Overwatch Champion Series. We are back here in Korea. We have a very different look and a very new face to this broadcast, but one that if you've been paying attention to Overwatch for a long time, will be very well versed with. Hello, Hex. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, it's good to be here. A new old face and old in, in the nice way, I want to I wanna say. But it's been so fun to watch what you guys are colloquially referring to as Apex Season 5. I'm down for that. Um, but I'm just really excited uh, to see more Korean Overwatch. It's, it's, it plays at such a different level. I'm excited to be back here with you. I'm just stoked, man. Hopefully we have uh, games tonight that... Well, don't have a three on one side and a zero on the other. That's all I'm hoping. That's what our fingers are certainly crossed for. And, and hopefully these teams will be able to deliver it. We'll get into the, the, the minutia of who is going to be playing in a little bit of time. But yeah, it's been across all of the regions essentially been just dominant on one side and it's just struggle streak for the other teams. So as we go deeper into the tournaments, obviously things are going to start getting closer. We started to see a couple more close knit matches over in Pacific as well. But here, I mean, the reverse sweeps, the five mappers, those sort of things have widely been avoiding us. I think we've only had one map five series so far across all three of the regions, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe tonight can deliver as we get ready to dive into the action and not, of course, see tons of more familiar faces that have been you know, over in the Overwatch and competing in contenders and whatnot, now all culminating in with this tournament. Right, and it is a little misleading, as Overwatch often is, especially at the highest levels, that 3-0, people are like, do I even need to watch it? It's like, eh, there's a couple sets you should definitely still watch. Like, the 3-0 yeah. is, you know, there's still been great uh, series, I think, you know, when you open it up, uh, I think Falcon's Runaway, was that, was that the one you guys opened up with? That was a banger that you should definitely watch. And then there's there's a bunch of really good Overwatch being played, and it's really interesting to how, see how these teams are approaching the meta. A, a lot of similar approaches, a couple wrinkles here and there, but the meta is kind of settled in a weird way. It is, and it's in Korea, it's always been somewhat more uniform. You know, you think back in the, yeah. the history books, like, yes, there were always those teams like Meta Athena all the way back in the original season of Apex and whatnot that were doing some crazy things, doing some innovations that we didn't really uh, expect. But widely, shakeups have always just kind of been around the release of a, of a new hero. And we haven't really had that uh, too recently. Malga, obviously, in there, we've seen him a little bit to some varying success. But usually right. with Korean Overwatch, is, you're going to look to min-max things and say like, okay, this is the maximum output. This is the safest comp that we can run while outputting this much damage and also sustaining things. So we're going to be running this. It's kind of like assembling a, a raid composition in World of right. Warcraft. You know, you, you run the simulations, you figure out what the best is, and then you stick with it. Right. Well, I mean, I think a lot of it is just the, the, the game changed so much with the new season, right? And the new patch and the uh, the DPS passive especially. We've gone from um, sustaining people, you know, with healing to utility and mobility. That's, that's really the crux of what you're trying to get down to. You can't just heal bot anymore. It doesn't really work. I've seen a couple teams try compositions that rely a little bit on that, but that's why you've just got, like, I don't know, I'm thrilled. I always think the meta's the healthiest when Tracer and Lucio are being played, and they're at nearly 100% pick rate right now. Yeah, I mean, very few teams are uh, willing to stray away from that. Every now and then you'll get the rare, you know, somebody swaps off the Tracer, goes for like the, the, the Sojourn or even the Genji, that yeah. sort of thing. Uh, but we'll take a look at the standings at the moment. And as we can see, I mean, you know, known quantities have been in the tier two scene, you know, previously for a very long time, but Simprisa off to some pretty rocky starts, haven't been able to rack up a map of themselves, but Falcons kind of as expected, the team that's out in front, but this could always change as we go deeper into this tournament. Yeah, and oh, you definitely want to watch all three days because I, I don't think we have Genesis tonight, but they're a team I had my eye on. Um, Decay is on that team and he had a carry performance. They just couldn't really put it together in a weird way. So yeah. it's still so early right now that you don't know if an 0-1 is really that much. And then the map pool is uh, vast, but we've only really seen a couple of different maps so far in the Korean region. Yeah, and I mean, the majority of that is because we just haven't gotten to Flashpoint and Escort. <laughs> so true. it feels way more condensed. It feels like we're seeing so much of the same things over and over again because it's always just been these you know these three zero series that are coming through so i'm hoping that we can get those closer sets we can see a bit more of Servas and new junk city as well as just any of the escort maps because like i said i think we've <laughs> only had one set so far that went that distance yeah. that was over in the japanese region and we got to see circuit royale and then that's basically been it otherwise it has been bust for close series but these are our matchups here today we're going to have for the gamer coming out here or to start things off, going up against Yeti, then Poker Face versus Vec, and then Runaway versus Imprison. 
Yeah, and so on paper, a lot of these, I was trying to search for like, what's the one that's not gonna be a 3-0? I think it's our first match actually has the best chance of it going forward, um, but you definitely wanna stick around. I think Poker Face is a team that if they're not beating a squad like Beck right now, then you're a little more worried. They're, they've had some tough matchups early on, and then everyone's gonna stick around just to watch Runaway do Runaway things. It's like the team that uh, everyone just always feels the nostalgia for. SPG, uh, SPG Simpresa has been kind of running into the buzzsaw so far in their matchups, and uh, it'd be nice to just have a good showing against uh, Runaway Squad. Yeah, I think that that's something that they certainly need. It would be the most runaway thing to just kind of come out and bomb in that series after playing Falcons very closely, <laughs> though. So uh, we'll have to right. keep our eyes trained on that because Runner is still there. That that int mentality could very well come back through at any given moment there from the squad, but that's for a different time. For now, we will just bring FTG out onto the stage where they can take their vows. I mean, I, I, another one of these squads that has just been a mishmash of just stacked players from top to bottom coming together here, uh, you know, during the off season and now qualifying into OWS. Yeah, even the staff is stacked. I mean, you've got Neko and Yaki as the coaching staff for this team. Uh, obviously, longtime veterans. Um, we'll get into the rosters a little bit more as Yeti will now take the stage. Work their way out here and see what kind of hot start these guys can have. As it's. I, I, you know, I've been talking so much like ad nauseum about it every time I've been on the broadcast with Wolf, but it's just incredible. Uh, it, it feels to just kind of like see these players again back on stage. Yeah. You know, the, the, the teams are different. Their colleagues are different. A lot of these guys are playing with each other for the very first time. Some of them, you know, coming back together after a long time apart, being on separate squads during OWL. Uh, but just being able to see the players once more in studio here in Korea has been just absolutely incredible, I think, for pretty much everybody. It just feels right. Even as a viewer has not been to the studio just yet, we'll see. I'll, I'll see if, how plane tickets look. Here is the roster for FTG. Damage Alfie Flora. We've got Bernard. Uh, Bellas Rhea has uh, come in a little bit, not played a ton, then Finn and Violet. Uh, Alfie and Flora, I always thought, didn't necessarily get the, the fairest shake in the Overwatch League. I thought they were just such individual great talents that ended up on squads that were going through transitions or didn't have the right pieces around them. And then Bernard, I believe you likened him to Paul G. Amati. He's just it. always been there. <laughs> yeah, I did. Never, you know, not really ever the, the, the star struggling to get those nominations and whatnot. Hasn't quite been able to get that Oscar now is potentially up for one though with his latest movie but yeah I, that's that was the closest thing that came to my brain at the time <laughs> uh, you know you had me in stitches there uh here's yeti's roster uh obviously names that we all know as well but i'm one of the interesting things about yeti and a couple other rosters is no chance for swaps especially at that tank position so yeah um, you're gonna have the tank play you know everything yeah, I mean, Donghak, he's got to be that jack of all trades. I mean, we've been seeing this with multiple squads. Runaway is another one of them where it's just like, okay, we don't have a substitute tank. So if it does come down to that off tank gameplay, which we saw a little bit of it, uh, some to decent success with Zarya over in Japan as well, uh, playing into the Doomfist and really finding value, you need to be able to bring those out if it's super necessary. So uh, we'll see how Donghak is going to be progressing as we go deeper throughout this tournament and whether or not he does have that super deep hero pool to be able to contest with some of the other squads that do have those backup techs. Yeah, there's there's only really been a couple of teams so far in, in this specific region that have tried to run different tanks and it hasn't worked out to a great degree. Who knows though, the meta could shift at any given time and then you're, you're just relying on the one person. That's why some of these really high-end squads have two tanks that you're like, oh, they're both the best tanks in the world. So a lot falling on the tank shoulder um, in this meta and really in Overwatch 2 as a whole. Yeah. But I mean, it's, I am curious and I'm wondering if it's going to happen in the later season. I'm, once again, I'm talking about Runaway, but uh, I'll have to hold that thought because we're actually going to be hearing from the coaches in a new segment. So we'll go ahead and throw down to the stage and throw over to Quest for the translation. Thank you very much, casters. What's good, y'all? Uh, my name is Quest, and I am here to not only bring you the player interviews, but also the uh, the team representative interviews. So first, we have FTG's team representative. Please introduce yourself. And I am the coach for FTG, Yaki. I hope I pronounced that right. And next we have the team representative for Team Yeti. And my name is Fate. Uh, I am the coach for Team Yeti. 
Two teams and both teams are on a roll in for OWCS Korea, and it's going to be a heated match between the two teams. How did you approach the map veto? And we chose the maps that where we thought that we could play into our player strengths and discarded the maps that were weak to. And for Team Yeti, we also chose maps where we could be, we could showcase a lot of the strengths and diminish a lot of our weaknesses. From the fans' POV, seeing a lot of uh, seeing a variety of heroes adds a lot of flavor to the match. Yet so far, a lot of the same heroes have been played. So please share your insight on this matter. A lot of the heroes that are, have been used for the dive comp, like Kiriko and Lucio, um, are in the meta right now. And for today, and I think that there are some comps that we prepared for today, so we're we'll showcasing a little bit more variety. And for Team Yeti, from the pro team's perspective, we have to play into what, is, what just works in the meta. And I th but I think that a lot of the matchups are going to be a little different from today. So we'll be also should be showcasing a little bit more variety. Uh, which players on the opponent's teams that both teams are especially wary, wary of, of ahead of today's match? And for FTG, uh, he says that Viper is the one that's most wary of. And he thinks that if he's just wary of Viper, then there won't be any particular threats. For Team Yeti, I think that Bernard is the core member of the team, and he holds the team together. And for the rest of the members, I think that we will be able to push through through superior skirmishing. What are the key strengths of your teams for T FTG? We're all good. <laughs> We're all good players. Fundamentally, I think that we are just very, very strong, and, and I think that very, they're very comfortable in just playing the uh, the micro game. And for Team Yeti, um, three of our players were born in the year 2005, so their micro game is on point. And our coaching staff has also been really been helping out uh, strategic wise. So a good mix of that. Uh, we believe that a good mix of that will lead to good results. And finally, do you have any words for your players before they head into the match? Any words of encouragement? Play well, bros. Play well, boys. I'm sorry. What happens if they don't play well? Oh, then they will have no mercy. He says that all with a smile. Please say a word to your players as well. Kill them all. He says. 
이렇게 살벌한 말씀을 이렇게 온화한 표정으로 하셔도 되나요? 아, 뭐 죽이는 서로 죽고 죽이는 Is it okay to say that with such a such a calm and serene face? And he says that it's just a game where you have to kill the other heroes to win. And that is the team representative interview for FTG and Team Yeti. So back to the casters. <laughs> Thank you very much, Quest, for the translations through that. Uh, some nice words, but the, I think the most staggering thing, and this kind of always happens whenever we go into a new iteration of a, a game, a new season, was the mention of two players being born in 2005. Did that shake you to your <laughs> cores as, as much as it did to me, Gex? You know, I was already feeling old watching uh, Yaki and Fate as coaches <laughs> yeah, out I there. Know, right? um, and then all, the, all of a sudden, you got, you know, born in 2005. I was like, oh, yeah, okay. I'm it's... not going to tell you what I was doing in 2005, but I wasn't being born, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I was uh, getting ready to go into high school. <laughs> I, think I was in my eighth grade. <laughs> but uh, anyway, enough about us being old heads. Let's get ready to go into this game here, as we will have Nepal for the first map. And I mean, the, of course, you know, the coaches, they usually aren't going to... We're not usually going to glean too much about strategy from when we get to talk to them. They like to play things yeah. close to the best. So them just saying, we picked maps where we can play the best is a little bit unsurprising. Well, Yaki did say they're going to try some different things. That's true. Um, I'm doubtful of it. And I also think if they try something different, like maybe a fight and it doesn't work, then it's just back to the mirror. Um, different things would be like anything that's not, I mean, essentially the, the core composition we've seen, if you're just catching up now, is uh, Tracer Echo, Doomfist, uh, Lucio, Kiri. Yep. Um, and there's a ton of different reasons for it. Like I said, it's it's not about healing damage. It's about not taking damage to begin with. And those are the heroes that have the most utility to do that. Um, you know, small wrinkles here and there. A couple teams are running uh, Junker Queen. We'll, we'll get into that when those teams come up. But neither of these teams are really doing anything out of the ordinary. I would be curious, though, to see. You know, and the one thing that I will give to Yaki, where I think it does hold some credence that he might be telling the truth, is that Bernard does have does have an incredibly deep hero pool when it comes down to playing tank. He always has. True. This is a guy who, since the beginning of his career, all the way back at the beginning of Apex and whatnot, when Overwatch Esports was effectively born, he has been able to play both, you know, that primary tank and the off tank role. So something like the Zarya, if they're fully expecting Donghak to just come out with the Doomfist, if that Zarya is going to be the solution to really break down the Doom comps, Bernard right. is so well versed as far as playing Zarya. So I could maybe see them opting to go for that sort of composition. It's just a matter of whether or not they actually pull the trigger. But I I'm right there with you. I think that if they do do that and then, you know, that first fight loss does come in, I don't see them sticking with it. I mean, to that end, though, you also have the support line to make that work, too, because Violet could end up playing a Batiste, which we've seen in Zarya comps here right. and there. Um, Violet's Batiste is one of the best I've ever seen in my life. And I mean, Violet can play everything right now. He's on Lucio and it's still frightening to watch one of the one of the most uh, what, well, one of the best supports in Overwatch history, period. Yeah, I mean, he has had some violent moments going for those uh, those beats that kind of get Ajax or ones that, you know, he drops it and then gets no value. Well, that goes back to even when he would play Zenyatta, like with San Francisco in his first year there. It's like, you take the good at the bad with Violet. You know, yes, he's going to be in front of everybody playing Zen and maybe die, but he also just killed three people. So what do you want? You know? Fair points. Take the good with the bad, but for now, looks like Bernard. Okay, shifting over, and it is going to be this Zarya composition. You mentioned the Baptiste. It will be Finn who's picking that one up here. Violet going to be sticking with the Lucio as we get the TP forwards and. Alpha Yi showing a far okay. for a brief little moment, but on the opposite side, we're getting very different looks as Donghak's coming out with a Rhine. Cassidy to back it up as well from Knife. Yeah, very different composition so far. We haven't seen this yet in the region, but uh, the Rhine Zarya matchup used to be best friends when there were two tanks. Now they're mortal enemies. One on the opposite side of the other. As for now, FTG just trying to wrap around the point, get themselves into a position where they can actually go for the challenge. Viper harassing here into the back line, duking it out with Alpha E. Both of them going to be taking a little bit low. Both of them going to be popping those recalls to try to stay alive. Floor now, able to find the opening kill as Knife does get taken out. Cassidy on the board, fire strike through, taking him low with the immortality fields there from FTG to try to keep everybody alive. Cleaned up on the opposite side though is Yeti as they're just plus forwarding in onto Irony, onto Bliss, finding the supports, and that is going to be a very fast flip back into the favor of FTG. 
Yeah, we talk about mitigation, and it's uh, those bubbles are huge mitigation. Also, to get your damage up, but the immortality field is really what takes over in that kind of instance. Finn dropped a perfect immortality field, and it's also the damage that a Batiste can put out is absolutely insane. Uh, a really interesting wrinkle. I spent a lot of time prepping and watching the matches that uh, had already been played, and now I feel a little out of the water. We'll catch up. <laughs> I mean, it's refreshing, if nothing else. <laughs> True. Yes, we'll see if these... Ults getting ready to come online. I gotta be able to find some impact. Violet already building up very quickly towards that sound barrier. Bliss is gonna get taken down. Ant Matrix invested, but now the shielding is there from the side of FTG, so they can just fully disrespect this. Flora getting on top of everybody, coming up with two kills as the cleanup continues. Just need to try to find Pfeiffer. We'll be able to get a parting kill there, but it is all red in the kill feed as FTG hold their ground. Another full value immortality field from Finn. Everyone very low, keeps them alive. They, they're unable to clean up the immortality fields. Everyone's up, everyone's fine, and now you're going to have Grav versus Shatter on the tank end of things. And what's big is that Finn can drop a window and it just forces Yeti to leave. Well, Deadeye for now, Bubbles going through, chasing forward, using that speed boost to try to find something. In the meantime, Pulse Bomb does go out, just going to be absorbed by that immortality field. But Donghak now fall, and Bliss is able to find one. His floor will get taken out, but Bernard is trained, beams coming through. 100 energy means that he is damn scary. This time, it's Bernard's time in the spotlight. Gets three, still holds on to the Graviton Surge as FTG continue to hold now, getting ready to move past 80%. Yeah, and Zarya got that mid-season buff too, which is the patch that we're playing on. So even more damage when you're at that high end. And 100% Zarya has never been anything to scoff at. Now even a little bit more dangerous. You might just throw Grav before they can even get on the point here. We'll see. For now, it's going to be that Deadeye escorting forward. They will just give up space, so respecting the ultimate, not wanting to give line of sight as Violet has played a very dangerous game with that jump across. Flip will come through. Deadeye buying them just enough space, just enough time, but now the grab getting the catch on a three. Sound barrier going to be invested as Bliss tries to keep everybody alive. The immortality field swiftly dealt with on either team. It's fire strike through. Donghak able to find Flora, and Finn gets taken down. Three members remaining here for the side of FTG as Violet's just desperately trying to get his way out to safety. With the help of the bubble, he will be able to do so. But Bernard will go down, will get that reset in. For now, Yeti can try to hold. It is one of the downsides of playing Azaria in these matchups, though, is because your power level varies so wildly based on if you stayed alive during a fight and you're setting up, or you have to come in with absolutely zero. And these professionals are trained pretty much not to always shoot the bubble, or if you're going to shoot the bubble, break it and kill the Zarya. Alpha E's got the Pulse Bomb. It's the only ult on the field, but importantly, FTG is the best ult in the field coming up in the Sound Barrier. Nearly have that one ready to go. Irony for now, though, looking to just push forward, get that extra healing coming through as they pile in on top of FTG. But now, Sound Barrier there on the back end. Violet looking to try to escort them forward. Because they want this flip and they want to go and get the take on the point. Low HP here is Donghak Pulse Bomb, not even needing to be invested to find that elimination. He just gets taken down. The, oh, oh man, the push forward, the stick, knife is gone. Deadeye in the meantime, just softening up the remaining members here of Yeti as OT starts to bleed down. Viper dashing back through, extends it for a little bit longer, but he himself low on HP. Donghak now going to be rejoining here, coming back on that Doom Fist, but with no help, nobody around him. He will just get swiftly taken down, and the first round here of Shrine will go the way of FTG. Yeah, the cast through the window, pulling that up. Huge damage going there. A nice stick, too. Uh, got hindered with a grenade. If that was old flashbang, it might be a little bit different. It is not. Um, I don't actually know if he got hindered because he was able to recall. But nice sticks there. And uh, we're seeing the dawn, at least, of some new type of composition. Um, and right now, I think just the Zarya was able to get much bigger value in the, the amount of damage that teams are able to put out. Not sure where Ryan fits in this meta, but I'm willing to uh, give it a shot. You see him yeah. just get chased down and then you get behind. Yeah, almost got hindered. Very solid performance there. And it looks like the changeups are <laughs> going to continue. As yeah. Surely, I was going to say Bliss, there's no shot that you're actually going to be playing the uh, Life Weaver here. Will be Sojourn on the one side here. Is Knife going to be coming through with that one? Arisa matchup between the tanks, but I mean, very different looks between the two squads. I mean, Arisa got completely reworked, but this used to be an Arisa map no matter what. You just fight over the stairs. Fight over the stairs, try to take angles, set up your long range hit scan to be able to do some work. Arisa battle here, golds down. Low HP here between both of these tanks. The pullback, though, is Donghak Ken trying to play around that mega pack, but you can see Violet in the back line harassing and getting kills. Found <laughs> Bliss, found Donghak, and now the point very much opened up here for the taking for FTG. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Irony here. The the Tracer 
Zenyatta matchup has always been an interesting one, but now with Zen being a little more survivable, but Tracer also being a little bit more damage dealing, it's been fun to watch, but I still would be very hesitant to play a Zen here. And we've only seen a little bit of Sojourn. It's a good map if you're going to play at the long range hit stand, though. Is, but need to get into a position to find some value. In the meantime, Bernard getting very far forward to get into a great position. Now just body blocking there so the heals can't come through on the Donghak. He ends up getting taken out as the kills will be found. Bliss going to be eliminated. Cleanup continuing there as Irony will get dropped. Viper as well for some added stagger. As it looks like they are going to be chasing and trying to find Knife, but looks like he will just barely make it out. And Immortality Field is an ability that you have to track like an ultimate. And teams are investing things to make sure that Immortality comes out. Maybe you back around a corner for a second and wait for it to go away. Maybe you kill it. But Immortality can turn a fight instantly. You saw it come down early and get absolutely abused there. FTG, <laughs> I mean, they're just kind of... I want to say spawn camping, it's door camping. It's just as bad on this map. Yeah, I mean, holding so far forward, Floor with a headshot, able to find Vipers. That Ant Matrix is just used to try to push them forward right into the entryway, but then they're shoved straight back. Was nearly getting picked off. Don't have now needing to use that deflection just to be able to get himself out to safety. And as they get ready to push forward once again, I mean, the Terra Surge there to greet them. They do have a transcendence to try to survive it, but they need to get something going quickly. It's 75% right now. Yeah, I... There we go. Knife is going to kick it off. Gets Violet, but a trade comes in quickly. But Violet being down is really bad for FTG. Okay, Immortality Field Bliss still in a bad spot. Trying to utilize this Discord Orb put up. And they will be able to find Bernard. Irony coming to the rescue there. As Finn will also get dropped. Dead Eye quick pop there from Flora. Snapshot he does take down Viper once more. For now, the point flip will be coming through. Yeti in a, with a semblance of control. But having to use a hell of a lot just to get to this point. Bernard's Orissa has just been unstoppable. There's really, he has no problem going into the back line. And now that uh, the ultimate is up as well, it's going to be very dangerous. Going to have to play around the horse in this composition if you're Yeti. You back out if you see Bernard with his eyes on you. All right, well now. Stair control. Yep, stair control. Mega pack here in the hands of Yeti for the time being. Bliss does get that AI Matrix back up, pops out immediately, and Knife is able to find a kill. Pulse Bomb Lob in from Alfie, not able to find anything, but does apply enough pressure into the back line to be able to find that Transcendence. So they force out the other support ultimate, but things still very much are going the way of Yeti. As the cleanup can continue, slide forward, look for any additional staggers, and none will be found. For now, they're holding the ground firmly, but as they get ready to stave off another wave, the Ant Matrix is available for Finn. Okay, Violet's going to switch over to the Kiri here as they just dropped the beat and it got absolutely nothing done. Still only a single fight away for FTG if they can pull it off and still ultimates to use. If you end up using Windows as a zoning ultimate, that's fine. You have to get in position to get your tank in a good spot. If they can use it and actually get on the approach over towards the point to drop that Ant Matrix rather than force them off the stairs, that would be the highest value for them and could enable them to just be able to get the flip. Overclock now going to be online. Knife popping that one immediately, putting some shots across there into Finn, trying to pressure him off his own Ant Matrix. In the meantime, Alpha Yi and, and uh, Viper, rather, duking it out a little bit over here on the point. Join in, Violet, able to get away from that pulse bomb. Stick not going to be found. So Viper ends up getting taken out, and that's going to be a man advantage here for the side of FTG as the flip does begin. Push forward, though, trying to get on top of Flora. Fan in the hammer, just desperately trying to survive, but Donghak popping that terror surge is going to be able to find Finn. Now Flora going to be taken down. Alpha Yi swinging back through. South Donghak, so the main tank eliminated here. Blitz now gone, means no supports available for the side of Yeti. Knife will fall, the cleanup continuing here as the Terra Surge may not need to be invested at all. Just shoving Viper back. And now, OT going to start bleeding away faster and faster. The rest of the team looking to rejoin, but Viper now getting dropped. The jump forward, Donghak getting the tag in, in the punch. Lightspeed like slams his way back up here onto the high ground, but there's just no way. The healing throughput with that Senyata is just not going to be high enough, so he ends up falling down. That means that FTG are going to be able to take the opening map of Nepal 2-0. Well, interesting compositions, and I'm here for it. Uh, not to say I was getting bored of the, the Doom dive, but that was super interesting on both sides, and it seemed like they were both ready for it. So maybe in the, the one week between these matches, uh, something has happened and something has changed. Might just be a control thing. We've seen that happen before, but control has its very own meta. Uh, there was a moment, though, where the Tracers are 1v1-ing, and then Violet comes in on the Kiri, and that's why Kiri is Tracer's new most hated support. You think you're in an honorable 1v1, all of a sudden they teleport in and you get that uh, that Shuri to the face. But just really impressive uh, Orisa play from uh, Bernard. Like, it's just really good. Uh, and it's kind of interesting because we've seen Velos Rhea play the Orisa before as well. So, oh, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, the, the Velos Rissa has happened before, or the, the Balos Rhea. 
Uh, it's, a great, a, it's got a couple uh, it's, different it's a great, names. It's a great name to be able to add on to any sort of different tank name. Um, but you still see the the tracer being played almost 100%, just too good right now. S plus tier has been in kind of the rankings of that hero. But uh, really interesting to see the Sojourn come out. I think what I like about those different compositions is I like when um, control is played very differently on each each stage. Um, and the one stage plays very differently from the other. And we saw that. But I think right there, that was just kind of an Orisa difference. And even towards the end, Bernard didn't even have to use uh, the Terror Surge. Yeah, I was just able to hold on to it. But I mean, I'm a man of many talents. And, and like you mentioned, I mean, it's worth saying, I mean, Phyllis Rhea last season playing Orisa, he was looking like maybe the best in the world. His, his spear accuracy right. was insane, just constantly getting those pins, getting that, that, act, that extra damage. Um, and the fact that Bernard is just like, well, you know, I can play this as well. This is a map with sub maps where we need to be able to flip between that and the Zarya right. if we want to go for a battle plan. He said Bernard's stocks continue to go up. I mentioned that Zarya off the rip because I just saw it. The stars were aligning <laughs> for him to be able to play this one. But we are going to be going to a quick little break before we get into map number two. So don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back. We are back, see, not too long of a break at all. Don't want to keep you guys waiting. We're ready to get right back into the action, of course, ourselves, as we have King's Row coming up here for our hybrid map pick. 
yeah, I mean, you either get a break or uh, you have to listen to us talk about irreverent movie details. So, I mean, really, <laughs> let's put a poll in chat. Uh, we'll see, and I'm sure you'd much prefer the break. Uh, before we get into like, King's Row is obvious. We've seen King's Row be played pretty much constantly, although nothing's obvious to me now after spending two days prepping for a specific composition. Now, we'll, we'll see. See how it all goes. Uh, it's Yeti's pick on King's Row. We've only seen Blizzard World once. Um, we've seen a little bit of Hollywood. I actually don't think we've seen Blizzard World at all, maybe. Um, uh, we saw Midtown once. Anyway, it's been a king's world. We're just living in it. I did want to go back to your point about uh, Bernard being the one to play the Arissa, uh, whereas mm. Bellas Rio is probably the best Arissa in the world the year before. How valuable of an asset is that, though, to have uh, the best Arissa in the world and be like, look, I might have to play this on a stage or two because I'm going to be playing the Zarya. Can you help me? Right. And now you're getting mentorship from the best Arissa in the world. And it just elevates both of them. That's It's got to be something you consider when you're building a roster. Yeah, I mean, and I, I think it has been working out here for them. I mean, Bernard looking damn clean in that opening map. I mean, you know, a couple maybe minor mistakes, some oversteps on the Orisa, you know, in the second round. But the Zarya pretty much played to perfection, only really getting uh, energy cycled once, uh, you know, sent back to that, that spawn room. So with a brief little amount of control for the side of Yeti, but otherwise was looking as clean as the, the day that he first debuted it. And I'm thinking back, you know, Wolf was mentioning this when Bernard came through. Uh, for their opening game. This is the guy that was a part of, you know, the first ever Big Bang <laughs> right. combination. And I believe it happened on King's Row. So let's see if it comes through once again as we jump into map number two. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a much more elegant way of saying grab, uh, grab pulse, right? In comms, they don't say Big Bang, but we're here to entertain on the broadcast here. We'll see if it ends up coming to fruition. This might be a map where they go back to the tried and true. So far, Yeti is... Uh, locked into the composition that we were all expecting that we've seen about 80 85 percent of the time so far in the korean region um ftg obviously doesn't have to make any choices just yet as far as their comp goes we have seen a little bit of brig there we go <laughs> full-on concert cam just going for the, uh, the whole the seraphim set up here oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Got to give the people what they want. They even timed it pretty well. Yeah, they're, they're pretty on point with that one. But okay, here's the swaps over to what we were kind of expected because Bernard is again going to be anticipating that there's going to be a Doomfist on the opposite side and he will be correct. Flora not really going to be sticking around too much on that. Widowmaker trying to find some value. We'll just be going for the quick swap over onto the Cassidy. Okay, yeah, still the, the Lucio Tracer, pretty much 100% pick rate. You just have to. They're too good right now. But a mix-up right in the middle otherwise. And it seems like Yeti's a little caught off guard. They're going to back up and try to rotate through the hotel and catch this cast. Right, looking for the die four there on a floor. Right? Able to just roll away from it. Mag grenade lobbed into the back line, just helping to get a little bit of additional peel as well. So jump forward coming through here. Longha kind of splitting the attention of the team on the side of FTG. And that's going to be Alpha Yi getting taken down. Nice double punch, finding Finn and Violet. His knife in the meantime, just going for the beam. Couple does come up, but Bernard eventually, as it expires, will get taken down. So the cleanup will be found here. So good opening defense from the side of Yeti. Piper will get dropped in the back end, but he can very quickly rejoin. Yeah, Knife able to drop three there, and uh, Knife was a player uh, highly touted, never really got the, the huge chance to shine that everyone was expecting, but now is that time for sure. The Echo looking really, really strong, despite having uh, several decent hit scan against uh, Knife, but if you know Kings well enough, you know there's there's definitely places you can hide vertically. Oh boy, Flora, around in that corner. This Violet will just be the recipient of a rocket punch. Lunghak, though, look, not looking to overextend. Jumps back around. Everybody corralled right now inside of Hotel here for the side of Yeti, but that's going to be the go button coming through as Ant Matrix will be invested from Finn. Clearing out the point here for the time being, but Piper coming up over the top. Has that Pulse Bomb in his back pocket. Makes his presence known, though, rather than going for the sneaky play. Just waiting for his moment to try to get this drop, and it's like, today Rush is going to be used here from Irony. Beat. Burn from the side of Violet to try to keep themselves alive into this one, but now there's going to be another Zarya into the mix as the dupe comes through from Knife. Chasing forward, looking for a target. Immortality getting cleared off. Violet and Flora instantly falling down. We might not be able to build up a grab here in this dupe, but it doesn't matter. The damage already dealt. This bin will be the last one to fall here on the back end. I say that, and then I look at the position of Renar, and now he's going to be forced even deeper in. Ends up <laughs> killing himself off with a right click. It's been so interesting to see the Echo duplicate targets uh, as they've evolved, because early on it was generally just... Uh, duplicate the tracer especially proper and then you're running two tracers on the field and and running wild but when the other team is running a different tank especially junker queen or something along those lines that's from the echo target and you saw it right there uh duplicating bernard and getting so much value uh, if you've got a tank with great utility that's almost always going to be the echo target yeah and i mean great cycling of ults 
out of the side of FTG there from Yeti. Now they have their own sound barrier to utilize here on this defense as the Meteor Strike. Hack, how aggressive does he want to go with it? Dash away. Alfie able to elude it for the time being. His immortality field going to be forced out. Violet taken low. Field gets cleaned up. Flora swinging around the side. Now sound barrier going to be used and Violet getting caught. Sticky Bomb's able to take him down. Flora, they're desperately trying to keep him protected as that Deadeye was popped, but no number of Zarya bubbles is going to be enough. He ends up getting completely swept under the rug. Bernardo once again gets sent back into the spawn room. Just find a parting kill there on to Bliss and builds up towards that Graviton search, but now it's less than a minute remaining here for FTG on the attack. Yeah, that's the tricky thing about uh, running these new compositions. You get two or three bad fights, and now you're down to it. You're back against the wall. The grab has to come out here. Uh, for them, there's really no mitigation uh, for Yeti, so it's just a matter of picking the target. The best target to pick when you can is always a Lucio. All right, well, everybody corralled here and being kept inside of this hotel as the pulse bomb comes in from viper able to find flora violet going to be taken down grav still held and will have to be held into the next round it would seem here as it's only 23 seconds remaining maybe one more chance to rally back and try to get the touch coming through here but eyes will have to be on alfie to make sure that he can extend this as everybody else just now getting spawned up well the big bang is is ready it's set to go I have the tools. Sound very as well from Violet. Now going to be online. Grab coming through. Knife going for the Duke just to try to stay alive through this one. Takes back to the skies, but Dolnhack will be eliminated. So finding one. I'll be taken down again. Early use of that immortality field. Having to be forced out from the side of FTG. For now, they will be occupying the point. They at least get that first tick coming in. Bliss fighting his time, waiting for Dolnhack to just come joining back around. He has a Meteor Strike as well, so he can play this a little bit more aggressively. Die forward coming through. Flora, Alfie going to be the target. Says it will be Flora getting taken out. The beam coming across, able to find the kill there onto the Cassidy. Bliss and Irony now going to be traded out. No supports here for the side of Yeti as they try to persevere. With one, but then taken down. Dolnhack will fall, and it seems like we're not going to be done yet. Bernard gets himself back up to 100 energy. So we'll find these eliminations, and they will get that extra two and a half minutes added to the clock. Okay, now the question is if they stay on this composition as they move forward. You see a lot of teams will switch off first into second, but uncharacteristic what we've seen so far in the region. Obviously, different meta happening right now, but usually teams are taking first point with relative ease. What Yeti has done really well against FGG so far that they didn't in the first map is focusing down these immortality fields. Finn's getting almost zero value out of them. The moment they get dropped down, they're getting eliminated, and it's one of the most valuable bit outside one of the most valuable non-ultimate abilities so they're doing a great job of focus i mean alpha you can see he's getting turned around here just too many targets shots coming from way too many directions he's getting caught there inside of the archway where bliss is able to take him down for now i mean knife with the help of dong hat can just try to just maintain this high ground advantage here for themselves no real easy way to access that for the side of ftg so that will be a concern for them and matrix gonna come out in response to this or with this beat, I should say. Because they really want to try to shove them back. And Bliss popping his at the same time. And Stonehack just continuing to slide back and forth here. Across the way, keeping this cart locked in position. Bernard, in the meantime, though, building up that energy, pushing forward. Snipe, looking for a kill. Deadeye does come through, so they have to break line of sight. Punch going to interrupt, though. Forced back with the Kitsune Rush. I mean, FTG having to show respect to this. We'll now start advancing forward once more. That grab just 16% away from being built up. As Alpha Yi again getting taken so low. That bubble coming in, not a second too late. Just managed to keep him alive and in the fight. Yeah, Yeti able to get out relatively unscathed, but the payload does keep pushing. And I think you hit the nail on the head right now. Yeti's composition so much more mobile and so much more aggressive on the vertical axis. Oh, just really hunting down this Cassidy. He desperately wants to take Laura out of here. Meteor Strike not going to be able to find the kill, though. But it's again going to be a decent amount of space taken, but now broken open as Irony falls to the Pulse Bomb. Not having that Suzu available, clearly. Knife dropped as well. I'll be giving his life for the cost. As Flora is able to clean up too with some very nice headshots here on the back end. The cart can once again resume as the team killed graphic. Should fly here in just a little moment. With 25 seconds remaining, Yeti, they will have another chance at this defense. Yeah, it's, it's almost too aggressive there. And what FTG has done in response to this is just start catching the, the ultra aggressive dive. And that's what you have to do. Instead of going forward, they wait for the Doom dive in to happen. And once Doom has hit two of his cooldowns, sitting duck. Everyone needs to converge and take him down. And they're able to do it there. The grab now online. Amp Matrix invested. Beat has been dropped. And Dong Hak going to be taken down here into the front line. So a big opener now for the side of FTG to be able to continue this push and get that extra little minute and a half. And it looks like, yeah, they will not be denied. They come back and they just get overwhelmed with ultimates. Now, it's the last ditch effort here. FTG, 1.5 minutes to try to make it to the end of the map and salvage what was looking like a full hold initially. Yeah, started off really nice. No switches from Yeti, though. They're going to try to keep this... Uh 
Echo on the high ground. It's going to be interesting to see where Finn sets up. I think Batiste can be so important. If they can get a little bit more push to take one of these high ground platforms, you already see a little battle happening up on the first one. Okay, dupe in. Knife nearly broken out of that one immediately. Does pop the recall. It's building up nicely towards that pulse pump. Now has it online. Just needs to try to find a target. And Violet is looking to give him one. Dives forward. There's the stick. He's knocked out of the park. Knife with the opening kill here as Alpha E is well going to be taken low. Vitality field coming through. Dolhak overextending though. It's getting taken out, but with Finn falling as well, there's just no support here for the side of FTG. Another follow up kill as Knife will get dropped, but not going to be too bothered by that one. As widely, FTG are going to be contained back and cannot continue a push. I mean, Alpha Yi might pick up a couple of okay. exit kills here, and that is huge to turn things around. If anything, it's at somewhere. least a couple more, yeah, a couple more beats of push. Down to the last fight here, FTG with a Baron cabinet. Maybe you can get to window, which would be enormous, but I think if you're Yeti, especially this composition, you can't play defensively. You have to wait for everyone to be up, find a dive target, isolate someone. There we go. Okay, B and Kitsune Rush, both of them stacked in. They want to end the things right here, right now. Mortality field from FTG going to be taken out. Now Finn falling here into the back line. Bliss will get picked off as Bedar is only able to find one. He's looking for a little bit more. As Irony will also fall. Supportless here on the side of Yeti. Donghak trying to hold the front line. Still a sliver of HP as the Doomfist keeps himself in the fight for the time being. But desperately needs some heals as the supports get ready to return. Viper finding Bernard moments before that grab would have come online. The shielding now gone. Violet taken down by yet another pulse bomb. And that will be the hold. So just rounding the final corner here of King's Rose as far as FGG can get. Such interesting uh, interplay between these compositions because one is not vertical, it doesn't dive, but if you group up and you, everyone's together, it's just this giant meat grinder. Uh, I mean, especially you've got the Zarya and the Cass. What are you going to do against that? It's just so much damage output, especially you have a Baptiste heading in there as well. And then on the other end, you've got Knife and Donghak just taking over the vertical aspects of the map. And you saw uh, on first point that helps a lot because a lot of teams struggle to get vertical on first point. Uh, second point helped a little bit. And then third point, they just made the right call that if there's one fight left, we can't let them set up. We can't let them go. And you're right. If they had let them set up even a little bit longer, 4%, then you're into Zarya grab territory. Another wrinkle, but this one's not necessarily new. We've seen Sigma on Kings so far in this region. So, still change up, Bernard. Just very much looking to put that hero pool here on display. It looks like Alpha, you're going to be taking back up to the skies with the Echo as well. So, a bit more of what's expected, but still with some variation, especially in that support line. So, Violet just going to be picking up that Baptiste here for themselves. And this puts a lot of attention and pressure on Finn to be able to survive. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of, a, I believe, Poker Face was the team running this for the most part. Um, but rather than a Baptiste, they would run in. Anna? Um, yeah, but a couple small variations. Sigma has seen his most plays so far on Kings, and the counterplay uh, from Yeti is going to be a D.Va, uh, also been played on Kings too, so the D.Va Sigma counters to each other have been really interesting, because D.Va can just eat up so much of the damage. Like I said, it's about mitigation, not healing. Well, there's the dive in, looking for Finn. Immortality Field's going to be coming through. His Violet as well, going to be taking damn low here on HP. Push through though, Alfie with some peel, able to find Bliss, but Violet gonna be taken down as Stonehack is able to find that one, and now Knife joining the fray, gets the beam across, Finn's gonna be eliminated, and Viper can just dash back and forth, slicing and dicing his way through this squad. Last man standing is Flora, he's swiftly taken down by Irony, and that is gonna be a very fast cap on A. And that's about the speed of which we've seen first capped on this point before. Uh, FTG kind of on the back foot now, they're gonna go back to what worked before, Bernard now back to the Zarya, Flora back to the... Uh, Cass, so, um, and then we see Donghek switch too, so I, I love when maps start developing their own metas on each different point, it makes the game all that much better. We'll see if they want to be aggressive and try to hold this archway, there's no point coming in. Yeah, they definitely need to try to drain the clock, and this is going to be one of the best chokes here for FTG, but trying to push in deep is going to prove to be difficult. Dive board here from Donghek, puts the fists up. Stopping himself from taking a decent amount of damage, but then gets corralled into the corner. Makes for an easy little body shot there from Florida to find the tag. Get that elimination. So push going to be halted. His 30 seconds get bought already. 
Yeah, an interesting play there. I, I was going to say, you know, you can hold him at the choke, but Doom's going to decide where the fight takes place, but he decides to take a 1v4. Uh, did not work out in their favor. And now the question is for Yeti, how are you going to break this choke? You've got vertical heroes. Maybe you send Knife up top and grab some attention and then uh, join the flank, but they're just going to rush it. Yeah, they're just going to try to send it here. Continue rush just come through. Support ultimate's not available at the moment here for the side of FTG. And with the immortality kill, again, just being focus fired. It's not going to be able to find too much value. So some kills here on the back end as Violet will be hounded down by Dolnhack. And I mean, as far as efficiency is concerned, one ult into the fight yeah. win. The push now resuming. Things looking very good that, for Yeti. That's your ideal play with uh, with a Katsune Rush too. Uh, and Rush is one of the best initiating alts in the, in the entire game, especially in that situation where there's not a great deal of cover or a great uh, ability to retreat. And also FTG doesn't have the mobility to be able to retreat unless you're going to try to speed out, but you're also getting sped in on, uh, which is why we've seen this as the strength of this Yeti composition. So a great play and as efficient as can be. I'll be trying to control some of the flanks here as the Matrix will be invested, but everybody can just play back. This does leave Donghak a bit stranded. Diving to the opposite side, but gets himself up to safety. Now takes the Meteor Strike and then looks to re-aggress as the Sound Barrier dropped in. Perfectly timed to receive those shields. Up into the air goes Vin, taken low as Knife. Again, with this dupe here onto the Tracer, gonna be looking for another Pulse Bomb, but Donghak is already claiming all of the eliminations that he could potentially get. Vin gone, okay, Violet does dive on top of it. Maybe just a little bit of a faster reset. Violet now, third Pulse Bomb death of the map is it's just shy of five minutes remaining here for Yeti on this final stretch, and they don't even have to go the full distance. I told you this might be the night that we break the 3 uh, and Right now, Donkhack is just putting them in an imp impossible position with these super aggressive dives. They look really, really dumb uh, if, you're, if you're not like the best Doom <laughs> Fist in the world or one of them. It goes in and either they turn around and the rest of the team comes in and follows and cleans it up, or they don't turn around and you piece the back line. Like, what are you going to do? How are you going to deal with it? It's been perfectly played so far. Donkhack just looking to try to keep Alpha Yi honest. Jump forward, Cedric Slam to punch in. A nice little bit of damage there on the floor, but another grab is going to be invested from Bernard. He's able to find knife there off the rip. Pulse bomb still held, and it looks like it can remain so as the cleanup will continue. Irony now going to be taken down. Bliss, no hope in hell to be able to get himself out of this position. We'll just end up getting taken out. Finally, FTG finding some semblance of control, but there's still four minutes to work through if they want to be victorious on this map. Yeah, right now, I think that Yeti's just looking to set up in a good position to get that rush going in again. Maybe you send Dong, uh, over, or Dong Hack over the top, and if they turn around, you drop the rush. If they don't turn around, you drop the rush. I think rush is definitely coming right down the pipe here, right in front of the cart. For now, they're back safely over towards the cart. Skitsune Rush is going to be coming through. Amp Matrix now available here for Finn. Could use it to try to save them off the angle. But Alpha Yi, getting into the back line, is able to find Bliss. For now, Bernard just hunting, trying to see who we can go ahead and try to empower with these bubbles as gets the mag grenade chuck in over on Irony. But cleans up the kill there with the neutral shots. Quick little turn to find Donghak as well, and it's going to be a clean fight win here for the side of FTG, not needing to invest anything at all, and now building up ultimates for the rest of this defense. That's such the enormous part, too, is that Finn and Violet are able to keep their ultimates. Support ultimates, by far, are the best ones in the game. The most impactful ones in these team fights. Uh, Yeti's going to have to get uh, some hero play out of Knife and Viper into the back line to make sure that FTG doesn't have both those tools available. It's really still just one fight. If they can yeah. clean up a good fight, then uh, Yeti will take this map. And, I mean, a dupe onto the Zarya, again, with a quick build-up, could be everything for them. Dolhack, in the meantime, leading the charge, pushing forward with that Nano, rolling on him. Now has the Meteor Strike, takes himself up into the skies. Looks to drop back down. Sound barrier, however, coming through now from Violet. The ambush is forced him off this hard angle as well. And now the cleanup sawn after here from FTG. Two kills going to be found already. Can't build up for the dead. I do want to the Cassidy a little bit questionable. I think they're from the side of Knife, actually, in hindsight now. But again, they will be shoved back. And now, ults. And that advantage very much here in the hands of FTG. You just threw in Nano. I mean, they're, they're going to switch now off of Viana anyway, but that was their best good shot there. Donghak went in, was able to get the Immortality field out, and we've mentioned how important that one is, but FTG is winning these fights, but they still don't have the support ultimates now. It could come down to the neutral play. Can the DPS from Yeti find something, find big picks, because right now Floor is putting on a clinic. Yeah, it's just been clean shots the whole way throughout. The dead eye maybe to try to zone them off, but for now Bernard Another needs rush. to be the one that's focused on as far as staying alive is concerned. Because giving that grab online could be everything, but Flora taken down. Bernard set up the center of the map as Bliss is able to find it, and it looks like the Katsuna rush is going to be all that they needed. 
as that will be the cleanup there onto Alpha Yi. Nobody else really able to play forward. Violet going to be taken down to the push. Finally will come through with a minute and 35 seconds remaining. Just such a great start for them. Had that defense held a, any amount of water at all for the side of FTG, maybe they'd be looking at this hold. But Yeti, they had such excellent play at the beginning. The first two points of the map only really slowed up near the end. And now they tie us up one to one. That was rush about every single fight for them at the end. Uh, I think there was one fight that they lost, that they were unable to get rush, but Tsunade rush came up almost every single time. Uh, you gotta give a ton of credit. That hero is so important um, as far as mitigation goes, not just the healing, but uh, Suzu is an ult that drives DPS players absolutely bonkers. And rush is, it's like window, but a little better at times. It just seems right. like it's more versatile. The speed ability, the, just being able to get everyone in with that comp is so critical. So a ton of credit to, uh, I believe Irony was playing that Kiri. So well played to have the ult up every single fight. It's very nicely done here to end the reign of terror that was three <laughs> Overwatch. We are tied Yay! up. We have an equal score line between these two squads. And that is so damn exciting. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of predicted it in our pre-show, and then when I said it, like, during the match, I was like, oh, that was dumb. You're going to you're gonna curse yourself. And, it, you're, and, I, and then then they lost a couple fights, and I was like, I knew it. I knew it. I, like, I should have kept my stupid mouth shut, as always. Uh, but it's always nice when you have a competition at, at the highest levels that it's we're starting to get through, like, which team's good, which one's bad. So on paper, I looked at this one. I was like, I think this would be the, the match that we'll see. And I didn't expect it to look like this, but it is the composition that we were kind of expecting to see, but I'm, I like that it's rounding out. It's becoming a little more nuanced. There's wrinkles to it. Different points are different things. Um, I think that the fights that um, the other team was able to win was just Flora going nuts. I mentioned yeah. a mechanical god. And when you're hitting every single shot like that as the cast and getting the support, because Cass's biggest weakness is if anyone dives into you, you're dead. But then you've got Azari to mitigate that. I just love the chess, that was, the interplay between those compositions that was happening. Yeah, I mean, great adjustments coming through there from the side of Yeti to be able to identify that, you know, this is exactly what they're doing to really enable Flora to find this value and starting to pilot around it. But we are going to go to another break here. And when we come back, we'll jump into push to see who is going to be able to take a lead in this series and get themselves up the match points. So don't go anywhere.
And we are back. We have a tied up series here in the opening set of week two of OWCS Korea. As Yeti very handedly able to deal with FTG Zarya compositions as well as every adjustment that they were trying to make. They get a successful defensive hold, or rather a, a successful push uh, after a successful defensive hold. And now we are tied up as we go to Esperanza. Yeah, Esperanza has been the more popular push map. We've seen a, a little more Coliseo been mixed in now, but you know, just give people a, a taste of something new. This is the first time we're going to see Flashpoint too. I, uh, there's a first Flashpoint coming up map four. Uh, so definitely able to look forward to that. It'll be interesting to see if this kind of meta holds up on push because especially Esperanza has been essentially this mirror match. Um, been a couple of teams trying out a Winston, um, but then that got countered by Ball, but that only happened once or twice. Essentially, it's been Doom all the way through, and it's been a very good Doom map even before this meta settled in, even before this patch, so it's going to be very interesting to see what they want to um, swap to, if anything. But the only thing I always feel pretty confident in when it comes to this meta going forward is uh, probably going to see a Tracer. Tracer's both sides. That's, I think that's a pretty safe bet that you could make right there. I don't think you're uh, stretching reality too much here. But I am curious what, what? Bernard is going to be doing. Is this just going to be back over to the Doomfist, try to, you know, go up against Dolhack and win out that way? Or are they going to just, you know, bring the Zarya through still here on this map? Yeah, one interesting thing, and I think it might have been uh, 9K who brought it up, uh, that's very interesting to watch for uh, push maps is losing the second fight or winning the second fight being such a big determining factor and i want someone to start keeping track of it not going to be me because i don't i'm not i don't really mind for numbers and stats but i also wonder how many push maps a team's able to win if they lose two fights in a row it's so momentum based that losing one is fine winning one is fine but if you win two in a row you're probably going to win the map if you lose two in a row you're probably going to lose the map and here the fan cheer there in the studio jazzed up to see these players and also to have a close set between them and for now it looks like ftg are just going to be flashing the zarya comp so it seems like they're fully bought in and, and you know sold okay. on this so things like they, they seem like they think that they are very much going to be able to win this one out worked the one time not so much on king's row let's see how they fare now though is alpha just going for the quick tp forward play and then we'll be swapping back over onto the tracer yeah, this one is always going to, I think this map comes down to these weird high ground controls in both corners, and obviously Yeti is in a little bit better position to hold those high grounds. Um, but if FTG can just hit shots and do this long range poke and get damage, then they can mitigate any sort of uh, high ground advantage or verticality that Yeti's comp is going to allow. Alright, well, virtual fight's about to begin here. This knife going to have to be a constant concern there for uh... Eyes are going to be on him to be the one to deal with that Echo that was finding an immense amount of value back over on King's Row. Die forward, though, once again, looking to really displace him. A knife already striking this time, not at the Cassidy, but into the back line. Takes out Violet. For Narnar in a rough spot. Immortality Field coming through, just to try to keep him protected. The Immortality Field will get cleared out, and that beam does so much execute damage. That knife, it's just making it look easy. He's looking for another one, has to go for the quick reload. The die forward into the melee shot. And it's all going the way of this Echo right now. Push now beginning, Yeti out to a very strong lead as Knife nearly has his dupe. I'm loving the, the Echo Doomfist synergy. It has been absolutely fun to watch. It started on King's Row. I mean, you think of Winston Tracer dive, that's one of the classics. But right now, Donghack is going in. And the moment that Flora starts shooting at Donghack, Knife comes in and just starts executing people because there's no one else to deal with. And it's been so interesting to see this, this new wrinkle on dive. Now Bliss going to be taking out his floor. He's able to find a first blood kill here from the side of FTG. Stun out on the fin for a brief little moment. The HP bar is going so, so very low here. Not been on that pulse, but we'll find the kill to connect. I believe the bubble from Bernard does come through to help protect. Bernard himself, though, now for the second elimination, is able to find Irony. Looks for a little bit more and will be able to take out Knife. So that Brain of Terror now going to be brought to a close as Bernard, I mean, I think he collected just about every single kill other than maybe one. And now they can begin their own push. Yeah, I mean, it's you can call it good defense, you can call it a, an interesting place to fight for the offense. Like I said, Yeti with their Doomfist is going to decide where these fights happen, and to be fighting in that close quarters in an area that perhaps your supports can't really help you out with the damage, and, and definitely Knife is at a disadvantage in the, the close quarters there. Maybe not ideal. Uh, one fight apiece, so so far no momentum either side. The second fight, uh, the, the, the theory is it's the critical fight. Matrix out now, sound barrier to match on the opposite side. There's Violet pulls the trigger. Deadeye gonna be popped. 
that the shields is unable to find too much value, but instead we'll just be forcing them out of line of sight for the time being. So just find some space here for the rest of the squad, and now Thonghat looks to go ahead and reclaim that. Goes in, and Bernard back in towards the rest of his teammates as Bernard is desperately trying to stay alive, but the grab reads Thonghat as soon as he hits the floor. Well, Spong lobbed in there looking for that big bang combo. Might not find the eliminations itself, but they still are going to be going the way widely here of FTG as the trade-ups continue. Bliss now going to be the last one to fall as he's just juggling around trying to stay elusive, but eventually will be hounded down here by Alpha Yi. Okay, still behind the... Well, behind, behind the eight ball as they're behind the robot, uh, continuing to push. 41 on the side of Yeti, 22 here. Uh... Yeti is going to want to come out and, and fight this way before they even get close to, to getting that second point. And that's that uh, verticality advantage where Donghak's able to check those bridges, make sure that they're never behind on the high ground. Still a ways to Can't go get if up they want to take the lead. Yeah, I mean, just on struggle straight at the moment. Backing off the angle for a little bit there is Flora as Donghak just trying to challenge. Can't really force him down, but with Bernard playing on the high ground, that means that the push can't resume either. So he's got to rejoin with the rest of the team. Drops down here into the archway. A dink there on the Viper. Get him think twice about playing this far forward, but he's going to be looking for that background access here. He does have that pulse ready to go. Dive forward. Tongue Hack looking for the isolation. Gets a punch out on the floor in the wall. Managing to stay alive, though, as the immortality field was used and will take care of that pulse bomb. Knife down with the Duke. Instantly going to be broken out of this one as Flora. There's a couple other players just mining a good amount of damage going across. Pulse bomb out from Alpha E. Not going to be able to find any eliminations there, but Viper and Knife both going to be taken down as Tongue Hack desperately trying to get the fist raised. Himself alive. Won't be able to do so. And this time, Irony with that Kitsune Rush is not going to be able to find value. That Matrix is from Finn just enabling way too much damage and now the push can resume here for FTG. Yeah, it's a great disengage from that Kitsune Rush, which just gave them so much problem, so many problems on King's Row. Uh, able to back around the corner and get behind the amplification matrix, the window, and put down all of that damage. Flora continues to hit so many shots and you don't always have to get the executes as long as you're getting pressure. Well, again, Deadeye looking for a target and Bliss just can't get out of dodge fast enough. He gets taken down. Font's still going to be locked in place here for the time being, but now Knife Falling Flora again coming up huge, finds that elimination. The punch from Dong Hack, which is not going to be able to do a damn thing. Cleanup will be found, bought, and the lead will be taken here by FTG. Okay, well, that's the two fights in a row. We'll see if that holds water. Again, I'm just, you know, thinking my own theories. They're probably all wrong, as they usually are. FTG with a huge advantage, though, and just able to uh, run this composition. They're going to get to a spot where high ground is not as important once you get past this mid in that bridge area. So their composition starts to work on, on the, the right level here, which ends up being the ground level. They're going to have the grav ready to go. Long hack is going to have to choose where the fight happens. Again, looking for any kind of isolation there on a Bernard, but widely he's just able to hold his ground. Meteor strike into the back line as the bubble comes through, just helping protect Finn as he drops back down, joins in with the rest of the squad. They'll break through the archway, sound barrier now coming out here from Violet. Still something very far away from the side of Bliss and Yeti. Don't have to be eliminated as the grab will help claim him. Knife just stuck here in the window. Alpha Yi with a quick and easy kill, diving into the back, trying to get rid of Irony, who's trying to harass as much as possible there into the back line, but now sight lines are going to be broken. They have to get out of here. So they'll slide back around towards the front of the push. Yeah, Alpha Yi uh, showing more restraint than most people would have, seeing two supports on a stairway with a pulse bomb in the pocket, but FTG continues to roll right on through. Uh, Donghak has been completely shut down. FTG is doing such a great job of just backing up, punishing, making sure the cooldowns come out, and Donghak has spent most of the last two minutes just with his arms up trying to, trying to block. Alpha Yi again duking it out, just noting these supports here over onto this left side flank as Ant Matrix gonna be invested and instantly everyone turning, taking down Donghak. Ant Matrix can still be utilized. Here's the pulse bomb, will be evaded. Immortality field as well was up. Let's go ahead and absorb that. Is it a two for one from Flora? Fighting Viper and Irony just stacked on top of each other. The mag grenade, you don't see that very often. And then a quick pop on the dead eye to clean up knife. Everything is coming up, Flora. A much lauded ability. A lot of people really dislike Mag Grenade, both uh, both cast players and people on the receiving end. But right there gets a huge amount of value. FTG fine with just taking their push and backing up. There, there's no reason to keep going up this hill. They don't have to continue fighting. They're in the lead. Their enemy right now is the clock, which sits at about 2.30. Time has been dwindling. They need to make up for a hell of a lot of lost distance here. Immortality field into the back once more as the go button was pulled from the side of Yeti. And it looks like so far it's going to be looking decent for them. So cleanup can continue as Violet just 
gonna dive into the back here alongside Alpha. You see if they can find any kind of trade kills. They'll come up shy in that regard, but should be able to just about get everybody back in with these forward spawns that they do currently hold on to. Alpha and Violet should be rejoining here momentarily, and there you go. So forward spawns for everybody on the side of FTG means that they can get back to the bot very quickly. Yeah, really important. Also, Knife has switched over to the Genji. It might come into play a little bit later, but just tired of getting shot out of the sky on that Echo. You saw the, the value of that Echo dwindle as Floor has really turned it on here. Uh, Violet's got the beats, can use it very reactively whenever, or it's it's also something that they might use to initiate, given that they don't have the dive potential. There's oh, the beat. Gonna have to use that Meteor Strike to get himself out, and the beat does come through. Jumps back up here onto the high ground, forcing FTG back down to the floor. Getting stolen away there for a brief little moment, but once again, Finn just popping the Ant Matrix, instantly finding the kill. Don't hack once again, gonna be dropped right off the rip as Flora will be able to find Irony. Push forward, Alfie, maybe overextending slightly. Just get taken down by Knife, but it doesn't matter because the rest of the team has his back. It's an extended team kill coming through here, back to back in that regard, and the bot not allowed to get into a pushable position for Yeti. I love how Finn's playing this Batiste. It, once he hits 100%, the window's coming down. It doesn't matter where he is, the window's coming down. Obviously, the positioning is good, but I think he took your advice from earlier this week that sometimes it's not very good to hold on to your ult. Sometimes, just use it right away. And he's been doing it every single time, but more importantly, he's, he's finding value every single time. You, usually, when Donghag jumps in, he's jumping towards the window and just getting deleted. It's happened several times now. All right, well, Alfie, good early kill found here for Vipers. The continuing rush is there from Irony. Blade at the ready here. Grav very well could just he completely played. counter that one out if he can catch him. 100 energy at the moment here is the blade now. Getting ready to be pulled perhaps, but knife getting tagged up means he's forced back around the corner. Sound barrier, however, with that commitment should lead to them wanting to try to pull this one out, but he's still just keeping this in the back pocket until this very moment. Which is the grab to expire, but now Viper gone. Dives forward, immortality field slowing up the kills and denying them completely as Alpha will be able to collect knife. The cleanup is good onto the back line. The support's taken down with 20 seconds remaining. I don't know why FTG are moving the bot further forward. You're letting them get closer to touching this thing. Yeah, it's, it's one of those those calls you have to make on push, um, but they kind of should be back. Maybe they just want to play around the corner. This is where they won a couple fights before, so maybe they're trying to get them in a position where they have to win a, a, one more fight. But. Seems like it, but Donghak instantly going to be isolated, taken out there by the dead eye as the OT will start to bleed away. Knife picked off the stick, and Alpha finding irony on the back end, and now Bliss, nothing more that he can do other than to die. Over time, will bleed down, and that is going to be FTG in firm control here on push, looking fantastic on Esperanza. Slowed up all the mistakes that we were seeing, all the picks that we were seeing coming through from Yeti on King's Row against the Zarya comp, that was all missing completely. Yeah, and Yeti just looked a little bit disjointed too. When you switch to the Genji, the only way to really get value out of the Genji is to go in with a blade after the beat. But it seemed like they didn't want to beat. It was kind of forced out. They'd already lost their tank. So then you force out the beat, and he didn't love that. And now you have to force out the blade, but now there's an immortality, and you don't really want to be swinging at the lamp and just absolutely zero value. And it just seemed like once they were forced off of like the super composition that they wanted, especially with the echo playing, based on Flora being able to kill everything, um, then really no, no good changes, no good response. And that one was all FTG after the first couple of fights. Once they dealt with the idea that Donghek was going to jump them and then um, and Echo was going to follow through, then they were able to deal with it. And then there was no no reason to worry about the Doomfist Echo dive because they forced them off of Echo. I mean, those small shots and mechanics are, are really good. And we're not seeing it all the time. But I always mention this when you talk about Cass is you don't have to see them in the kill feed to see their impact. Because a single shot onto a Tracer forces out Blink, forces out Recall, or they're out of the fight. A single shot onto Echo, Echo's got to go find healing, and now the healers are busy. Like, the, the impact is so huge when you're hitting the amount of shots that Floor has been hitting. Yeah, he's looking good, and I mean, with uh, Cass maybe making a resurgence, there's uh, maybe some skins that are looking pretty good <laughs> coming out soon. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I for one, gonna be picking those up day one. But at Flora looking absolutely incredible. I think for right now on the set of FTG, if they are gonna be able to clinch this series out, looking like I think the, the front runner as far as player of the match is concerned. Yeah. Um... We'll say there's something that you, you could always see what happens in the, in the fourth map, but I would agree definitely the front runner right now because there's something just so satisfying about seeing pure mechanics at play. And obviously the team's playing around it. The comp team almost 
built around that Cassidy to be hitting those shots. If Laura wasn't hitting those shots, this composition does not look anywhere near as successful as it has so far. No, it does not. But now pressure on Yeti need to rally back to try to take us into a game five. But first we're gonna to go to yet another quick little break, so don't go anywhere. And we are back. Right now in the lead, FTG 2-1 up after a dominant performance on Esperanza. Puts them now at match point. But Yeti, they were able to run it back on King's Row. They were able to look dominant. Can they do that again to take us to map five as we get ready to go on to New Junk City for Flashpoint? Well, if you just look purely at like compositions they've been running, you would think that Flashpoint would end up favoring what Yeti runs. Very important to have rotations, to have speed, uh, to have mobility, um, which definitely it would favor Yeti's composition. We'll see. Right now, when you're in a situation like this um, as Yeti, you just have to um, identify the problem. Right now, the problem is uh, you can't kill Flora can't right. kill Flora and they're hitting every single shot that they're looking for and I think like it, it's become one of these I'd have to look at it a little bit more you know I'm getting my bearings here but it's become a little bit of like the protected president comp um so yeah. and that, that was you know you, you find your your DPS carry oftentimes it's, if it's a bastion or something along those lines and you make sure that all the resources go into that bastion or they in this case the Cassidy and if they're performing it, it feels unbeatable unless you start trying to mirror it and hey. do it better, but it's, it's it's almost too late for that. Hey. Hey. I got the I got the Blu-ray. They got the artwork. Loving that drawing coming <laughs> through here. Everybody getting excited for the uh, the collaboration. I should I, I see here. Um, 
No, I, I would be remiss, and I, I hate to be a bummer at the moment, but I would be remiss to mention anything anime related without saying rest in peace to uh, Akira Toriyama. Man is an absolute legend, creator of Dragon Ball. Absolute legend, and uh, I will miss him dearly. But now we can focus on the game. Sorry to drag the mood down. Sorry to make it awkward, but I had to. Um, but yeah, so I'm curious as it looks like we're going to have an issue on stage, of course. I do this and then I can't even just go straight into the game to try to build up hype. There's <laughs> yeah, gotta be job. a pause. You really, you really, what have I done? You really pick your moment. <laughs> oh no. I'm hey, so everyone, while you're sad, let's uh, sit in that sadness for a while. Yeah. Wallow, if you will. Um, <laughs> My bad. Yeah, I think uh, might be some, some sound issues, but you know, I would not be a broadcast if we didn't have, well, we have, we've had no pauses so far, so at least the issues hit during the break. That's true. Uh, which means they've had a li little extra time to work on things, but as long as they keep showing us like cool artwork and signs. Now, we were talking uh, before the show started that you're you're able to uh, read Korean pretty well. Uh, so yeah, that you, doesn't you, necessarily you, mean you, that I'm gonna understand everything. <laughs> um, okay, I, also, uh, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I'm just trying to get you out of the hole you dug. Well, this is this is a, a you know, obviously there's a, there's a Viper fan here. Uh, so I think that they're just basically saying like, I came here to watch it and I believe that they were using his actual name. Um, I ah. didn't quite get to read it though. It's like Son Chong or something like that. But um, yeah, always always good fans. This is usually when I, you know when I have Wolf alongside me, I can lean on him to do some sign translations. But yeah. I have been, How's I've it been feel? trying to step How's up my feel game. How's it feel on the other end? Yeah, it's it's <laughs> not. It, it doesn't feel good, and it hasn't felt good for the eight years that I've been out here. But, uh, being told that it is uh, just a minor headset issue, so we should be able to get this taken care of pretty quickly. Because fortunately, I'd say for the most part, when we have had a, a couple hiccups throughout the broadcast thus far, we've been able to handle them uh, pretty easily. I think I caught something in one of the earlier broadcasts where one of the technicians on the crew has a PhD in computer peripheral management. <laughs> so you'd imagine things should get worked out pretty quickly here. I didn't even, you can get a PhD in that? I was surprised too. I don't know. I'll have to. I'll, I'll find the timestamp for you, or you could you could ask them as well. But I, I'm pretty sure I heard that on broadcast. I'm not sure if it was tongue in cheek. I don't think so. It seemed like an honest, honest thing. Uh, I mean, hey, uh, you know, we we've got. You can go to. We've got colleges where you can start going to school and get scholarships for competing right. in esports. So having other side careers that kind of built around the functionality and the, the more unique nuances of running an esports broadcast compared to a standard television one, I could see it. Right. I don't know if it's real, well, I mean, but maybe it is. It's a, well, essentially, it's just a niche offshoot of a technical engineer, right? Hmm. Of because yeah, a tech engineer or broadcast engineer or those kinds of things, they they know all the, the hardware and how everything works as far as cameras and stuff. And this is just, well, we're going to have a lot of computers around here. We need someone who knows how it all works together. Precisely. So, I, I, I buy it. I think it happens. I mean, I... I'm going to have to confirm it, though. I can't imagine in, in America, to put together a, a broadcast myself. There would just be so many... I, there would be so many tech delays if I was just trying to run something out of my house. <laughs> Yeah, uh, true enough. I, I've been uh, behind the, the camera before in working with technical engineers and stuff, and the magic they can pull off is, is crazy. Um, I, I don't pretend that I can do any of it. I just write dumb lower thirds for the most part and put together a, a broadcast, but I, I just always know the people who know how to fix things and let the magicians go to work. Just be like, I want this mic over there and then routed to this way, and they're like, oh, yeah, no problem. You're the best. Thank you. Well, this one is just uh, a fan sign for irony using his uh, real name, Kim hyung Woo, and uh, saying, I love you, <laughs> repeatedly. Uh oh, the player or the concept? I, I think they love the player. And then the, <laughs> okay. and then uh, Patrick is holding a sign that says Yeti. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sign within a sign, that's meta. There you go. And I'm stacked up. I, I, one of the things I'll, I'll touch on when it comes down to like the fan sign meta out here in Korea, A, it's always been the best. Um, you know, I mean, just the artwork that we've been seeing already here in the studio is always great, but just for time immemorial, like the Korean fan sign meta has always been incredible. But one of the craziest things for me is that you will see a player who's like maybe making a studio debut who has never really played on a stage before or was lingering around like the tier three, you know, scenes of a, of a, of a game. And then when they go play on stage, they will have fans in the audience. And it's like, you've never been able to see this guy before on stage. And they will in just intentionally show up to be able to go cheer for that player. So it's like the fandom runs deep in Korea. 
Yeah, that's crazy. I like how you describe it as, as the sign meta. As a gamer, do the you know those terms just end up bleeding into your everyday life? It's not an incorrect use of the word, but like, you, you know, if, if you went home like to back to the United States, you'd be like, "What's the dinner meta at? We doing cheesesteaks? You know, something like that." Hey, I'm always down for that. You know, well, I know you're from uh, from the area, from the area. And I got, and I have my place <laughs> out here now that does it just about as good as you could get in Philly. So uh, nice. very happy with those guys. Shout outs to, to Philadelphia Goddess of Gill, who have a, a Carpe jersey hanging on the wall from his time on Philly Fusion. There you go. Awesome Sweet. little spot. It gives me a taste of home, so I don't get too terribly homesick. But yeah, I mean, we can, <laughs> we can use the, the, the term meta for just about anything. I mean, remember the movie meta right. from like 12 years ago where everyone was making penguin movies? <laughs> True. Uh, there was also the disaster meta happening a lot, mm -hmm. uh, Roland Emmerich. I'm just saying like, uh, sometimes when those terms sneak into my everyday life, it like embarrasses me a little bit. Like, I don't know. I think I was talking to my dad once and I was like, yeah, and that happened. It was just like GG and he was so confused. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But GG is the one that sneaks into my everyday life that I'm like, oh, people have no idea what that, that really means or implies. Yeah, my dad, you know, I mean, as, as you know, he spent a, a decent amount of time around uh, Overwatch League in season two, came out and visited for a couple weeks. Right. And yeah, was yeah. at the studio in the broadcast day. So he actually has picked up a decent amount of, of lingo and understanding of the game. It's at the point where like, when he comes out and visits me in Korea, I might be on like my bike machine exercising and I'll throw something on on, t on the TV, you know, the Chromecast to watch a broadcast and he can pretty quickly suss out like what's going on in the game, even if he hasn't really seen it before. I'm like, that's impressive considering that I have to yeah. show you how to like hook up a Wi-Fi router <laughs> that you can now watch Overwatch of all games and really get an understanding. So for yeah. anybody out there who says this game is too difficult to watch, if my 63 year old father can do it at a glance and understand what's going on, I don't think it's that hard. If a man who is crippled by the mention of HDMI 2 input, then, you know, can figure out the game, I think you're, you'll, you should be set. Um, which, what kind of game, though? Because I still can't understand, like, League of Legends. Like, I, sure. Admittedly, like, I, I haven't tried to watch many MOBAs, but it feels so in-depth. I think everyone can really understand an FPS um, at the base level. They, right? they all, understanding it well is what the challenge is. And, and fully right. understanding what's what's actually happening in front of you. That's where the that's where the, the time investment comes into play. As it looks like we are about ready to go into the, our flashpoint map here. But uh, yeah, I mean, if as long as you can kind of have like a, a cursory glance at something and say like, okay, I can tell that this team is winning, then I think that it's you're right. in a pretty good spot. Yeah, pretty good, P pretty impressive from uh, uh, Papa Seth. I don't know his name. I guess <laughs> the, the, the 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 gaming meta is just to put Papa then whatever. Uh, yeah, you know whatever the handle is afterwards. Well, Papa Kilios, <laughs> that was already a duo with me and Papa Smithy from uh, long times long since right. past. Shoutouts to Apex Season two, uh, Three, but uh, the game is ready. In fact, so enough of us floundering about uh, you know fathers and old people trying to understand this confangled <laughs> esports stuff. Let's get into the game itself as we jump into Flashpoint and see whether or not FTG is going to be able to close this one out, or if Yeti can take us all the way to Escort for the first time. Yeah, I mean, we'll say, look, we saw Yeti um, come out early on with, um, you know, some, some of, like, different compositions and stuff. But since then, and, and we mentioned that it might end up being the case, since then, they they kind of gone back to the, the tried and true. But so far, FTG um, has really taken over a, a little bit. Uh, you know, it's, it's really just been Flora stepping up and going absolutely huge on this. And we're going to see a difference in these compositions again. I do think that Flashpoint is, is so critical to have high mobility to get in the right position first that you would have to think that Yeti's got a small advantage out of the gate. Yeah, I mean, just given the hypermobility of the Tracer, uh, I mean, just everybody on this, you know, because even if Irony falls behind, he's got the TP. So yeah, everybody has some yeah. kind of mobility, whereas Flora, he can roll. So that's about it. He's like a, he's like a Jeep. Dive forward. Seismic Slam, not going to be finding too much there. Stonehack looks to initiate the neutral fight. I'll be in the meantime trying to get his way into that back line. Not too much damage going to be found yet. Yeah, just some poking out here. Knife has got to play very careful. Floor is going to be looking for it. 
Not a lot of cover in the sky in the vertical axis here. Right now, though, Yeti going to have to drop down unless they want to just concede this initial cap, and it looks like that is going to be the call. So, MTG getting the first take here of the opening point. And Snipe gets taken very low. Drops down into that low ground, though, to keep himself protected and break some line of sight. As Bernard is looking to occupy the point itself and keep this contested for the time being. Alfie chasing forward, able to find the enemy. Echo peels off an immense amount of pressure, though. Violet and Finn can breathe a lot more easily now. Yeah, nice immortality field that came in there to save Flora after the sticky bombs came. It, it does seem like uh, just major focus on keeping Flora alive. Fordnar was able to drop down to the point alone um, without worrying about getting healed or any of that because it was able to save both of those Zarya bubbles to protect themselves. Totally fine there. And at 55 here, uh, because of the way Flashpoint works, this is the, the final fight for FTG. If they if they can win this one, they're going to grab first point. Yeah, effectively. It, it just ticks up so very quickly compared to, to Control. Stalkhack again getting tagged up. Very much early on here. Viper going to be taken down. It spins able to find that one. Alfie now chasing forward. Look at the try to get in on top of Irony. Does get pushed back there. As Donghak with that rocket punch is able to send him flying. But widely, point occupation is not being found at all. And Donghak is still going to be dropping in here onto the high ground. Now dropping down, forcing out that overtime. Is able to isolate, pick off floor. But Bliss at the same time going to be dropped on the opposite side. So Yeti now going to be operating without one of their supports. Irony, so much pressure on him now to try and deliver. He's going to be sending out the Kitsune Rush to try to keep them in this fight. Recall. Big jump out there. And this Viper now. Pulse Bomb in his back pocket looking for a target. But if he can hold it for a future fight, that's even better. Then getting taken out. Bernard now. Not enough healing to put the try to keep the Zarya in the mix. Means that Yeti will be getting their chance at grabbing this opening point. Yeah, the rush came in. Knife is able to duplicate the Zarya, which uh, offers up so much of that extra utility. Uh, you get to play the double tank meta just for a little bit. Always so nice to see what Echo adds into the mix. They're bringing it back to... Uh, old days of different kinds of duos, but FTG has everything that they need. And since you mentioned it, and I am just hungry for this big bang and they've got the tools for it. Uh, there's not a ton of mitigation on the side of Yeti to be able to stop it, but it might force, I think you might grab here just to force the barrier out and get yourself even in awe of support altogether. Let's see, let's go to the call. It does go through. Sound barrier shielding is there, but high energy built up very rapidly here for Bernard. Means that Donghak's still going to be taken down. He's able to find one before it getting dropped, though. It's Flora. Let's get swapped out. FTG with the flip in control here for the time being. So Yeti not going to be getting any kind of free gains for the moment. We'll have to go for a bit of a reset as Bernard wants to try to take down anybody that he possibly can with him. 100 energy means that he's got to be respected. It's a lot of damage down, so Alfie can strip the kill there on the night, but he's going to be cleaned up on the back end. This just leads to more staggers now as Violet is going to be in a bad position. And now Yeti very much could be taking this first round away. Yeah, it looks oh. like they're in a really good position, and we have a pause. Hooray. As is tradition. <laughs> As is tradition. It looks like that pesky headset issue might have reared its ugly head once more. As we'll get confirmation uh, here as Finn is going to be staring at it for the time being. Let's get the uh, PC doctor on the case. Yep, headset issue. Confirmation, yeah. thank you, production. Looks like it. And uh, uh, what yes. are we talking about? <laughs> Let's go back, back into the <laughs> podcast. Um, yeah, we'll see how long it takes. Uh, they've got a, a PC peripheral PhD. And I was just thinking about, you know, if that existed in America, which maybe it does, maybe you'll see it. The, the, the way I'll know it's true is if on one of those terrible channels, there's a show called like Keyboard Doctor or something. That's, that's how you know that something's legitimate is when you get a, a terrible reality TV show about it. That's true. There are so many of those. And yeah, they're saying that they are moving their way towards victory there. So another Yeti fan wanting to see them come out on top here of this flashpoint. And for the time being, it is looking pretty decent for them to be able to at least grab that opening pick. As we've got our best man on the job there under the desk, popping the headset on, trying to see if everything's going to be good. It says we have some yeah, it's... Uh... Yeah, it's it's always terrible though when the, the momentum stops yeah. in, in these games, especially at Flashpoint, which is you know you might as well just call it momentum the map, which I would have pitched in the meeting, but wasn't allowed in that meeting. Momentum would have been a decent name for it, actually. Yeah, not that Flashpoint is bad, but I think momentum is a it's got some like nice little flair to it. Hence, it's back on. Maybe doing some final checks. Being told that the issue is solved, so we should be resuming this one. So to catch everybody back up, right now we have a chase forward coming through from Yeti, trying to find some additional staggers onto the retreating members of FTG as they are desperately trying to collect themselves. And yes, we are unpausing. So let's go right back into this one. 
As there is a chase, Flora backpedaling, Immortality Field having to be used here from Finn. Let's get knocked over into the walls. Bernard's going to be swapping over onto the Doomfist. Sound Barrier now, used from Violet, just trying to speed their way back over to the point and try to get this contestant. So far, it is looking damn good for them. Two opening kills here. As the reflip gets ready to come in, Viper Dong Hack both going to be taken down, and no one can really try to play forward into this point right now. Yeah, Bernard has switched over to the Doomfist and catches a punch right off the bat, and that is going to be them uh, starting to switch a little bit. We'll see if they make the full-on transition in compositions after Finn uses ultimate, after Flora finds something else. But right now, it looks like they're trying to lean back towards it. Um, FTG is on match point here and two sets of flash points away from it. Could just close it out. They're able to scoop this, but as you said, for now, Bernard just going to be operating with this Doomfist. Still, that goes for the dive forward. Plans to explain with a decent bit of value there. Is and Matrix going to be given over to Flora? And everybody's got to scatter to the wind to try to stay safe from this one. Meteor Strike. Flora, privy to this one. Slides back, keeps himself protected, and just layering in so much damage. Alpha Yeet, Violet, and Bernard all in the chase forward, able to find those eliminations. Knife up back into the skies, was instantly greeted with a headshot. His beam will be able to take down Finn, which means that he might need a bit of an escort back over here towards this point, but FTG will once again get the opening locket. <laughs> you just have to feel for Yeti. They're like, Flora doesn't have a Zarya anymore. Get him! And then they try, but uh, FTG uses the architecture really, really well to back out of that. They hide behind the box. They're able to give Flora a little bit of space, gets all the healing. The vitality field, of course, comes down for the save. Finn going to stay on this Batiste. An interesting call, but Finn's Batiste has been working wonders so far. And now FTG in control again. And we mentioned the, the pace of flashpoints. A single fight went away, and they'll be on match point. Yeah, I mean, the comp might have changed very slightly. The tank will swapping up, but the mission has not. So Finn's still here to protect the president and try to keep that cast alive. It's in a rush out. Pulse bomb being sent there from Alpha E. Unable to find the kill, and he's actually going to be taken down after the recall. So don't have without a good opener here. But Flora still very much is a force to be reckoned with. Mortality killed now dropped in. Sound barrier shielding comes out from Bliss. Now matched by Violet on the opposite side. Just making sure that Flora does not die at under any circumstances whatsoever. Down to 109, sends the Magrenade, forces the recalls, just desperately trying to get himself out from being surrounded by so many players. Eventually will crumble under the pressure, but Bernard with two punches is able to find some kills to trade this one back. They keep themselves in the lead, the OT bleeding down. A quick touch there from Knife will extend this overtime, but it seems like the victory is going to be inevitable here for the side of FTG as they will close at the second flashpoint. And Yeti now need to reverse sweep within the map if they want to get this all, all the way to five. Yeah, map point, match point. Uh, as you mentioned, the mission still remains the same. You saw from Flora, Flora's POV, everyone's diving on them. And then you see Violet come in to try to boop people away. That's part of the damage mitigation that Lucio can allow and Bernard as well. You've got window and I, if I, you know, if Finn's anything but consistent, we're going to see that window dropped as soon as they find a, any partial decent angle, see where they want to get set up here. But right now, Yeti's in a really good position on this point. I did have the faster take here to get themselves onto the inside track is looks like knife gonna go on a bit of a walkabout maybe wants to try to go flanking into the back line as there's gonna be that ant matrix use here on the stairs low hp bars across the board here on the side of ftg and floor is gonna be the first of all's iron he's able to come up with that headshot drop down off the meteor strike and the kill goes wonderfully in favor of yeti here Bernard will be the last one to get taken down. Team kill going to be found in the blink of an eye and the ant matrix getting zero value whatsoever great timing there from yeti just a really good way to attack it to make sure that there's not one uh, angle that they can focus on to come from those several different angles. If you're going to put a window down, are you going to shoot through this way, through that way? You saw all the pressure from the back uh, coming in from the Tracer player as well. So they, they've kind of figured out that the way they want to attack this is to not come at it forward facing. It's actually the worst possible way you can attack this. So really well played there. Yeti fighting for their lives right now. Viper eating some opening damage here as the reapproach comes through from FTG. Point contest is in though. Uh, we'll finally be contested here from Yeti. So stopping it from going over the way of FTG, but Flora headshot comes in. Viper gets taken down. Flip now in their favor, but these percent where Yeti were able to build up to is the Magrenade connecting. And as the fist get dropped, so does Zolhack. Follow-up kill found, and for now, FTG with some semblance of control. Sound barrier was committed there. Was holding on to one of his own though, as they get ready to go for the reapproach. But I mean Violet, there's you're not gonna kill him. <laughs> I don't know. Give him a chance. Let him cook. Um, you saw Floor there able to take down Viper with a single shot to open that fight, and that just opens things up for Alpha Yi. One of Tracer's main jobs in every composition is make sure the other Tracer can't do whatever they want. And once that Tracer's off the field, it's it's uh, 
you know, it's a theme park for the other Tracer, because there's no one who can really match you and catch you in that mobility. Again. So we're going to catch, they're trying to catch four once more. And during the yeah, scatter Alfie chaos, Alpha he finds one, but then takes himself down. I think it was actually a post bomb elimination onto himself, mm -hmm. so all that one was committed. Either way, Tracer's now going to be able to fight out of the fight for either side. As Bohack diving into the back again is going to be taken low. Magrenade coming through. Violet with the melee hit is able to find the elimination. They do replace the front line, though, as knife goes for the dupe, but needs to start finding some value here to try to build up towards that grab, but he's going to be broken out, isolated, likely taken down. Does manage to find a parting gift kill there on the floor before falling, but it's looking like this might just be the end. Players die on either side. Viper taken out, and that will be overtime. Bleeding down into a 3-0 here on Flashpoint, into a 3-1 victory for FTG overall. Yeah, Bernard made the switch in the middle of the map to come back as Doom, and it actually paid off for them. It was a huge clutch play that goes back to the comfort once they have control getting on that Zarya. Alpha Yi he is so good at killing Tracers, he takes himself out just for the fun of it. Um, <laughs> just really well played all around from this FTG squad. They're one of the main contenders, I think, for uh, one of the top slots, which a lot of people have already crowned as uh, Falcons. But FTG can can really bring it. Also, let, let, let give some credit to Yeti too. They, they put it together. I think a, a few adjustments now that they've played. I'm sure that they've scrimmed against this meta before, but now that they've played it live, where teams are really going for it, they can make a couple adjustments. I uh, didn't get swept, so they looked very competitive. But there was something really, um, really impressive about the composition and how it worked together for FTG and especially just sweeping that flashpoint um, in, a, in a composition that really was going to be out of position a lot of times. They were they were patient because they, were, they weren't always in the right position to, to win those mid fights, but still pulled it off largely because of our player of the match. Yeah, it's going to be Flora. I think, uh, you know, decent shot. I think Bernard receiving a vote or two in the, in the mix there and overall was playing quite strongly. But I mean, Flora, it just so much experience explosive accuracy from this guy. It was just incredible to see him bringing out this Cassidy. I mean, the two for one on the, the mag grenade as well on Esperanza. Uh, I mean, just was building up a highlight reel of plays here for himself. Yeah, and, and we mentioned it too. It's uh, There can be times where a Cass is not lighting up the kill feed and they're still um, providing value. But when you're doing both as Cassidy, that's when your team can really rely on you. And you saw that the composition is almost based around it. Yeah. And any of those single picks or any of those single shots, if it, it gives Alpha Yi the advantage in the Tracer 1v1, when the other Tracer has to always worry about where's the cast, because at any given second, you're going to lose half your life bar for a reason that you had no, no idea about. Knife was cutting his team up earlier, and then has to really worry about and play around sight lines in the sky, which is not ideal for the Echo. So just kind of change the way the other team plays. And it's really the worst position to be in um in it as an overwatch league team where or excuse me sorry that's the last <laughs> time it'll happen as an owcs team um that you don't get to play the way you want to play and you have to start adjusting around the other team bringing the the fight to the other team is so important and even though they're running they were bringing the fight to them and making the other team uncomfortable yeah and this is a you know i think Maybe, I don't think this is going to be too contentious for, for many people as far as the, the player of the match is concerned, but it, for me, it was a little bit of one. Uh, I think if there were a few less highlights here from Flora, some really snappy, just quick reaction plays from him, then I might have let leaned in towards maybe even like Finn or Bernard a little bit more because this right. is a bit of a symbiotic relationship between the Cassidy. Like he can't do what he's doing if everybody else isn't doing their job. So everybody else is also playing at such a great level. But I mean, <laughs> moments like that, just snap right. decision, go in for the dead eye, gets the tracking there over on the knife to be able to lock him down and get the quick kill. Uh, I mean, for just, he just put his mechanics very much out on display today. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just kind of chuckling because you, you think about like, I would have gone for either of the other two that weren't Lucio and Tracer. So it's like the meta is the three heroes that are in between Lucio and Tracer on the right. scoreboard. Uh, that, that's kind of what's defining it all. So really interesting, but absolutely great performance by Flora. I mentioned it's just always a mechanical nut, never really got a chance. Well, let's hear from him. So we send it over the question of the translation. Thank you, casters. I am back with the first player interview of the day and today we have FTG's Flora. Please give us your introduction and I am the main DPS for FTG Flora. 
We had a very heated series today, and also a series that wasn't a 3-0 overwatch. So tell us about your performance. The team comps that we prepared was based around Zarya and Cassidy to counter Doomfist. And I think for the most part that we played well. Your performance on Cassidy was what you won you the POTM today. And especially with your aim, it was incredible today with two headshots in a row. So tell us about your performance. I think that in order to play Cassidy, you just have to have that great aim. And yeah. So, you, it's hard to use the ultimate for Cassidy, so do you have any tips you can give to the fans for Cassidy? And Sorry about that, I did not hear that part of the answer, so again, back to the question, do you have any tips you can give to the fans? So, and he says that, please trust in your support players and play bold. FTG showcased a bit more variety with the team comms, so how did you strategize coming into today's match? He thinks that Cassidy is the prince of the comp, so every other player has to protect Cassidy. A lot of the fans, both here on site and online, are watching today, so would you like to say anything? And thank you for the support, and I will continue to work harder to improve my performance. And that is the interview with the first POTM, Flora, and I'll be back with the next uh, team representative interview. Back to the casters. Thank you very much, Quest. Well, good to hear from Flora. And yeah, it turns out clicking people in the head does make you, uh, does help make you be a good Cassidy after all. Yeah, trust your supports. Um, I think, you know, the, the advice I would add on to anyone trying this comp is also don't blame your supports. Um, <laughs> very, very good play, but also like, you know, it's kind of what we mentioned. Cass is, is the core of that comp and really nice to hear that confirmed. Great plays and I think it's a comp we're going to be seeing more of. Very well could be the case. We'll find out though as we get ready to go into a quick little break here and get geared up for our second series and see if anybody else was inspired by this play from Flora and wants to try it themselves as we get ready to come into that second match.
Alrighty, we are back, and it's time to go into our second series here of the evening. Bit of a delay there. Well, that first series, because it wasn't a 3-0. We got a 3-1. We got to see Flashpoint, but Escort still does elude us here in Korea. Maybe <laughs> our second series can deliver on that front. Uh, maybe. Hey, it's very possible. These teams are a little bit closer, but both are struggling a little bit right now. It has not been ideal for either. Uh, we can get a little more into it when we hit up the rosters, but right now it seems to, I think maybe it's good for both of these teams that the meta is possibly shifting, because I think both of these teams, and we're talking about Poker Face and Vesta, uh, it's our upcoming match. Both of them struggle a little bit with uh, just playing Doom, really. I mean, sure. and you saw Poker Face trying to adjust around it of maybe running uh, Peppy and Sigma a couple times, especially when they went to Kings, they were running different things, but really, you know, when we were seeing a lot of mirror of, of the Doom uh, Tracer Echo Mirror, they were struggling and they were they were getting out doomed by most of the other teams on, on both sides of it so maybe a shift in the meta a shift in the possibility at least could could benefit both of these squads i mean it's already been uh as far as like new meta enjoyers it's been a very good day for that i mean we got to see ryan <laughs> versus zarya in the opening map um you know the opening yeah. sub map i should say there of nepal and then some arisa uh, head to head as well in that first series. So if that trend is going to continue and we start drifting away from the Doomfist meta a little bit more, then I think overall uh, everybody is widely going to be appreciating just that breath of fresh air. Because look, I like Doomfist as much as the next person. I think that it could be, we could put up some incredible highlight plays and just really pop off with that pick. But right. you also want to see different things from time to time. Well, Vesta was also kind of steering away from the Doom to begin with. It was, it was kind of a, a Junker Queen team. Like, it was a lot of Junker Queen and just uh, not really utilizing that meta correctly. It wasn't always working out perfectly. We can talk more about it if they if they start running it. But really, the Junker Queen, you're you're waiting for Shout so that your DPS have the advantage and they can win their 1v1s. Not always working out uh, that way for them. But um, this, uh, I believe, Vesta team, like, they... They only have five players, so sure. you know you're you're not going to have the depth to really adjust. Uh, whatever the meta ends up being, whatever you decide that you're going to run, you better practice it, and everyone better be good at it. On the other side of things, uh, Poker Face has, I want to say, eight players. Yeah, it looks they like have eight a bit players. Of an so, roster. so I mean, yeah, a, a bigger roster. And Poker Face, I think a lot of people were expecting them to be a little bit better than they have, but they run into a buzzsaw. Really, they they had to play Falcons and Yeti. Those are their two losses. So. Yeah. What are you going to do? I mean, <laughs> stiff competition. Right? I mean, and yeah, for, for all the teams that, you know, are only running with a, a solid five-man core, uh, you know, Falcons is to blame because they've just snatched up all of this talent that has been existing. <laughs> and they said, okay, we'll take you. We'll yeah. take you. We'll just combine. We'll just make this giant super squad of players so that nobody can get this, this all of this, I was going to say untapped potential, but we already know that like, they're all known quantities. So it's very <laughs> tapped potential, but it, the tap is still free-flowing, I guess I should say. Right. <laughs> When they were first announced as, I believe, Hamster before they got picked up right, by yeah. an organization and good for them on that, um, I looked at it, I'm like, oh, that's like the best damage line in the league or, or like on the planet. I'm like, oh, that's like the two best tanks on the planet. I'm, oh, those are just the two best supports uh, backline that's worked together forever uh, on the planet. That that seems really fair. That seems I'm, I'm happy for that. Yeah, so. they got uh, they got while the getting was good, snatching up those players. So. Uh, I mean, good on Falcons for being able to just bring this together. I mean, not only just the players, but I mean, you've got Krusty, you've got Chuck Fuck that are here as well. So uh, just a re-combo of this this coaching squad that has a couple of championship rings to their name, as well as just numerous playoff appearances ever since their uh, separation with, the, you know, Chuck Fuck going over to the Houston Outlaws. So yeah, an mm -hmm. immense amount of experience across the board. And it's really hard for, for that team to really try and find a, a, a weakness. But I'm curious to see how these, these two teams are going to be squaring up against each other because I mean both are just looking for a bit of a run back a bit of a break as far as the uh the tough tides are concerned so but only one of them can come out on top inevitably yeah I, I mean Vesta's 0-2 and you you would like them to look more competitive and get something on the board but in in a way I think this is much more important for poker face because if you're not beating a team like Vesta then who are you going to beat in the in this league um so I think it, like it, it it feels more important to them in a way even though when I say like Vesta is 0-2 like obviously you want to get your win on the board um but there's it's I feel like the expectations are probably higher for poker face especially with the amount of uh, people they have on the roster the amount of experience they have on the roster 
Um, I think a victory for Vesta would be playing close and playing better than they have so far, and maybe finding an identity that they can they can stick with. Whereas if you're poker face and you end up losing to Vesta, which is I believe at the bottom of the standings right now, then you're really starting to have to ask yourself some tough questions. Sure, I mean that's kind of one of the things that we're seeing over in you know the Japanese league as well. You know, a team like Niam who you know are down there at the bottom, but did just play a very close series against a tougher opponent in, I believe it was in Insomnia just a couple nights ago. Uh, so you can see that they're on that upward trend. They're on the track, on the right path to become a team that can contend. So I, I agree with you as far as your assessment here that, you know, even playing a close series would be a bit of a win for them. But for Poker Face, you know, this is a, a, an org that has been around for quite some time now. Uh, I mean, have always been near the top of contenders and I believe I actually even just have the, the, the most recent championship in their back pocket as well. So as an org, there's going to be a decent amount of expectations. We'll go ahead and get both of these teams out onto the stage as they get ready to do battle. Yeah, absolutely. Poker face looking good with the kits. We got to give Vesta some uh, some credit with the kits. I know that you wish they were called Vespa so they could they yeah. stroll up in some scooters. That's a, yeah, it's a marketing opportunity I think they need to look into. Okay, they just need to learn a little bit of Italian, reach out, say, hey, hey we've got this walk great out opportunity. Yeah, and walkout game on point. Yeah. All right, so that's looking good. Look, we just need, what, we got uh, three, four, five, six. We need six to seven Vespas imported to Korea, <laughs> and we will do all of our promotional material and photo shoots and everything while riding them. <laughs> that's what they need to do. <laughs> but we'll take a look now at the starting lineup for the set of Poker Face, and it's actually going to be Iris, who's out on the bench to start. Yeah, another interesting wrinkle uh, Iris being out. It's not the first time. Um, they've also brought in um, I believe Simple before to play with Faith and they'll run a double flex support. Another interesting part is that Finale's coming in and Becky's out. I believe it's uh, the first time Finale has played so far in the OWCS Korea. Uh, so like I said, a deep roster, they have options. Maybe this is signaling that they're gonna try something new. Uh, maybe they were happy in scrims this week that something had broken for them and they're able to pull something out. So um, Proud will very likely be playing the Tracer as had really nice performances on Tracer on matches, you know, that they, was able to take down some of the best tracers in the world. Finale might be coming in to play the hit scan. Uh, the tank role is going to be interesting because their backup tank, Jasmine, has gotten a lot of playtime as well. All right. Well, as mentioned, the starting five here for the side of Vesta. And Goodham going to be that lone player there in the tank role. It was, you know, has been getting knocked around a little bit when it comes down to the plays as he is widely sticking on things like the Junker Queen, as yeah. you've mentioned. So a lot to prove here for this significantly younger squad. I know Wolf was disappointed that off is not spelled with a zero, but I think I have some some advice for Vesta that if they sign a new player, have them have an S in their name so we can get a five in there as well, right? Because <laughs> we've got all the numbers going up. We need to sequence it. I think that would be another great opportunity for him. But yeah, this is the five that you're going to see for Vesta the, the whole time. There's There's benefits to that and there's negatives. The negative is you have to have a huge pool if you're going to be playing any of these. You don't have any specialists and um, you know you don't have anyone to really practice and bounce ideas off of. The positive is you're going to be playing. You don't have to worry about getting south. Right. Well, it's time for our interview to hear from the coaches. So we'll go ahead and throw it back up request. Thank you very much, casters. I am back this time with the team rep interview for match two. We have Poker Face. Um, his name is Blue Haas on stage, saying hello to the fans. And for on the Vesta Esports crew, and he is the coach for Vesta Esports crew. Welcome, welcome. Uh, what were some of the improvements your teams made from your team's losses last week? It's regretful that we lost last week's matches. So we, I was focused on taking care of the team's mentality, the players' mentality. And he says to the fans that the fans can expect goodness, good performance today. And on the Vesta Esports crew, he says that <coughs> The players were a little bit nervous, so, and I think that coming into this week, um, they have the matching uniforms now, 
So, and the, the nerves issue has been taken care of a little bit. So he expects a better performance than last week. So the second question is, which player should never be underestimated on your respective teams? He says Finale, who is playing on off, uh, playing offline for the first time. Um, he is a he takes care of a lot of the other players as well, so he believes that he is the core member of the team. And on the Vesta Esports crew, he chooses Minit, who's shown consistent improvement. So please keep an eye on those two players. And to both teams, what were some of the words of wisdom you shared with the players ahead of today's match? And Poker Face, he says that to just enjoy the game, enjoy the match, and be confident. And on the side of Vesta Esports crew, yeah, he says that let's just give it our best to put on a great match, um, to showcase a great match for the fans, and just try to stay relaxed. And we've met with both the team representatives for Poker Face and Vesta Esports crew, and that's it for the team rep interview. Back to the casters. Thank you very much, Quest. Well. Taking a look here, it looks like we will have a little bit of differentiation as far as the map pool is concerned. Li Zhang Tower will be where we kick things off on control, but King's Row once again going to be cropping up. Yeah, it's always Kings. Uh, really, not a surprise there. Uh, Li Zhang Tower has also been played the most so far out of all controls. I want someone to get gutsy and pick Ilios one of these times, but I know why they don't. There's a reason it's slightly nicknamed Silios. Um, I might be the only one who calls it that, but I think it's fitting and apt. But uh, Poker Face will pick our first map, and that is Li Zhang Tower. Really, I'm just excited to see what they're going to play because all of the, I mean, maybe these roster moves are to play this, play the same um, composition. But I think bringing Finale in is a really interesting move, an interesting hero pool. Maybe Proud moves over to a Cassidy. Uh, we'll, we'll see. There's no reason to speculate. But Finale is a player with a lot of experience, played for the Toronto Defiant in the 2022 season of the Overwatch League. So um, definitely a lot of experience on this squad. And as I mentioned, I think there's there's a lot on the line for Poker Face. No, there certainly is. I mean, this is definitely not a, a loss that you can really afford to take. But for Vesta, what a victory it would be. It would certainly taste maybe maybe not the sweetest of them all that would be taking down falcons for sure but this would be a damn good start <laughs> to be able to get that first win win on the board for themselves so we'll see if they are going to be able to follow the coach's advice coming out here onto the stage and staying calm staying relaxed because getting frazzled and caught up in the moment that is what could be your undoing yeah, and it's a, it's a team that has run different stuff, as I mentioned already, and when we get to Kings, we might end up seeing their style uh, that other teams have actually come out and mirrored against them, too. I think Faith was the only player to play a Brigida so far uh, in in this division this year. Uh, Pepe, obviously, I mentioned, had been playing a lot of the Sigma, so there's a lot of uh, questions and intrigue around what Poker Face is going to bring in week two of the OWCS Korea, because week one, uh, we, we saw what they brought in it. It didn't really... Um, it wasn't really up to snuff, really, right. to be honest. Well, a nice little wave there, either to the camera or to the crowd. More likely the latter there from Proud. Let's see how he's going to be faring today. Because, I mean, he has also had some really, really great performances. So I'm, I'm curious if that's going to be continuing here into today in this matchup now. As it does seem like we might have a brief little delay of getting into game. Well, Proud was the best player on their team in both their victories and their losses. And I feel pretty confident saying that. Maybe it's my tracer bias, maybe it's the meta's tracer bias, but Proud had moments where definitely stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best tracers in the world and looked uh, every bit like he belonged there. So yep. uh, a player that I definitely can't overlook. And then we'll see what the pairing ends up bringing with Finale. I'm excited. Let's see the rosters. All righty. Well, see, see the comps. See what they're going to be rolling here in just a moment. As it looks like 
at least for now on the hovers. I mean, nothing too surprising on the side there of Vesta, expecting that Minute is just going to be swapping over onto the Tracer after the Symmetra TP forward, but Poker Phase might piece together something a bit more spicy here, as Finale currently showing the Cassidy. I, I think the support line definitely stays that way. I think that's why you bring in Simple. Okay. And, yeah. It's the flip over. So it's going to be prone on the Cassidy. Finale going over to the Tracer. That makes a bit more sense there. As it yep. will just be, once again, this Zarya coming through. Yeah, a new comp. Uh, submit your names in the chat for whatever the comp is. I always need a clever name to call something. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's, it's really interesting to see how this goes. Vesta is running what they've run the entire time. Uh, the Junker Queen. And it, it might be even more difficult for the Junk Queen to get some value and even get the, the, the sustained healing when the Zarya's got the bubbles up. Alright, well, for now, forward space taken here by Pokerface, looking for the first lockdown here of the point in control center. Flex them out, going aggressive, looking to try to get in on top of crowd. Mortality Field does come Radio through. Mark. They're able to break that relatively quickly, but cannot confirm the kill on the cowboy. So now still alive and getting some good headshots there on towards Goodham. Bombs again, connecting, taking him low, but not taking him down. And Poker Face in the meantime have managed to scatter them off the point long enough to be able to get that lockdown. Now the M Matrix is going to be invested here. And I think Goodham able to find Faith, but crowd up right in front of this is just coming up with kill after kill. So two picked up for him, looking for a little bit more, playing this out patiently. Expecting that Goodham's going to come sliding around the side, and he will be able to get the final headshot. Simple thrill to be off the bench. First of all, that enormous immortality field keeps everyone alive. Then, when everyone's down to that little bit, you start to hit those splash, gets the uh, immortality, or gets the amplification matrix so quickly, drops it immediately, pride, uh, proud, able to take advantage of it. Huge play so far from the Baptiste. Some forward space taken. I mean, he's just rushing forward with a dead eye. What is this call? Either way, it does end up working out for them, at least for the time being. Brown will end up falling. Pepe going to be taken down as well as Minutes able to collect two kills, and maybe they have, in fact, overstepped. The knife will go wide. The push forward from Goodham, however, will just eventually be able to confirm the kill on the simple. And yep, Poker Face with a little bit too much aggression. They find the op that opening kill with a dead eye. They feel good about it. Then it all gets <laughs> taken away. Uh, there's not much you're going to be able to do there when they just drop the rush <laughs> right on top of you. I mean, rush works out so well with uh, Junker Queen. So the, the, the Kiri and Queen composition is a, a huge boon to each other uh, to be able to cleanse and make sure that the Queen can get some work off, but also just getting Queen in there, get in the fight. And so the Queen composition, what you really want to see is when shouts come off, do the DPS take advantage of the, the extra boon they get from the commanding shout. And Matrix again to try to spread them off the point. Sound bigger going to be opened up there from off. Faith now matching on the opposite side. Grab still on the way from Peppy. Now just 6% away from having that online. Good, I'm going to be taking low, trying to stay alive. The Rampage does get popped. He goes across, managing to find three with that anti. Now the cleanup will come through. Peppy, even with the grab invested, yes, he's going to be able to get dart, but wildly the fight is going to go away from them. As Vesta will now move themselves up into the lead. Wow, what an ambitious... Um... Rampage that was. I, I was kind of worried about it. It gets three, but great cleanup, great follow up from Vesta on the other side. Um, Pepe threw in that grab and it, it looked bad at the time, but you kind of knew they were switching. Um, either that or it's a, I messed up, I'm going to switch to make it look like that was the plan, but I think this was the plan all along. Okay, well, is here on the Sigma Prod with an opening kill, now finding a second. Taking out off, taking out Goodham. Does get them back onto the point here very quickly. As the flip gets ready to come through, minor contest there as Minutes just going to be taken down very quickly. Clean up there onto the DPS. Poker Face once again going to be in control. Should be able to at the very least catch uh -oh. up here uh -oh. as you have to shove him off, making sure that he cannot get out the safety. <laughs> very good tracking there from the side of Faith. Just keeping tabs on that enemy, Lucio. Off is off the map. I'm sorry, he set me up. I didn't mean to do it. Oh, uh, Poker is in a good position now. They're going to be holding front door, but it's a little bit different this time because there is the Sigma to at least maybe hit a rock and a disengagement. They do have to worry about getting rushed on again, though, as uh, Vesta has the rush ready to go. Yeah, Duke coming through, projected barrier, denying that accretion. Immortality field now coming down as Peppy, continuing to be under fire. Eventually does fall. Got him confirming, confirming that kill. Start will be able to get simple once again, just on the rotate back in here alongside this Kitsune Rush. It's looking damn good for the side of Vesta. One last player to try to clean up here is Finale. He's desperately trying to take himself out to safety. Tucks around the corner. It looks like he will be kept alive, so cannot find the full confirm there on the extended team kill, but Vesta now in a strong spot to be able to take this opening round away. Minute is lurking with the pulse bomb way, way behind. He's going to be able to come up with the goods here. 
anybody's next is simple, that Immortality Field should be called upon quickly enough. But it's actually going to be Finale on the opposite side, finding value there with the Tracer. Simple, however, does get caught now that Immortality Field doesn't have to be worried about. Rampage going through, Peppy going to be taken down, and now it's very much going to be a battle of these DPS if they can get rid of Kuro. But no, the sound barrier timing from off right in the very last second is able to save the tank's life. But I'm still under a bit of duress here, but is finding some sustain, is finding some stability as Finale now has everything to do. Pulse Pump at the ready, drops down, tries to find the stick, is unable to get it. It's going to be Minute cleaning him up with a five-player kill streak. See Mortality Field take it out. Happy rejoining here on the Doomfist. Sticky Bombs coming through. They jump off the point just long enough for the OT to bleed down. They're trying to wait out and get that sound barrier for the re-engage, but the timing just is not there. But Vesta will be able to take the opening round here of Legion. Some really nice individual plays, but I really like how Vesta was able to play around that composition when you have a more static tank, like a, a Sigmon, you have more static heroes like a Cass, you have to come from all angles, and that's exactly what you did. And I think what gets overlooked, too, is that the Kiri can always take different angles as well, because never really out of position when you're a Kiri, because you can teleport to everyone. The Junker Queen worked out really well, but more importantly, the follow-up was there. You see right there, Sigma, either side of that shield, that Sigma's dead. Very nice opening volley here from the side of Vesta. Poker face looking like they're going to be sticking through with the same composition as we move into Night Market. Let's see if they can make the adjustments necessary to make this work. Finale goes for the swap. Temple again just looking to layer in damage wherever humanly possible. It looks like Vesta not looking for the neutral fight out into the open. Want to go straight in for the point. Yeah, I think you really don't want your Echo to hang out in the open. If you can take control of the points, uh, the Echo would much rather live in this house. Oh, the HP bar is though so low. Mag Grenade nearly taking up Dagon. And he will be able to survive at least, but two players gone. It means that once again, Poker Face are going to be getting this opening control here. We'll start moving up, but for how long that lasts, we'll have to just wait and see. This is just so aggressive. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to be a little more gun-shy, at least staying out of this doorway now after what happened on the last stage. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely something that we're going to be looking for here. Just showing that round-over-round round growth, just to not try to overextend, but Finale going to be caught into a corner. Beam from Dart, able to take him down. Nice pull looking for a bit of a displacement there. Unable to find it, but it does very much send Pokerface backpedaling here all the way to the opposite side of the point. Proud now, forced out, forced forward. Just nearly get picked off. The immortality cool. field there is on point to try to keep him alive, and then Dart just diving in is able to find him with a beam. Kill coming across. Simple gone. Peppy dead again. So another energy reset going to be found as Vesta will get themselves in control. Just 38% built up for Poker Face. Yeah, when we talk about a value, we talk so much about like ultimates and how efficient they were, but the knife making the other team use immortality field because you're able to pull uh, the, the core of the composition and proud out of position is a huge knife, huge value from that queen. 14% uh, and counting up, Vesta looking pretty solid right now. And the fights that they've won decisively have been with the Katsune Rush. So they're in a good position to sit back, wait till uh, Poker Face takes any sort of step forward and just run right in. Yeah, and Faith not having the sound barrier could spell disaster here for Poker Face on this approach. Ant Matrix will try to open things up. Pulse Bomb lobbed in. Still not going to be found there for a minute. Right back into the fight, though. As Finale will get taken down. Dagon with the headshot. Able to find him. Proud now trying to stay alive. Bubble coming through. Denying that mag grenade for a brief little moment. But as the bubble gets broken, Dart is putting his own cast on display. Quick shots coming in. A quick sweep under the rug here as Poker Face cannot stand the ground. Yeah, like I mentioned, they, they were going to rush right in there. The only maybe overstep there is that they had to use the beat during that fight. So now Poker Face are, is going to have uh, the beat advantage going through. But there's something that just tickles me about an echo uh, magnetic nading a cast. And just going for the dupe and doing it a little bit better. Let's see, though. Pulse bump from Finale as well. Something that likely is going to need to find value is Dark nearly getting taken down. Proud still putting that aim on display. Is able to do quite a bit of damage here. The shields come through. Goodham under some fire. But if he can survive long enough, that Rampage would be available. But the grab comes in from Peppy. They lock him in place and they're able to find the elimination. 80% about to be crested here from the side of Vesta Esports. So they still have some time to work with here on their side as Open Face will be able to get this flip through. Yeah, just getting the very last vestiges of value off of that point to go from 80 to 84. Uh, forcing out the grab. And now what's really interesting here is where Vesta wants to approach because you you, you want to get this rampage and you want to get value off it. But it's such a strange map that 
there's points where you could end up rampaging off of the edge or into a corner in a bad spot. So where the Junker Queen for Vesta sets up and initiates is going to be really important. Okay, Rampage now going in. Once again, going to be able to find three of the Immortality Field cleaned up. Just looking for these killing blows as simple desperately. He's trying to stay alive. He will be able to do so. Uses the Ant Matrix, but they lost Peppy in the meantime. And now Proud is going to be taken out as Grum chucks in the knife. Simi Rush once again, just helping to find an immense amount of value here for the side of Vesta. As they look to regain control. Poker Face getting close here as they still need to displace Finale. So once again, on his lonesome, running out of bullets. Does help manage to take down off as Faith rejoins. And with a shout, they will be able to gain the lead here temporarily at least as Peppy coming back in with the Doomfist. Helps give them a bit more of a mainstay presence now on this point. Duke going to be used in desperation to start needing those iframes to try to stay alive. Looks to rejoin in with the rest of the squad. Leaps up over the top, goes low. Works his way back over to the point where Poker Face now up to 99%. Both teams starting to bleed down. Dart taken out. Kill found off needing to survive. Just 5% away from that next sound barrier. The immortality field does get cleared out there on the side of Poker Face. Back in though. Goodham dropping in. Seismic slam. Not enough green HP to try to survive. He ends up getting taken out. Now off using the sound barrier. Only shielding up three. And he himself still dangerously low. Faith now matching with his own on the opposite side. Minute going to get dropped. And that means that we are going the distance here on Li Zhang Tower. Yeah, I think that... I that's a pretty good example of the the queen rampage being a weird thing to use on that stage in particular because the rampage was good it hit three it was a decent rampage and everyone's very low but the queen ends up two doorways away from the rest of their team like there's two doors between the the follow-up that needs to come through on those damaged targets and where the junker queen is and it just it's a very interesting alt because of the movement ability but it's it's a weird point to use it on and they they, I thought they were going to win that fight based on how many people were purple and anti-healed, and they just couldn't clean it up quickly enough because the queen was not with the team and because of the architecture, um, a little rough spot there. But Vesta looking uh, much better than I expected, to be quite frank. Yeah, I mean, this has been, you know, a very competitive opener here in a map where Vesta very well could come out on top, narrow margin separating them. They're on that last round of night markets, and now all coming down to gardens to see whether or not they're going to be able to find the wind. Is Proud instantly looking to try to get that pick off there onto off. Science just everybody he's looking at right now. HP bars there are getting shattered. Mortality Field has to be used as Proud himself taking a bit of burst damage. Will be cleared out by Goodum, but Proud eventually finds his mark. Had his sight set on this Lucio from the very beginning. And finally is able to clean up the kill. Happy as well, going to be able to get the enemy tank. And that is going to be Poker Face for the third time in a row. Able to get the opening lockdown here of this point. Well, start to trying to, yeah. We went up when they should have went down. I mean, the reset's only a couple seconds later. So the question for Vesta now is, how do you find a way in um, with the Junker Queen? Because there is almost no way to mitigate damage here, and you're going to be taking so much chip on the outside. It might be one of those cases where you have to rotate through White Room, wait for maybe your your shout to come up, and just uh, send it to the point. Well, speaking of White Room, here we are. Finale, we're calling out, keeping himself safe. This Peppy under some duress, worked down to about half HP. Trying to stay alive, that has high energy right now, so getting reset here would be devastating for him. He needs to try to utilize that added damage to really build up towards these grabs a little bit faster. Pulse bomb out from Finale, looking for the kills, able to find it. They're going to be taken out as Godum and Dart both fall along the wayside here. And it's just going to be, I mean, Ant Matrix pulse in, fight win is proud with a nice little headshot on the back end, tops it off. I mean, one of the things you want to watch with this Junker Queen conversation, like I mentioned, is the shout. L look when the green health is up, when they have just a little bit, and those are the advantages that Vesta needs to take advantage of, to, to be quite the wordsmith here. But that's uh, the small thing that you're running with the, the Junker Queen for is to make sure that you're winning 1v1s, but they're not running mirrored 1v1s now, so it's a little different. Okay, that I end the play. Not going to be finding a pick this time around as the sound barriers get dropped on either side. Duke in, Dark gonna be building up. Grab now online, can invest that here at a moment's notice. This grab also available here for the side of Peppy. The grab is gonna be used and Dart is able to collect an immense amount of kills with it. Right there on the walkway, cleaning up three and Peppy wisely noting that this round is over, this fight is over, holds on to his for the retake. Yeah, you have to. And you're, you're, you're a single fight away from winning it all. I'm just saying, you know, Seth, they're close to having uh, the tools for the Big Bang. You set us up for it. You're the one who brought it up. <laughs> I, we've, we've had a couple attempts, but the, the <laughs> yeah. bomb itself has not been coming away with the eliminations. But maybe this could be the difference maker. Granted, it does become a bit more difficult when you have that hitting on the opposite side. And you're locked in place, I suppose. 
We'll see how it fares. Is the three approach now coming through? Rampage going across. This time only finding Proud in the Immortality Field is using the back end to try to keep him alive, but Minute has that pulse bomb woven through. I mean, they just get blown to smithereens here. Finale just going to be dashing out. Again, they wisely don't commit anything. They get the Rampage out of them, and they do have a decent amount of time on their side, but off? I question this. Hey, yeah. Don't know what happened. Either way, he's respawned. Should be able to get here pretty quickly. Push forward, grab coming down. I mean, good up completely and utterly isolated. Nobody else was even near him on his team. It's like not quite getting the call to rotate out as Proud, quick headshot on the dart, turns to get the tag there on the minute. Helps with the finish, cleans up Dagon, and that is going to be Poker Face right back in control. Yeah, and it very well may have been um, an eco push, the push before that, because they come in and with the ults that they accumulated and were able to absolutely clean it up. Pulse Bomb layered in with the dead eye. An immense amount of burst damage there's poker face now moving past 90 percent without the tank it's gonna be so difficult minute in position at the ready waiting to dash in to try to get this touch does manage to do so, so forces out the overtime here and then it's gonna be dead on the back end so now without the tracer a bit of a juggle here onto the winston Gorham's nothing that can be done ends up falling down and even with that gibson a rush available the sound barrier now popped in for off it's just gonna end in an ajax as they send dart off the side of the map faith Gives him a parting boop to say, nope, you're not getting this map win, but you played as damn close. Two to one, Poker Face will be able to take Li Zhang Tower. And it's, I guess, a, a Pyrrhic victory for Vesta. As we mentioned, we just want to see them play well, play closer to some teams than they have so far. Uh, Dart was a standout. There's some really nice plays, but overall, it is Poker Face that pulls it out in the ends. I do have one, like, I don't know if Minute got found out, but that seemed like an early touch. I know it seems like a small thing with those two seconds or so from like 98 to 99 and some change on the clock running down can be the difference between getting your, your team in a, a better spot or not. So it seemed like an early touch, a small nitpick, but those are the small things that can win or lose you or at least give you a chance to pull back a fight. But a good showing from Vesta um, and it's, it's a good showing from Poker Face too. This is kind of what we, we thought they were going to run. Yeah, I mean, they come out with it, and it certainly does have its struggles. You know, close rounds played throughout there, but I think that that's a lot more credit to the side of Vesta, who are very much getting geared up and ready for this series. And we're hoping that that kind of, you know, performance from them is going to be continuing as we go deeper into this set, because of course we're going to have King's Row coming up next. Why would it be any other map? No one likes to play any other maps, other than I think maybe Runaway might have played Poker Face, but I don't fully remember. Either um, way. I believe this Poker Face team might have played Midtown as well. I remember a team trying to run uh, flex, right. double flex uh, on Midtown, so yeah. But well, it's been it's been like all kings except for two variations. Yeah. Well, dealing with Proud's uh, Cassidy here, I mean, we saw them getting the better of him. I mean, a lot more regularly compared to our opening series where Flora which was widely untouchable, uh, you know, aside from, I guess, King's Row. Maybe that's the map where this just this comp doesn't hold as much water. We'll have to just wait. But, uh, I'm curious to see if Vesta are going to be able to fight back here and you know stop us from having a 3-0. We already had a nice little 3-1 scoreline. Let's stick to trending in that direction. We'll see what happens when we come back for the break, so don't go anywhere.
Alrighty, welcome back. We are just one map here into our second series of the evening here, the week two of OWCS Korea. And Pokerface are able, we're able to take our opening map rather of Lijiang Tower. Hard fought though, two one on the scoreline. Vesta looking competitive thus far, and that's what we're looking to see continue as we go into King's Row. Yeah, when you're in a position where you're 0-2, you have to start small. You start building it up with, let's take a fight, let's take a stage, let's take a map, let's take a match. Like You have to build off those things. Um, and they, they started building off of it a little bit, but I think Poker Face has got to be pretty happy that it's not a pure Doom meta right now. They seem to have learned something and that the, the Zarya and the cast works really well together. Uh, Proud is a, a great player, and then they've got someone who can come in and, and play the Tracer as well. Uh, it's still Beck in the wings too if, if needed uh, so really interesting um, but I you'd have to imagine that they're going to try to play some variation of it but they could come out and run the Sigma again I think Sigma is probably Peppy's best hero um, and yeah yeah I, I, I don't see Jasmine coming in Jasmine's been their Junker Queen specialist so that is going to be a good thing for poker face as they look to go up two and zero well, that they do we'll see if they're gonna be able to get it done as we get ready to go into this map here Beck is once again going to be punching above their relative weight and we'll give them a solid challenge okay um i don't think we really have to question what vesta is going to run it seems like they are set in their ways of running this composition that uh, they've run in all of their games so far um, I mean, it's not a huge sample size, but they have not varied from that composition yet in the tournament here. And Poker Face, well, they're playing offense, so we yeah. don't know yet. Don't know yet. Proud just going to be looking for an opening snipe, but everybody playing back here from Vesta. I mean, this is just... It, it, we're hitting the point where it's like, okay, is it even worth <laughs> trying to do? <laughs> He's pushing it out into the open. <laughs> oh, man. Hey. At least they're having fun, right? Yeah. As, as you get to say. But what a tragedy of errors that would be. Oh, I don't know. I think it'd be funny. Oh, it would be. <laughs> but for the team, it would be a tragedy. <laughs> I think yeah, they, they, they might they might think it's funny too. Might get a talking <laughs> to from the the coach or something, but still worth. Um, yeah, the stairs is where you're going to see a lot of these tracer retracers come in, and then Lucio will come in and support on either side. There you see the Lucio come in and help. Uh, right now, Vesta is corralled onto the point on the low ground. Not ideal. If they can, uh, if Poker Race can get their cast into place, it just ends up being a shooting gallery. All right, well, Shout goes out as Grum tries to lead the charge, get them back over here onto the point, get this contest, but it's high energy right now. Built up for the side of Pepe. Off, yep. I was going to say, you do not want to be in that position, son. Right click comes through, and he just gets evaporated. Doing like a very fast take here on the point. It's the only thing in the kill feed here for the side of Vesta at the moment is the immortality field. And there you go, 5 minutes, 34 seconds as the lockdown comes in. Dagon just looking to die here, get that quick reset back for the rest of the squad. With very few exceptions, King's Row first remains almost impossible for teams to hold for any significant time. All right, some switches do come in from Vesta. I'm going to see a Winston and a Soldier. Mm. This is <laughs> a little really concerning think? here. I mean... Yeah, it's not the same Cassidy of the past, obviously. The flashbang isn't, you know, super great, like, anti-dive like it once was against Winston's, but just given that we haven't really seen any scientist play, this does feel a bit worrisome here for Vesta. Let's see if they can pilot I mean, this to success, though, as well. Proud found mid. I mean, you go with the soldier so that you have the range advantage. Oh I mean, God. I've heard that... Yeah... Winston is allegedly pretty good in some compositions because the bubble can be so, so good. And, and obviously the cleave and the damage that is able to put on on multiple targets. But I don't know if right now is the time to be trying to experiment with it. But maybe it is the right time because they got absolutely rolled over on that first point with what they've, they're accustomed to running. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely. I mean, that was just a proud moment. I'm mean, proud just went crazy. Just... Yeah annihilating them there and now looking to further zone back and also push forward looking for a target here as the dead eye will expire just goes for a quick cancel in the meantime Godum's just dead didn't even see him finale just got into the back line somehow and it was able to take him down with a pulse bomb this gets traded out though as minutes able to find one and now that consider rush is going to come into play grab nearly online here from peppy ready to go 
waiting yeah, for his can opportunity. Just wait it out. I mean, 100 energy. He's just going to go ahead and send it now. Sound barrier timing is going to be good from off, but can they survive this grab? The answer is going to be yes, I would assume. His minute is equal by the headshot. Crowd's going to be taken down. Sound barrier still committed in here from Faith, though. Pressing in the rest of the team to be able to close things out, given that the support also gone on the opposite side. So try to push forward. Finale is going to end up getting punished from the shot right here at the opener as minute goes sliding forward, gets himself up onto the high ground. Heels coming through desperately from Thagon to try to keep him alive, but eventually he does crumble. And now the rest of the team, Fang Power, very much is dwindling here on the side of Festa. Pulse Bomb in. Peppy, however, able to just go ahead and keep himself alive through that one. Still just trying to find these eliminations to get that cart across that last little meter that they need. Good up now, re arriving. Instantly sent back to the spawn room doors as the cart will go through, and it's going to be 431 now in the time bank here for Poker Face. Uh, three lives in a row where Winston jumps in, deploy shield, and dies. What is my purpose? You deploy shields. Oh my god. Yep. Um, just absolutely knocked out of the fight every time. Maybe get He's... some primal value here or something. I mean, I like that they're trying something new. I mean, you were you you brought up an older term in the eco push earlier on. That's the eco dive, something that Jester <laughs> was known for all the way back in his time at GC Busan. Uh, just, you know, come back in, you dive, you die. But hey, you're building up towards that Primal that he now does have ready to go. Primal's gonna hit pop, looking to just juggle them up the staircase. Does push him out into the open a little bit here, so it looks like Faith is able to elude capture. Not gonna get taken down, but Minute will still be able to collect the rail shot there on the finale to find the enemy Reaper. Well, I, apparently the Winston has done enough that Finale feels the onus to switch onto Reaper at the very least, which is kind of strange because you can still run Tracer and just just go hunting with the Tracer. There's a lot of times where Overwatch is a 4v4 game and then Tracers Ooh, the are playing themselves. Up. Couldn't get out. Yeah. Couldn't break that line of sight. Proud on the right angle. Able to find that elimination. Simple gonna be taken down though before the sound barrier shielding can come through from Faith. Off pulling the trigger on his own beat there on the opposite side. Hoping to keep the team alive for the time being, but he's getting tagged up quite a bit. Still chasing forward, still looking for some eliminations. They know that they've got Pepe against the wall. They are able to take him down, but Finale, with that Death Blossom invested, trades out for Gurum, and they also get Dart to boot. So trade up there for the side of Poker Face, but Zarya with a slow run back means the swap is going to come through as Pepe looks to go for the D.Va. Yeah, D.Va can be very good here. D.Va, in every time that we've seen uh, her used in this tournament, has gotten value every single time, and able to control the high ground on last is important. Yeah, I mean, what was it, Hotman bringing it out, finding the, the 4K at this very point on King's Row. Yeah. Good, I'm dropping down here on a low ground, instantly going to be up with, met with death as Peppy comes cruising through, but he was able to find a target. Simple going to be gone, so the healing going to be reduced, but it looks like the roster here from Vesta is going to be reduced to rubble as Proud continues to get these clicks in. He's looking for Dart, looking for Off, is able to find the ladder, Mag Grenade not going to find the stick, but it does not matter too much. Minute immediately dealt with as he swaps over in desperation onto the Widowmaker, trying to have his own little... Carpe moment, perhaps. Then I will get the double in the end. The push comes to fruition. Two minutes and 13 seconds remaining here for the side of Poker Face as they get to the end of King's Row. I mean, not much to really say about that. So, uh, Poker Face put their foot on the gas and went all the way through, only stopping a little bit before second point, which took a little bit longer as Vesta had to pull out all of the stops there as the Winston came in. Some decent play on the Sojourn, but... I mean, really, if you can't get to this McCree, they're going to feast. Yeah, I mean, he's just been so well protected here, Proud. I mean, I, and I, this this ultimate is not a good one. Like, no, the Deadeye not is not all. a good ultimate, but somehow Proud is making every bit of Cassidy's kit look impeccable. Yeah, especially towards the end. I mean... It, it looked like the white flag was raved, raised there as well. They they, they came out on the, the Widowmaker to try to get some sort of pick going. And this might be the ultimate of surrenders. We'll see if they actually come out with it as the Life Weaver is selected. Although, you know, there's, there's, there's a couple teams playing Life Weaver, right? Yeah. No, okay. I, I'll admit it. You caught me, chat. I opened up to see if I got away with it. I did have food in my uh, mouth. Yeah, yeah, very clearly you did. Maybe my, it's my fault. You could, you know, you could have just messaged me and let me know. My dinner finally arrived, and I wanted to get a bite in. Oh, I'm tried. sorry if I, yeah. Well, that's okay. I made a bigger flub. I, I forgot uh, Cassidy's new name. Sorry, guys. I was, I was casting Overwatch for a long time before <laughs> the name change came out. So it might happen here or there. I mean nothing by it. Habits die hard. Yeah. But now I've been trying. <clears throat> it's been good so far. It's a, a very smooth transition back into the casting world for you, my friend. As <laughs> we'll see how this attack goes here for the side of Vesta. 
again with much the same. Proud now trying to occupy that high ground. Going to be under a bit of pressure, though, against this Echo, but can trade it back. That's what we have seen from him. His faith. Oh, man. Rotating around the backside there of the statue. Does end up getting taken down, but Proud is just doing everything here for Poker Face right now. Two kills found. Now a third as Dagon will get dropped. Got him. No supports left a lot to try to keep him alive. Will end up falling. They get themselves nearly up to two ticks, but they're going to have to reset and go again. Yeah, we go again. Vesta is back onto what was uh, most comfortable for them overall, and it works out pretty well on this point. Really, you just have to ask yourself, how are we going to get into the back line on the cast? And it's so far, I haven't seen a good answer for it yet. Um, really on, on either side, if you overcommit, the rest of the team can jump your back line. It, oh it's very my. difficult. I mean, you see Gurum pop the shout, but it's just two dinks from Proud, and he's just immediately back down to half HP. Another dead eye looking for the timing there, trying to get the catch on the opposite side of the wall onto Dagon. He does manage to juggle away from it, but I, it's still just such a one sided affair here. He takes the TP back out into the spawn room to keep himself alive at Poker Face. I mean, they have a vice grip on this point right now. And time slips away very quickly on these hybrid maps. We're down to 220, which usually, if you suss it out, is about two decent pushes. Vesta has had the, um, I guess, silver lining of being beaten so badly that they haven't used any alts. So they, if they're going to have any combination they want available. If you open with Rush, there's the Rush. Okay, Rush coming down. Axe just close enough to get the tag there on the Peppy as they look for Proud. He is very much corralled on his lonesome inside of the hotel. Immortality Field does spare him a little bit, keeps him alive a little bit longer, but he's not going to find too much value. Duke now in, looking to build up towards this Grapton Surge, and I mean, Pokerface have really no choice but to play back. They can't go for the touch on the point, they're just going to have to surrender this one in the end. So it's going to be four minutes and ten seconds here in the time bank. As Vesta finally do break through and get that cap. For a little bit more here. Let's go to him going low. Now very much has corralled himself, and Finale is able to collect. Proud right back into it, though. Rejoins, instantly kills off two. Well, now the question of how much hubris do you have as Poker Face here? Do you go for the straight up door camp? This was, uh, I don't know if there's any real old heads back there. This was the selfless holds way back in the, the NA okay. days where they used to just hold this door. <clears throat> that MLG days? <laughs> I mean, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> they will like, back it up, though. Not going to go for Poker that. <laughs> okay, did I? Does it find value this time? No. Dart able to slide away just fast enough as that's going to be the Big Bang! And Finale has finally made it happen. Two kills going to be found as often. Gorum. Well, they just disappear. Absolutely obliterated. And this kind of goes back to the question you have on Nepal of where is the Rampage going to actually find value from? Um, and get yourself in position where your team can follow up. Right now, you're in narrow areas, oh. and it's going to be difficult for your team to follow. And that's a huge pick. You have to go on that. Yeah, that's an enormous one. The Immortality Field not being there to try to counteract the Rampage is immense. Still going to be held for the time being. And so you're trying to bring the card forward here. But Proud, he's got, he's got no HP! He just killed two of them! Minute and Dart both just fell to the wayside, and now he's chasing for Dagon, and he's going to get it! Oh my goodness. This guy. He's, he's got the hand of God. <laughs> a, a cruel god at that um yeah 220 and this is the the last place you want to be is not being able to get through a doorway it's, vesta feigns going up top and they don't i mean you're gonna need good individual plays here they open again with rush have trying to get to, something out of these alts yeah i mean trying to get the hound in there i mean also i'm not going to be able to find any value we're sitting back around the corner for the time being as Dart once again trying to replicate some of the success we saw from the opening map where he went for the dupe here onto the cast. This time though is going to be broken out by faith of all people. This minute forced to recall. Dart able to pursue deep enough however to get that beam across. Does find simple taking him down and Gurum will be able to clean up crowds. The push can continue but valuable time has been lost here on this hold so they need to try to speed things up and get this push into B as smoothly as possible. It's a good chase for a minute. Gurum's been holding on to this rampage for a while now, and you'd like to see the, the send now that there's a little bit more open space, a little bit more chance for follow-up here. Finale gets caught trying to set up a tracer flank. 
I love that Tracers are just usually playing their own mini game, then on yeah. occasion they have to go play with their team. It's the only true 1v1s we usually get in this game, <laughs> as it turns out. Yeah. As for now, forced back around the corner. Again, opening kill found here as Proud just gets the headshot on the dart. He's trying to clean up Dagon. Finale wanting a piece of the pie will be able to get, collect both of those supports as the team kill does come through. Less than a minute now remaining. Sound barrier nearly built up here for the side of Vess, and it feels like it's going to be so instrumental in trying to get them across this line. I mean, here's the problem now, though, is uh, even if this Rampage comes in huge, Faith can just barrier it off, and oh. it's not going to get anything done. Oh, Finale is a stronger man than I am. I would have been diving in there trying to get that Pulse Bomb through, but he plays the patient game, finds the kill there onto Goodham. Immortality Field taken out on the side of Poker Face, but man advantage is theirs as they just try to hold uh -oh. up a dart. <gasps> going for the back cap. They have realized. Uh -huh. Finale making note of this. Rotates over. Keeps it covered. But if he loses that fight, which looks like he's chased him off of it for now, and then that could have been catastrophic here for the side of Poker Face. But it is noted the rest of the team now going to be caught up here in this Graviton Surge way back over towards the opening archway. Beat dropped in from off. I mean, consuming Rush, everything invested to try to get themselves over, but the Deadeye is holding them at bay. The shields are gone. Now it's going to be a counter beat coming through. Rampage does go across, connecting here on towards three, but the cart cannot be touched whatsoever. The so Poker Face will be able to take the map. Yeah, pretty one-sided there. It, it gets to a point, though, on that queen that you have to fire it off at some point, and you, you can't be worried, oh, they're going to beat it, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. Well, that's still value. Like, make make them use speed. Make them have those. That's an alt that you can't hold that long. I know I know it gets weird, but if you can find one person um, that's, that is isolated and able to take out, then it's absolutely worth it. The back cap effort was nice. I would have liked to see it. Um, it would have been very so, funny. Yeah, I mean, there was a couple things that could have... They, <laughs> best to have the chance to do some great Overwatch comedy. The push out of the Tracer to into a Widow shot would have been great. A back cap was always great. Uh, they played pretty well, aside from the, the, the weird switches onto Winston. But, you know, um, I think both teams can be happy with their showing. Yeah, I mean, you know, not as tight-knit as we were hoping for there on King's Row, but still a chance as we do get ready to go into push. But, I mean, when Proud is doing things like that, I mean, that's just disgusting. We, somebody needs to make the Scooby-Doo meme where they take the mask off and it's just Pine's face underneath there because <laughs> that is kind of what he's putting on display. It's just classic season one era Pine. Yeah, that's another throwback as well. Uh, it, the thing is, there's no great counter for really good aim. Um, unless you're you're going to super commit and you, and you maybe you start trying to run a diva into this, but here's the thing: you, at least you start thinking about this and you step it out step by step. You run a diva into it to try to shut down this cast. Well, then you're just getting like it's one of the hardest counters in the game, Zarya into diva. So yeah. you're just you're just dying right away. And so, I mean, I think the the thing that we might end up seeing if this composition becomes the in vogue composition is might end up in a mirror again and then maybe a team will find a counter to it and you find a mirror again but the, the evolution of it's been interesting and we might just come down to whoever's the best cast is going to win that match yeah well right now proud very much is uh looking like he's out in the lead but a final chance here for that evolution to come through for vesta as we go into a quick little break when we come back we'll see if they can get a map win as we get ready to go into push so don't go anywhere
And we are back. Poker face now out in a dominant lead. Have match point in the back pocket after a very strong showing from, uh, I mean, Proud in particular here. But the whole team overall there on King's Row, just utter dominance. As we now look towards Esperanza to see whether or not Vesa is going to be able to pick up a map win here. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they do try to maybe run the mirror or if there's a wrinkle in which they do run a different tank. Esperanza has been a good Winston map before if that was something that they really wanted to run. Like, there was a time where Winston Sojourn uh, with a dive element to follow the Winston around had been really good because there's this kind of hoppity hop high ground you can do and, and take uh, one bridge onto another bridge onto this weird point as well. So it's a possibility, um, but I, I'm pretty sure we know what Poker Face is going to run as they try to perfect the uh, new Zarya Cast composition. Been, uh, yeah, some some bouncing around. We'll have to still workshop a name for this one. You know, obviously, space, it, it's, space cowboy. It's Remember a bit that. like protect the president. So I was thinking, like, yeah, beer, you know, the bubble the bureaucrat or something like that. Change it up, <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll 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 figure something out in the, <laughs> in the downtime. Well, okay, so but it's got to be something like cast really like bubble the bandit. How's that? It's better. Yeah, that's a little better. Yeah, the bandit bubble. I don't mind that. Yeah. Yeah, all right, we're starting. We gotta start somewhere. We can always improve on an idea. But... Cowboy Bubble Bop? No, no. Oh, I, th well, I don't know. I don't hate it. I but I, here's, <laughs> here's the thing. When I like something, you have to understand, I like really good stuff and I like really dumb stuff. There's nothing in between. So I can't tell you which that is. That's fair. Well, it might be really good. It might be really dumb. All I know is I liked it. I think for now, bubble the bubble the bandit is probably uh, leading in my <laughs> in my interior <laughs> uh, rankings. But you know, we'll 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 get the we'll get the, the crew together. We'll put all our brains uh, into one little think tank and see what we can come up with. Get the gang back together. We got a couple days to figure it out. I'm sure chats and some threads are are all going to help us out here. Um, so Vesta, back to the old ways, except they're not going to throw an echo into this. Dart goes over to the tracer in minutes onto the sojourn. Yeah, I guess you can't you can't really run echo against what Proud is doing right now. Yeah, that that is the case, and that does put a lot more pressure here on minute to be able to, to very much deliver when it comes down to playing this sojourn. Those rail shots. I mean, if you can just consistently tag up uh, Proud here and you know force him back around corners and whatnot, then that's going to be a good look. But already good, I'm going to be taking very low, and Finale is able to go ahead and. Confirm that kill. That will be traded out, but still the fight widely looking to go the way here of Poker Face is off and Dagon both going to be tagged up. The former going to be taken down, and now the latter as well. That's the, That first fight is critical. They're already going to be able to take a significant lead on the map. If they get a second fight, you end up at about 50 or 60 meters, which is... It feels insurmountable on push, although push is such a long map. I always forget it's like a 10 minute map total, um, but it feels like once you get to this point, if you don't stop them from getting the checkpoint, especially and you allow the spawns to come in, you're in really, really bad statistical trouble as far as trying to win a map. Yeah. Finale off screen, taking a bit of damage there. Keeping pace towards that pulse bomb is Dart, but I mean, Caster Curse, okay, he's going to be taken down. Peppy able to find that elimination. He's proud. Just Shooting range here is pushing up against Goodham, which is always a bit of a dangerous prospect typically, but now the Deadeye will just go it through and finish the job. They can take it down at the same time as Finale's just wreaking havoc in the back lines. Looks like they're not going to over-pursue this time, though, for any additional stagger kills. They're just going to focus on the push, which is already moving past the checkpoint. Yeah, I think the, the things that we've seen that will cause the Poker Face comp some trouble is coming from different angles and cr like playing in chaos. The last thing you want to let this composition do is only have to worry about 180 oh. degrees of vision. Okay, well, I believe second pulse self-kill of the day. Finale does take himself out of the equation, but took Dart down with him as see Proud just kind of duck and dodge as much as humanly possible. Avoid getting headshot, but then in the end, he's going to be able to find him. Also gets the cleanup kill here onto Peppy. So let's some, some control coming through here. At long last for the side of Vesta, as they can breathe a sigh of relief and start moving the bot forward. Yeah, the Minute Sojourn has had a, a couple of uh, decent performances. Uh, Kings were second, you know, there was, yeah. there was a couple 
couple of picks there. So there's some mechanical talent here. But yes, we are back on the Winston. Um, I don't dislike it. I think Winston can be so disruptive. And also there's a there's a good deal of survivability. You get in there with the, with the bubble. Uh, perhaps you can cut the Zarya off from the cast. I, I think there's, there's something there, I oh, think. Oh, good. Um, well, well good. I'm just getting maybe caught not. trying maybe to not. play. What yeah. do I know? Just trying to play in the little cubby there. Ends up getting taken down. Dark at the same time. Dead. Off. Sliding across, lucky to still be alive. Is I mean, hey, there's another good shot there from Minute. Just doing his damage to try to keep them in this map. Taking down Proud, gonna be a good showing there, but Faith coming up with two on the back end. The bot once more staying on this side of the map. And that is going to be the forward spawns yet again. Just another thing that Vesta has to deal with. Uh, I mean, the thing with Vesta is they, it doesn't feel like they have a ton of synergy now in this composition. It used uh, to have the. Happy's on an island. At least it feels like he is. Okay, some reinforcements now coming through is simple. Let's use that ant matrix. Odd, sorry, odd pathing. Kind of catching me off guard. Either way, the fight is going the side of Poker Face. <laughs> uh, and here I'm just trying to remember who said no man is an island unto himself. Can't remember the author of it, but uh, it's a good quote. All right, so... Uh, Poker Face is going to be able to push in here. They might want to wait for Simple and just back up and not go up this hill. They they are in a very decent position to just finish this. And we've seen a couple of pushes finish so far um, in this stages. Okay. And it's usually when a team is getting beat pretty badly that they kind of lose the will to fight anymore on push. Uh, the overclock not finding an elimination as that is going to be. The jump forward here as that Primal Rage comes through. Still though, Proud staying alive. This Faith continues to collect. Go to him and Dart both falling to this Lucio. There's medium energy here from Peppy. Still having to be respected. Helps take down the remainders. Faith coming up with three there in the fight. John Dunn, I believe, is the author you're thinking of. Yes, yes, that's continue. correct. Did you Google it or did you know that? I Googled it. Be honest. It. Okay, well, thank you either way. Um, but here's the sequence of events that I think just happened. Proud got stuck got bubbled to, to live. They continued to push on the proud. The immortality field came out to save them. Oh. It's like, at some point, it's like, what do we have to do? Okay, well, it's again, minute swapping over to this Widowmaker in desperation, trying to have his headshot after headshot after headshot moment. Everybody just playing inside. And I mean, for Poker Face, they widely are going to be okay with not continuing the push. They have such a significant lead. The clock has been drained down to about half, but they gun with the opening kill there onto Pepe does lead the way to start moving this bot back once more. And as Proud and Sybil will get cleaned up. Well, some pushback here. We are more than halfway through the map, though, and if you want the, the realistic assessment is Vesta has to win three fights in a row to tie it up. Very difficult to do. Yeah. Um, especially... Gonna stay on the Widow, though, so entertainment value coming in. I see some Widow happen. Let's see. Can he be that guy? Go for that Fleta slash Carpe-esque performance here. Or Pine for that mention, since we've already been talking about him alongside Proud. Because that's what they need right now. Finale does get tagged low. Force back for the time being. And it's just every time Goodham shows at all, it just feels like a headshot immediately lands onto him. Making him think twice about the jump forward. And Matrix now coming through. This finale going to be taken out. Minute able to find that opening value. So claims one. Proud now trying to get the shot. Gets the dink there. Nearly taking him down, but can't confirm the kill quite just yet. So for now, Festa still going to be operating with a full squad. Now with the sound barrier coming through, they look to want to ensure that. And the crowd getting taken out. They can finally start this push, but that was still a decent amount of time bought. About another minute off the clock there from Poker Face as the bot just now starts pushing. Yeah, Minute got finale during that. It's always nice to see a Widow take down a Tracer. Might have just been too close where they fill up the entire head hitbox. Um, but some signs of life here from Vesta. I think, you know, the Winston is not getting abused very badly. I, I don't, that's not like a backhanded compliment, but it's working better than I was expecting it to. Able to cut off some of this healing and really just kind of the, the agent of chaos they need. You can't just let this team walk forward and only have to deal with half your map. Oh, great angle. Another, yeah, deep sight line here. He is vulnerable to some potential flanks, but ooh, ooh quick ooh. peek. Finds Proud, taking him down. Grum, however, does overstep, ends up falling. Simple find of that kill, and that gives Poker Face a bit of space to try to push forward here and intercept. But for now, the bot will make it to the checkpoint. They have to wait out this delay. Got him now respawning. Gets that forward spawn here for himself as well, as Minute under a little bit of duress tries to back off. But false bomb stick from Dart, able to find Simple. And the gears are starting to turn here for Vesta. 
able to get the checkpoint. Now forward spawns. Thank you for calling it the delay instead of the term that I hate when it's referred to it as. Um, yeah, this is it's 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 an interesting composition. It's, it, I don't know how much stock to put into it right now, but if you can widow and outrange the cast that bad and kill the cast before they have a, a chance to help the cast. Okay, well this time Rowdy is going to get the better minute. It's a decent idea. He's been holding a bit more water here, but looks like Proud is finding his footing once more. Is off going to be taken down? Simple getting a little the way out off screen, but I just it's just click after click and death after death here. So another reset, a decent run back there from Vesta, but it took about three minutes to get to that point, and they're still separated by what 60, 60 meters, something like that. <laughs> I see what I have to do. I don't do math in my real. There's a five at the end of it. 65. We'll send it. There we go. <laughs> Finale now fighting Dart. It's a minute needing to have a pop off. Has the infrasight rolling, but I mean, they're so well aware of it. Just playing right outside the sight lines, just toying with them a little bit. As ooh, the jump, bold position take there from the side of Simple. Now that that infrasight is gone, they're trying to dive forward. Minute now backpedaling, trying to keep himself alive, but Grab comes in, locked in place. The headshot taking him down. Straight out on these Lucios, as Dart is able to claw one back here in their favor. Finale going on the hunt. Not really noting too much of anything until he spots Dagon. Quick little TP over to safety. He will be able to stay alive. Uh, I think if Poker Face uh, runs into any adversity here, they will just back up. It's the hardest part of the map to push into, um, not only because you have to go uphill, which historically always a bad idea in battle, but secondarily, Vesta is just going to have giant respawns here. You jump in, forces out a bubble preemptively. Good eye now. Is available. There's the speed boost. Looking for a target, but the sound barrier in response. Off, keeping everybody alive for the time being. As Proud is going to be taken down low, but he's still able to win out versus Goodum. Turn around, however, though. As Minute comes back with the cast of his own, is able to find the kill there on the Proud. Faith as well going to be taken down as Finale. Down to a sliver. Will get finished off. The revenge kill popping up there. But now it has to be a monstrous run back here for the side of Vesta as we get ready to go into overtime. Okay, now Vesta is trying their hand at part of this composition, at least. Um, and it's able to get a couple. So have to be perfect, have to win, like I said, conservatively three fights in a row to be able to pull this off and keep this series alive. Does Vesta Esports. We have a couple decent tools to begin with. Finale with that pulse bomb, obviously going to have to be a concern here. As well as the Amp Matrix, if they can just try to zone them off the card, but they're off the bot, I should say. They have that Kitsune Rush at the ready. Dart with a pulse of his own, could try to open things up. Dive into the back line, though. That's going to be minute taken down. Magrinade just flying to the wayside as Proud continues to snipe here from the high ground. Primal Rage now popped. HP bars going a little bit low. Proud able to finish off Dart. Getting juggled a little bit. Bubble comes in from Pepe to try to keep him alive, but eventually Gunnam is able to find his mark, but now he's just running out of staying power. Bubble thrown in. Pulse Bomb not going to find the stick. Gunnam still maintaining control, maintaining his life here for the time being as they rejoin here from Dagon, offering up some heals from the high ground. Just trying to keep this Winston in play. Get taken down. The rest of the team now needing the pile in to try to keep this bot contested. Sound barrier used, shielding up two. Peppy with the grab. Might just be able to grab nine them away from this one as the OT starting to plummet very quickly. The push forward, the recall coming through. The pulse bomb not going to be able to get anything for the side of Dart. And that will be it. A solid effort on the run back there from the side of Vesta, but just couldn't quite make it happen. So that map win will elude them, and Poker Face will be able to bring us back into three overwatch territory. Yeah, Poker Face now at 500 at 2-2 two and two for the full-on record. They seem to have a pretty good grasp on what they want to run. I will say, I would like to talk a little bit about the losing team. Definitely some uh, very solid mechanics on that best of team. Definitely there were some moments that I, I thought uh, you can build off of. Looked decent. I mean, obviously towards the end, it's, it's all disjointed, but they need some time to work it out. You don't want to run a Kitsune Rush with a Winston. That's kind of, you know, it doesn't really synergize all that well but obviously poker face uh, able to able to pull off the, pull off the uh the new meta whatever we may end up calling it my only biggest fear is that this is going to set up onyx unrealistic expectations for cassidy's on the ladder i would have won if i got an immortality field and double bubble and everything else yeah uh, if you guys but... just played the comp that i told you to play I'd be, <laughs> yeah I'd pop it, it off right now if you guys just let me play the game, only me, yeah. uh, that'd be great. So uh, it's it's an interesting comp and, you know, it's I'm looking forward to seeing how people try to mirror it. I think there there's some interesting ideas. You can't save the cast 
if you can one shot the cast so maybe burst damage comes into play that's why the widow worked out a little bit brings its own set of problems uh sowing chaos is important but to the surprise of no one the cast player from the winning team proud will take player of the match yeah i mean just i and i think that this was a little bit more individualistic compared to you know flora winning it earlier i felt like there's so many just crazy moments here from proud and i mean I, I, I think case in point was that finisher on king's row where he has one hp and then just goes on to kill three people uh the boldness from this kid right now is looking he's looking insane his accuracy is nutty he does look like the you know the second coming of pine when it comes down to cassidy play so right. i'm so excited to continue watching him because right now he is such a promising prospect yeah, especially in a division full and especially even a team full of former league players for the most part. He's one of the only players on his team who didn't get a, at least a cup of coffee in the league while it was round. So uh, this is where the story begins. Yeah, and it's quite a beginning for him, you know, even with some of the struggles that the, the Poker Face have had in their opening series here, you know, in week one now into week I mean, two. But this is, I mean, yeah. he still has been making a name for himself already. I mean, like I, I preface the struggles, they lost to Falcons and Yeti, and they didn't look completely dominated. And in fact, most of these, even though we had three Overwatch, we haven't seen a team get dominated. Um, th there's, there's definitely been huge one-sided matchups in the history of upper echelon competitive Overwatch, and it has not happened yet. So uh, it's too, too early to write any team off. And oh, for sure. it, as the meta shifts and changes, you never know what's going to happen. And now sitting at two and two, Poker Face has to feel okay. Yeah, they're in a, a comfortable position. It's that 50% win loss rate. It's all about just building up from here. Uh, but I mean, for Proud, damn, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of these highlights shared on Twitter and Reddit as well because uh, there's so many to, to choose from. But uh, I will say, I actually kind of liked it from the side of Vesta right in the, there at the end when Minute just decided okay screw it i'm just gonna go for this cassidy pick myself and he was able to put up some solid figures so it's always rough because you're wondering okay what if they had just opted to go into that a little bit sooner because even just right. the, the swap to the cassidy itself looked like it was finding a decent amount of value um but yeah this not, is it. clearly not wanting to go for the entire swap on the team does end up punishing a little bit there as well gets stuck lives through it then just walks out into the lamplight like <laughs> You're tiptoeing through the raindrops at this point as Cass. Well, Space Cowboy, you know, Bubble the Bandit, whatever we want to call it. Either way, it's looking damn good for the set of Poker Face, but let's go ahead and throw it back over to Quest for the interview. Thank you very much, Casters. I am back with the second POTM interview for the day, and we have Poker Face's Proud. And congratulations. Uh, uh, Proud is suffering a, a little bit of an injury today, but despite that, received the uh, the POTM. So how do you feel? He gives all the credit to his teammates for holding out as well. So all the credits go to his teammates. And the injury that he sustained is actually when he jumped out of his bed and he actually broke his foot. Um, I think it's his foot. <laughs> he was on fire today. And in map two, he had a sliver of health, but despite that, he was smiling on camera and was looked like he was having fun. So please tell us about your performance. Um, the team comps that we showcase, it's the first time that we're showcasing in a match. So he thought that, oh, wait, I don't die even if I play like this? And he just pressed the W key just, and somehow he survived. So he's amazed by that fact as well. Speaking of team comps, what was the focus of the Poker Faces team comp? And we formed our team comp based around Zarya and Cassidy. And we matched the, the enemy tank hero to counter. 
근데 정국진 완벽히 파회하셨단 말이죠. 어떤 파회 쪽을 Can you tell us how you were able to push through against the Junker Queen composition? 돌아 버려서 힘들지 않았나. 팀원들이 쫄지 말고 할라 해서 His teammates said that don't be scared just play your game and he was able to break through the enemy junker team. Uh, enemy junker queen comp, I'm sorry. 역할을 맡고 있다라고 말씀을 하셨습니다. 그런데 우리 프라우르 선수는 팀에서 왕자님 대접을 받고 um, 저는 아마 공주님 아니에요. Flora said he is the prince when he's playing Cassidy, but um, Proud says he is the princess when he's on Cassidy. 그렇다면 오늘 두 번째 POTM을 기록을 하셨는데 uh, this is his second POTM, so can you show them a little bit of the Cassidy ceremony? He's a little bit embarrassed. You're embarrassed, you're embarrassed, but you're still doing everything. But he, and he says that his fans are here, so he has to do it, even if it's, you know, a little bit embarrassing. And that was the POTM interview with Poker Faces Proud. Congratulations once again, and back to the casters. Thank you very much, Quest, for the translation. Uh, unfortunate, unfortunate to hear about the injury there for Proud. Hopefully he heals things up, but still having fun, having that celebration there on stage. And it's plenty to celebrate with that 3-0 victory. But we're not done yet. We, of course, have one more series coming your way. That's going to be Runaway, taken to the stage for the second time this season, going up against Simprissa. So don't go anywhere.
All right, it is now time to go into our third and final series here of the opening day of week two. We've got Runaway versus Sinprissa. We started things off nice, nice competitive series, a 3-1 scoreline, but now we're back in 3-0 territory. So let's see if either of these teams can drag us back into the, the holy land, the promised land of non-free overwatch. I think it's going to be a tough ask for uh, SPG, Simprisa Gaming. Uh, Runaway is one in one. The loss, of course, was to the Falcons, um, but that was really close. I actually went into yep. OT against them on King's Row. They, they definitely had a chance to pull that one off and win it. Uh, on the other side of things, SPG is 0-3 right now. They just haven't been able to pull it together. The one note I have here is that one way that you can, might be able to punish run, Runaway, the one way that I've seen, is you punish their supports who are known for being ultra aggressive. That's Lee Jae Gon and Vigilante. And because I saw Vesta actually almost um, take a stage off of them, I know that's small, but it was because Lee Jae Gon went in and got killed and then Vigilante went in and got killed. And so like that might be the one thing that you could possibly try to exploit when you're trying to beat Runaway. Yeah, I we have had we've seen the the full spectrum of of Lee Jae Gon plays already on display. I mean, uh, I love it. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's you know whether or not you uh, you're cheering for him, I think it will bring a smile to everybody's face, no matter what that guy's doing, because <laughs> he's either going in and he's killing four people, or he is just completely hard into the game and costing them precious time and precious rounds. But uh, you know, you live by uh, and. You live and die by Lee Jae Gon uh, when it comes down to Runaway. So I'm curious to see if that is going to be the set strategy here from the set of Simprisa. I agree with you. I think that, that would be a very good way to try to get the upper hand here. Uh, but also potentially right. trying to really shift the tank battle is another one because there is some concerns coming into the season, seeing that Runaway, you know, not having a backup tank, Mag being this guy who's coming in that has not had historically the deepest hero pool. Um, that could be mm -hmm. another potential weakness that can be exploited. Mag remains a mystery to me, to be dead honest, because I remember he's coming into the league in 2020 or 20, yeah, 20, 2021, maybe. I, don't, I think it was the first year I was producing. Uh, so 2021. And um, yeah, he came in as a rookie on Washington. And one of one of our games that we played on the desk is a hot take. Uh, and Zoe said, Mag's going to be rookie of the year. And everyone's like, well, that's such an ice cold take. Of course, Mag's going to be rookie of the year. Didn't quite pan out that way. But Washington as a whole that year went into something a little bit weird. So I yeah. still don't have a great read on if Mag is really good, mediocre, kind of bad or up and down. I guess streaky would be the right word right now. However, the nice thing for Runaway is you can always just rely on Profit and Zest to be the best damage healers in the world because they continue to be so. Profit, um, it, yeah, it's yeah, it, it's it's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, certainly, some high highs. I mean, it, as as much as I want to say that I'm I'm happy I don't have to go back and forth between Profit and Profit. I'm still kind of sad yeah. because that means that Profit, you know, he's retired and that, that's obviously very that's... upsetting. Uh, but some nice cheeky waves there from the Runaway squad out here on stage. Runner opting not to go for the uh, the cohort sweater wearing, which I shake my I shake yeah. my finger at you, Runner. But uh, <laughs> we'll see the players now from Simprisa as well making their way out to the, the stage. I can't believe you said that about Profit because I had the exact same thought. I'm like, the only silver lining of Profit retiring is that we can now not say Profet. Yeah. Right? So that's helpful. Hey, walkout game on point for SPG. <laughs> 
I hey, you know, this was uh this is something good to see. Some more personality coming out here from the players. I mean, runaway kind of getting out done on a walkout is not something that we're used to seeing, so maybe they'll have to level up as as time goes on. We have fairly high ceilings. We're not playing with booths there, so runner can't <laughs> really break anything too easily, but he maybe he'll find a way at some point. But here's the squad. I mean, it is just these five players coming together here trying to find some success, but obviously plenty of players also rejoining, you know, the, the, the team where they basically started their careers. Lee Jae gone, he was there alongside Gangnam Jin, with Mag as that tank, who was looking like, at the time, the best Reinhardt player, you know, potentially in the world, but very much at least yeah. so, the best one outside of the Overwatch League. Yeah, I mean, so there again, advantages of having the five. Hopefully no one gets out of bed too quickly. They break their foot and can't play somehow. Um, but here's some Prisa Gaming's starting five. Um, I don't think we've seen Mogaru come into the lineup yet. I don't in, believe so. uh, a bench boy so far. Yeah, I think he's widely been just conceding this one over to you. But maybe as we continue to see some more differentiation in that tank role maybe we will get some play time there out of milgaro but i think uh the the big thing for me is is obviously going to be on uh aiden argon just looking to see you know how these skirmishes go uh between them and the runaway dps set up because they have their work cut out for them but if they can do what you said get into the back lines be able to find those punishes on the lee Gone. oftentimes for lee Jae Gone, honestly it could be a front line because he's going to be diving towards you yeah i think get those punishes then that very well could set them up for some success so definitely going to have my eyes trained on those guys to see how they're going to be matching up as well as what the hell mag is going to be playing but we have uh, of course our newest segment which is going to be these coaches interviews which means that we get to hear from runner so let's go ahead and throw it down the stage and throw it over quest thank you very much casters i am back with the third team rep interview of the day runaways runner hello of course he is the infamous runner from runaway and he is the head coach for runaway and on the SPG side, he is the coach, Won Soo-min. Meta is shifting a little bit, so what are some of the key points that the fans can look out for in today's match? Runner? Echo Tracer is finally out of the meta. For us, Echo Tracer didn't really fit our team, but some of the other teams were abusing them. So Cassidy, Soldier, and Zarya is coming into the meta. So we are pretty satisfied. And I he thinks that it is our turn. <laughs> it'll be it'll time will tell. For SPG. Just like Runner said, um, team comps that will counter those comps are being researched. So I'm expecting to see a lot of the counter team comps. This question goes to Runner. Runaway showcased a very good performance in their last match, and the fans are excited for it. So will the fans be able to see a performance from Runaway that will satisfy the fans once again? Um, according to the standings, we're still a bottom tier team, but he is relieved so far for the standings and for the today's match um, again we're facing again according to the standings it's a bottom tier team so for today we're just thinking of just winning the match <laughs> And for SPG's one zoom in. A lot of fans have their eyes on a runaway's return to competitive Overwatch. However, SPG also has a huge fan base, so please share a few words of resolution to the fans. Right now, we aren't doing that well. 
But the goal is to take our first win against Runaway today. So we'll make sure to get that win and turn things around in terms of <clears throat> for SPG. And that is the team representative interview for Runner versus uh, Runaway versus SPG. Back to the casters. I mean, let's be real. It might as well just be Runner versus SPG. This guy has <laughs> just been at the, the core of this squad ever since he put them together all the way back in Apex Season 1. So it's it's always his way, his player picks, uh, and we'll see how they fare here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It wasn't really trash talk, but he's like, teams at the bottom of the standings, we just want to win. Um, yeah, I don't know how to take that. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that one goes. Uh, SPG has just not really been able to put it together yet. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I didn't pay close enough attention, but I look at the games and no one's sticking out as a carry potential. No one's sticking out as the problem. They're kind of an enigma to me. It just it seems like a, a ball of medium play, I guess is the nicest way to say it. And I, I'd like to see someone step up uh, and, and take the reins a little bit, uh, at least show us a little bit more than we've seen so far. Well, we're going to be seeing Li Zhang Tower to start things off here. So we're going to look to go over to here. But we do not have a King's Row. It is going to be that Midtown coming in for Hybrid. So a little bit of a different look there, as well as Coliseo for Push. And then from there on out, we'll see if we can make it over to Saravasa, as well as Shambhali Monastery. So how deep down the rabbit hole can we go tonight? We're about to find out. <laughs> we will find out indeed. I'm trying to look up if it was SPG who picked the Midtown before. Apparently, I stopped taking notes at that point. It's all good. Um, yeah, so at least it would get something interesting um, there. Uh, SPG did end up running like a, this Reaper Genji offense on Kings, so maybe that's why they don't want to go to Kings Row. Don't really have the greatest grasp on it. Uh, I want to do. I do want to see who ends up playing um, the Cass, which I expect we'll see from Runaway. So a lot of uh, stuff still on the line, interesting questions to be answered as we go forward here. Um, if you want to hear the, the a fun story about Li Zhegan on the Li Zhegan Tower uh, moment, I can tell you our, our production that morning, how it worked out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so like I, I woke up like at 5 a.m. to watch um, the the Korean matches or APAC as we called it back then. Mm -hmm. And I saw that he was just hitting every single you know, every every single boop, and, and I was like, "Oh, we need a counter for this. We have to. We have to do this. We have to do that." And so, like, uh, I'm messaging people, messaging, but no one's awake, right? Everyone wakes mm -hmm. up like an hour before the show. The show goes live at, at nine, and so everyone wakes up at like eight, like eight in the morning. We have this production meeting. I'm like, "Guys, stop everything. We're, the show's gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. We have to do a video on this, and we need a counter. We need sound effects. We need this. We need that." And everyone's like, oh, "That's a great idea," but none of our content team works on Sundays. I was like, oh, "Okay, well, what?" So like, I start calling in favors and messaging people. I'm like, I need someone to edit this video right now. And I think it was Matt Malabonga, um, who you may see on Twitter, you may know, who woke up and put together this great uh, Lee Jagon, um domination. I think it was nine environmental kills uh, on gardens and it put the counter up, edited it all together, threw it together. So big shout outs to the content team to make that video happen. But we're scrambling that morning because I'm like, this is an iconic moment that's going to live on forever. We can't just talk about it on the desk. We have to put a package together. But uh, we had to call in some special favors, but luckily we got it done. I well, appreciate your your valiant efforts in making sure that that did see the light of day. <laughs> and I think that, you know, that you're correctly right in realizing that that moment was going to live on forever because I think it might still it probably still holds the record for most environmental kills, at least in a cough map, or especially yeah, and, even and, just a, a sub map. And how serendipitous it's on Li Zhang Tower, Li Zhe Gone. It just, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's kismet, really. It all worked out perfectly. Um, yeah, sorry that I'm not talking about the teams and everything. I've said everything I have to say about the teams. I thought it was a fun story. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, because we have a little bit of extra time getting ready to go into this one. Li Zhang saying something that... Uh, isn't broadcast appropriate, good sir. I can read those lips. Anyways, we're going to be jumping into the game here, it would seem. Start things off on Li Zhang Tower, see whether or not they can in fact make it Li Zhang Tower, as it will be Garin's to start. Okay, uh, I mean, this is this is the scene of the crime, as it were, of what we were talking about. Um, so we'll see what Runaway runs. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen Mag play Zarya. 
So maybe there's a wrinkle. I also like that in the interview they were talking about, uh, we're researching answers to that composition, which makes me think like it's not been solved, but I also just love the, the connotation that uh, it's a it's something that we need a cure for. We're researching it, we're on it. Our, we have got our best people on it. I mean, even the Ramatra, not something that you'd necessarily really associate with Mag. I mean, that's pretty much going to be like Ryan Wrecking Ball that you go towards, but it has played it in the past. See how it fares, though, is it's going to be to you. Also showing us something a little bit different coming out here for Gardens. Even in the meantime, he's going to be on that Cassidy, squaring off against Prophet on the opposite side of the field, and it's Lee J. Khan who actually comes up with the opening kill. Mild shock as aid does get taken down. Immortality Field now going to be cleared up, looking for some additional eliminations here. As Lee Zuman will eventually get found, just constantly leaping up into the air, trying to stay elusive. Just has no mobility to try to get out. So Runaway will be starting things off with the opening cap. Okay, first Ramatra we've seen actually as well. Hey. Had seen, past tense, um, as we have a pause. We'll see. It's a great time for a pause. I wanted to ask you, do you do you know what the sweatshirt is that Runaway's wearing? I tried I, to Google it. I found nothing about it. I have no idea, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I I was kind of hopeful. I mean, if it's a sponsor, hey, cool, good for them. Uh, and it probably yes. is. But I was a little bit hopeful that they were just going to be coming out with the classic pink sweaters, that they would just run those back, dust them off, get them out of the, uh, the attic, and then... Uh, Kai would go yeah. with that, but uh, I don't know. But I'm I'm hoping that whatever Vin's original is, and I'll try to maybe do some searching here on my end with the uh, with Maver, I'll be able to come up with something. But hey, if it's a sponsor, good on them. But it uh, looks like we do have another quick headset issue over here on the side of Runaway. Yeah, little did we know, Runaway has been bought by Vin Diesel because <laughs> they're all about original. family. All yeah. about family, and I mean, hey. <laughs> Name a name a more tight knit family than any of the runaway rosters throughout history. <laughs> so everyone's is, always it's having a good it. time. It makes sense, you know. It all rhymes. It's a rhythm. They're they're actually cool looking sweatshirts. So I was just curious because like my cursory Google search brought up nothing, um, but it's it's got to be a brand or something. And why wouldn't you ro rock the old popular uh, oh. runaway stuff? Well, look at that. Wolf, the historian of himself, is coming through. He's sweeping into my DMs and letting me know that this is actually, uh, this is, oh, and that, okay, it all makes so much more sense. It's Flowervin, runner's wife. It is her clothing brand. Oh, okay. Which is well, why there says, you go. Which is why it says Vins for, you know, out of Flowervin. So there you have it. Thank you very Perfect. much, Wolf. It's all coming together. That's nice. Get the, uh, as they much cool. exposure like as humanly possible. Yeah, and I mean, if Runaway wears your gear, you're going to sell a trillion of them. So <laughs> it's just smart. <laughs> just makes good sense. And perhaps fun's part of the team, too. Symbiotic relationship. Maybe she should consider a pink version. Just because yeah. it, it does feel a little bit wrong uh, with them yeah. wearing white sweaters or, you know, like, I don't know what, exactly what color you'd call it. Cream. It's uh, cream. But, Creme. You know, for me. I want to, I, I see Runaway. I want to see them in pink. I heard collabs are man. all the rage nowadays. So perhaps a Vin's Runaway collab incoming. Mm, that sounds like that would just print money. <laughs> <laughs> but being told that we are going back in the game. So here we are. So first volley being saved off here is Runaway able to grab the point. Now I'm going to be ticking off. Uh, yeah, it's going to be very difficult for them to find their way back in. Obviously, can't go over the bridge, so we're going to have to go through the white room. Going to take all the poke damage on the way in, unless Arissa wants to get the spin to win early. Oh, it's going to use that. Yep, escort forward here onto the point. So you're just going to be sat behind the center pillar as decent shots here from Aid, but so far, kill not going to be found. And now the Ant Matrix invested. Prophet actually choosing not to play behind it, wanting to try to poke and prod out that Arisa a little bit more. It just doesn't quite have line of sight on, so widely. Ult is going to go out, not going to be able to find any picks. Made in, though. Prophet able to take down Argon before getting traded out. Aid winning out on the Cassidy battle. Finding one. Ooh, just knowing the approach from Zest. Instantly finds a headshot as he swings around the corner. Very nicely done there from Aid, as now that Terra Surge is going to be invested, and Mag's got nowhere to go. He'll get sent back into the spawn room. Beat was used there from Lee Jay, gone despite the fight loss. And now Prissa, after a little bit of extra stagger, a little bit of extra percentage building, will be able to get the flip. Yeah, very nice. And that's all it takes is a couple nicely placed headshots. Um, and again, with this map, the question always is, how are you going to get in without getting launched off of the entire map? 
Uh, so, gonna be the question that Runaway now has to answer. It's just, you, you see that you just end up eating so much damage trying to come in. That's one way to zone him out. Dead Eye forcing him back around the corners here. Spin coming through, just denying any follow up damage that could have been there. Pulse Bomb getting rid of that immortality field, and then Dead Eye able to just go ahead and try to soften them off. Mag's desperately trying to backpedal as much as seemingly possible, but will get taken down. Pulse Bomb after possessed. Not gonna be finding anything as Aid continuing to hold his ground and look damn good at it. Another kill coming through, trying to get another, but this will fall to U's hand, and that is going to be Simprissa setting themselves up to take the lead. Yeah, going to take the lead on this map, and it's, it, it's something I wanted to see out of uh, Simprissa. Who, who can step up? Who can have a big game? You know what's funny about the evolution of this alt, too? You used to mock it, be like, oh, a zoning alt, but now it's like, oh, dude, nice zoning alt. Uh, it's, it's, it is really important just to get the positioning, and if you end up getting any kills out of the Deadeye, uh, even that much nicer. Another pause here. Well, looks like it's going to be from the... Uh, oh, no, it's a Simprissa camp this time. Is got a headset sure. off. Yep, headset off should uh, hopefully be nothing too major. We'll get back into this one. We cursed this earlier. We talked about how you know, oh yeah, you know, we've got a, a couple tech issues, but it's happening. You know, before the maps start, we really set ourselves up for it here. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I get nothing else to say about that. <laughs> yes, we did. It is all our fault if you'd like to deflect the blame. There's a, there's a little ghost in the machine, as it were. Um, so someone got DC'd. But that's that's it. I know people uh, like to know exactly what's happening at the very least. So we have that information being relayed to us by our lovely production team rather than just we don't know what's happening. No one likes that. So should be a couple of minutes here. So back to this collaboration that we're going to run with Runaway and Vince. <laughs> well, <laughs> what percentage are we getting for this totally original, unique idea? That's true. Mind. This was entirely from us. And there's no way that they could have thought about it before no. us. So no. I think we should get like 70%. I, I think that's on the low end, but I'm okay with it. I'm right. charitable. Yeah. All right. we'll, we'll, we'll just, we'll be sure to cut you a check. Just don't be shocked when the, the number shrinks a little bit after you do the conversion because the, the USD is quite strong right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, SPG I'm uh, pretty happy with that. SPG is cute. With, I don't, I, I, if that's a meme or like a character from something, I have no idea who that is, but it's so... It's got so much detail in the okay. drawing, but I think it's fantastic. Okay, we're heading back in. Apparently, it wasn't a DC. It was just uh, not getting the frames they were expecting, but we're uh, back into it. 59 and counting up for SPG. Maybe, they, maybe they've had a desync issue instead of a disconnect issue. Either way, Mag now going to go rushing forward. That Annihilation still going to be held. There's going to be a mortality kill for now. I mean, Aid is just staring down a sight line, killing two people. The Jagon eventually does bring an end to that one, but now Mag going to be traded out. Overall, an advantage there for the side of Simprissa Gaming. This is trying to get the prediction there with the Javelin, but Zest just goes off the side of the map to go for the reset, knowing that they only have one more attempt at this one before they run out of time, and Mag is going to be swapping to Malga. Yeah, a little... A little. There's a clever wordplay there, but I don't I don't like how the words are coming together for me. So, yeah, Malga on the mm. field. Mag is playing it. <laughs> Let's see what you're going for. Let's, yeah. <laughs> He's playing Malga. <laughs> Rushing forward, gonna get pushed back, goes charging in. Oh, gonna be looking for some damage with the Deadeye coming through, and Jade protected by that immortality field, not gonna be taken down as the Terror Surge comes through in White Room. And that is both supports gone. Profit now eliminated. Zest and Desperation sending out the Pulse Bomb is able to find Lee Soon Min, but that is just a mere consolation prize. This is a team kill. It's Impressa taking Gardens. And, you know, Aid absolutely crushed. Loss and all that was the absolute domination that 2U put on on the Orisa. Untouched, I believe. At one point, it was at least a 10-person kill streak, completely uh, taking up all the space in the map. And, you know, I, I continue to not understand Mag wholly. I will admit that. But 2U really found comfort looking on that Orisa. And we'll see what stage this is. Okay. They're going to keep um, running it. It look Okay. No, they're going back over to the Ramatra here. Now, the problem is, we've seen a little bit of Ramatra, not here in Korea, but in uh, Japan. There's been a decent amount of play. 
And it has found some middling success when it comes down to running a more classic Ramatra style uh, brawl comp, having that May in alongside it. This is just going to be the Lucio's dead off the rip, though. As the trade backs come through, so that's getting tagged. Profit trying to push forward here with server room to get some damage across, but widely is being held at bay. Yeah, uh, Leechagon got stung there, or stunned rather, by the Javelin. Still kind of posturing for both sides here. Tuyu uh, trying to take it to him. Yeah, not able to get the connection there. It would have almost certainly led to his death. And now Tuyu may be in a bad spot. Let's go ahead. It's up the spin. Lee Jagon returns, dies. It's Lee Jagon things. <laughs> and that's going to be Runaway losing. First control here of the point as I mean, the cleanup on the back end is looking damn good. Yeah, Lee Sumin is going to get a kill there, but the most impressive part was able to keep his tank alive uh, right before that. To you, as you mentioned, went in very deep, able to come back to the loving light of the immortality field. And as I mentioned in the previous stage, with to you at a 10 plus player kill streak, that doesn't happen without the uh, loving embrace of your support. So some some credit to Lee Sumin, who's uh, been playing this Baptiste. It's looked better than they've looked in the previous meta. Out on either side, Mag taken down as he continues to just be a bit of a re revolving door of tank picks. Sigma instantly dealt with, We're trying to break back into the point from here. But that is gonna prove to be, uh, I, I'll just go with difficult, just considering something impossible. <laughs> Play the hog, do it, you won't. Um, yeah, it's it's again, the, the question always is on control, specifically, a lot of the uh. Lijong Tower maps is how do you get in? Yeah. To you, playing into the Razor's Edge again, but again, right back into the arms of his supports. Okay, well, they do gain some space. Yeah. Deadeye now coming through. Immortality Field there to back him up. They're just trying to stay tucked out of line of sight, but Lee Jagon eventually is spotted. His age continuously creeps forward. Once again, a trade out, though. Let's see the Curiosity able to find the opposing Lucio, but the Terra Surge. Looking good until Profit shuts it down. Finds the elimination, but now Mag going to be traded. Man Advantage still going to be here for the side of Runaway, but they still have to get themselves over to the point where it's 86% currently built up here for Simprissa. Nade goes out. Aid going to be taken down. And it looks like Runaway will go ahead and at least get a percentage built up. An ambitious Terra Surge from 2 you right before that, and why not? You'd gotten away with murder for the most part uh, in that exact same spot before. Was down to about... 20% HP at best before that ult even came out. Punished yeah. forward, but that said, some Prisa one fight away from taking the map. Okay, well, it's going to be beat for beat on either side, as well as those Ant Matrixes into play. Lux from Mag, getting the pick up here, getting the drop down, looking for the eliminations, and two will die on the back end as Lisa Mid was already eliminated. So I'll clean up there. This aid will fall. Mag still in a, okay, I was going to say a precarious spot. Could die to Argon, but Lee Jagon comes in from behind. Beats him in the back of the head, and now Runaway will be able to hold for the time being. Yeah, Runaway with the pink skins, are those... I'm They've been using the spark, spark skins. Yeah. yeah they they okay. have been using okay. the spark skins for the most part. Big fan. Have a custom spark jersey. Oh. Big fan of it. Okay, so <laughs> the back line now has that pulse bomb available. Love to try to force out that immortality field, but Aiden's going to find the opening pick. Is Legion again going to be taken down? Solid start. Simprissa threatening the flip. Contest does come in. They zoom in. Eventually does get picked off, though. Zest playing it patiently. Comes up with his mark, and now... Yeah. Adis, he tries to push in to get on top of Mag. Mag says no, and he's able to take him down. Phonetic Grasp does expire. He gets a little bit of shielding and also gets the melee hit to finish off Argon. So for now, run away, holding them back, but still need 30% to go, and that's just going to extend us into a third and final round. Zest being the hammer to Mag's anvil right now. They knew Zest was back there, but there was nothing they could do as uh, Mag was pummeling damage from the front uh, with this Sigma, able to do oh, so much poke even around corners and able to clean up that fight. Okay, aggressive. Position taken here is the dead eye. Not going to be able to find anything. They are able to backpedal safely. Ant Matrix built up. That's going to be the key advantage that they have right now here on the side of Runaway is to you. Trying to push forward. Terra Surge again going to be committed to. He ends up getting taken out. Profit finding that. Finding Hyunjae. Finding Argon. Is filling the kill feed as he picks up four. Lisa Min, the only one eluding his grasp, as it will be 193%. Runaway will extend this over to Night Market. I mean, SPG was a single fight away from it where they bit off more than they could chew. If yep. that Terra Surge goes in with um, maybe 100 more HP than it did, you probably finish it and probably connect, and then you win the fight, you win the stage, you win the map. And 
than your SPG who just took a map off of Runaway. Instead, it doesn't. Zest puts on his carry pants and starts walking the hallway. And it was such a great moment, too, because they knew Zest was there. Zest was lurking around, and they tried to get aid on him. Zest dodged it. Zest comes back and kills the Baptiste. Now aid's looking the other way. Mag comes in and kills um, aid for even looking the other way. A really nice coordination between those two there. And it looks like Runaway going to stick on the Sigma. Sigma via Rissa here. Yeah, Everything else mirrored. Question, questioned it at the beginning, but getting themselves back into the point once they were able to have that flip. That opening control for Sigma, so very important. So they're going to look for it once more, but inside track is taken here. Fleiss and Prissa getting themselves set up. As the spear does get spun to you, seeking some healing here from his supports. As we go across to you, still getting tagged up as Prophet widely leading the charge here. Just pushing up right behind Mag, trying to utilize these projective areas as much as possible. And Runaway have actually stolen the point away from them. So opening cap now in their hands. SPG kind of playing with fire, sitting, playing on the edges when you've got Leisha gone on the map. Yeah, always a bit of a risk here. They will look to try to control him. I mean, it has been uh, pretty damn accurate in his own right when it comes down to this Cassidy. So Leisha gone maybe going to be thinking twice about really trying to dive in and find those kills. Now the regression coming through. And Matrix first built up here from Lee Soon Bin sends that one down. Immortality kill going to be forced out. The flip out in the hands of Simprissa. So they're aware of that backline pressure. Attempt coming through from Argon. Now they're looking for the crunch. The dive forward coming through. HP bars going low and Prophet going to be taken out. Argon able to find his mark. Chaplin not going to connect there, but it doesn't matter too much as Lee Jagon is only going to be able to find one before getting dropped. And that will be Simprissa taking the point away from Runaway and holding it. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> A nice re-engagement there by Simprisa Gaming to take that one back. You wait for two, you to have the cooldowns ready to get the, the spin going there. And then they, they drop everything they had. You put the window down and it's kind of going to force them to pick one door or the other. Both are usually the wrong answer because somebody's covering the other door. And able to pull that one back with relative ease. False bomb goes in, Immortality Field comes out, but Sound Barrier backing them up means that is still going to push forward fearlessly. Trade one for one. Zest just gets stunned up there by that spear, but he can't be found. Runaway could go coast side, try to escort themselves over onto the point. Mag's still just trying to challenge on this corner, though. Looks like they want to go through the front door this time. So they start pushing their way up. Flux at the ready, but that Terra Surge also ready to greet them in the doorway. First, it's going to be the Dead Eye canceled. Pulse bomb down to the floor. Still not going to be able to be found. Bit of a juggle here as Aid comes pressing forward. Terra Surge sent. Not going to find any value there as the Flux interrupted instantly by the spear. A fantastic shot from Tuyu. Shutting down one of the biggest tools that they had to try to get themselves over onto the point. Trade out here on the Cassidy's as Aiden Prophet both get taken out. Zest searching for a target, but getting hounded down. Argon had him in his sights, and he's able to find the elimination. Just running in on top of him, coming up with that kill. Sun in on the 2U, down to a sliver of HP. The final shot there from Mag will be able to finish him off. And it's going to be he and Lijigan occupying the point for now, trying to get this flip. It's in prison, get themselves up down to 90%. Sun Jake taken out. Some more delay can be found. Argon eventually will fall. Putting up for the flip, but run away. So much percentage they need to claw back if they want to get this win. Yeah, second verse same as the first here. So Prisa gaming a single fight away from taking a map off of Runaway as the new meta establishes itself and to use Arissa has come to play. Nothing on the field for either side. Argon can be a hero here with a pulse bomb. Could very well be. Vitality field though. It's going to be available uh, there from Vigilante as to you. Yeah, it was getting juggled. Dangerously low on HP, but is able to survive. Pulse Bomb goes out. Zest going to be taken out as he is able to find that shot. Immortality Field now out of the hands here of Runaway. And the inside track on the point once more here for Simprissa, making their way forward. Prophet gone. Point flipped. The touch needing to come through. There's Lee Jae gone, rotating through, getting that touch. Trying to get the boot, but it's a Tracer pursuing him, so she's going to be safe. Wall rides back around to safety, keeping himself ever so elusive here as Lee Jae gone. Very much on a knife's edge as yet again. The spear comes in, interrupting Mag. He cannot float any longer. He ends up drifting off the side of the map, and that should just about do it. OT bleeding down. Zest able to find one, able to extend it for a little bit longer, but the Terra Surge will take out Vigilante, and that will be the conclusion here of Lee Zhang Tower. Sin Frisa Gaming showing up to play, making Lee Zhang 2 to 1. Have to call it an upset, but wow, really strong performances out of every member of Sin Frisa Gaming, despite. Uh, not calling out everyone's single name. Of course, Tuyu looked like a star. Aid put it on there. And that's what is going to win you fights, win you maps, is having a cast that can have that carry potential. And also a lot of this is, uh, you know, 
there is that great skill shot on Arisa now to be able to cancel a flux like that. Like, Twice. It's, it's a high pressure javelin. Yeah, I, I mean, nailing both of them. And uh, I mean, do you deservedly having some fans here? <laughs> as, uh, this was a great display from him on the Arisa, just sticking with it on both of those sub maps. And I mean, two critical cancellations and the second one leading to the death of Magus. He just had no other recourse but to just drift off the side of the map. It was a monstrous opening there for the set of Simprisses. So off to a hot start here. Legion on Tower not really rearing its head. I don't think we saw any environmental kills from Legion Gone. No, and towards the end there, Legion Gone was dancing around the edge and he's a little too aggressive because if three or four more percent lives through that, then he gets beat and maybe you're in a better spot uh, to push in as they uh, reposition around beats and then maybe Flux isn't near that edge. I mean, you know, what if, what if, what if, but not uh, Lee Jagon's best performance on that map. Yeah, far from it. And uh, a bit of a rough way to begin as we now get ready to go into Midtown, which I believe was the ending draft pick for the side of Simpers. I could be wrong about that one. We'll get confirmation about it, of course, when we come back from the break. But uh, yeah, down 0 1. Certainly not the look from runway that we were expecting, but. You know, I, we were talking about what weaknesses do you try to tackle if you're Simprissa. Uh, Mag's hero pull continues to be a, a bit of a big gap in the armor right now for them. Yeah, it's it's a question that I still don't have an answer to. Um, I'd, I'd like to see Mag's... You know, there were moments that they look good. I think Zest also had a couple of good moments that, that shine for them. But overall, right now, uh, in the new meta, things are shaken up for sure. That it is. Well, let's see if Runaway can collect themselves an answer back, or if Simprissa are going to move out to a 2-0 lead as we get ready to go into our hybrid map. It's going to be after this quick little break, so don't go anywhere.
Alrighty, and we are back. Runaway coming out with the Lijon Tower. Now suffering a loss. Fighting back, able to pick up one of those sub maps, but now they have to go into SPG's pick of Midtown, down 0 1 in the series. Yeah, and th this is what you see when things get uh, shaken up a little bit uh, week to week when, when the meta shifts. Um, but it's not that SPG is playing, well, I, don't, I don't even know how to describe it. the pure meta that we've seen tonight, the Zarya cast, uh, playing a little bit variation of it. And now we should see what SPG really has cooking as they go to their own map pick. And, and I say, well, what they must be cooking something because this is only the second time so far uh, that we've seen Midtown in this region. Yeah, it's been uh, a lot of King's Row dominance, a couple times popping up in Japan, but King's Row has also kind of like really overtaken being kind of the map that everybody wants to play on, started off as Blizzard World. But um, yeah, it's been few and far between when we're seeing differentiation in hybrid here in Korea, but SPG continuing to believe in this map pick for themselves. We'll see if they're gonna be able to find the victory this time around, So if they can put themselves up at match point and force Runaway into a position where they would have to reverse sweep. So, the Runaway fans out there, I'm going to be hoping that they have a bit more of a collected performance here, I suppose, coming into this map. Yeah, I, I think everyone's a little bit stunned. And then you you start to wonder a little bit when, on paper, the, different, uh, the difference between these teams seems so wide. They're like... There's situations where you're wondering, like, well, is is Runaway just kind of messing around here? Are they trying new stuff? But I don't think that's the case. I think they are just... Um, there's also maybe the question, are they overlooking some Prisa gaming, right? Because even in the, in the interview, Runner said, well, they're the worst team in the standings. We just want to win and get out of here kind of thing. So there's some, I don't know, some questions. I don't really like to dive into what the mental is. But right now, you're down 0-1 to the team that is winless so far in the standings. Yeah. And not just winless, 0-3. Like, they've already played three matches, which is the most of anyone so far, and they haven't won a single one, so this is... I'm, I'm stunned. I, I guess <laughs> stunned is too strong. I am... Perplexed? Yes. Perturbed? Maybe that's right? I don't know. It's getting late. Well... <laughs> Perturb's not correct. Yes. We'll see how they Go pair ahead. going into this one. But, okay, so one of the things I was going to mention was that this map, something where the Orisa and the Sigma could have some value, especially on the defense for the Sigma, at least. Uh, so maybe we see that, but for now, it looks like Mag is just going to be opting to match here against the Orisa, as we'll find an opening headshot there from Zest, but it's on the 2U, so won't mean too much of anything. So now, and this first, backpedal. yeah, this first... This first point defense is critical. Uh, if a team's able to grab this first point, usually they're going to grab the second as well. It's just kind of how the map plays out. So you can either full hold or get rolled over for like two points, really. Nice opening volley of headshots there. On the two you hear from Prophetus. He gets taken low, sliding in though. Onto the stairs, he's got nowhere to go. He's out into the open. Argon's able to collect the kill. Magna and the rest of the squad needing the back pedal as much as possible, whereas Zest, He's already in a fairly deep committed spot and will get taken down. Just trying to go for that flank, but hit scan falling. It just makes it that much more difficult. So the first of all, you're going to be staved off here. Sinprissa not losing out on anybody. Yeah, just a difference in immortality fields there between the Cass's. One immortality field is taken down. The other Cass able to live in the immortality field. Hits the headshot, and that's oh. pretty much all that fight was. Okay. Well, you say hit the headshot, there you go. The two-tap coming through, Prophet shut them down, but now they have to try to play in towards this Ant Matrix, so everybody gonna have to be tucked back within the firehouse for the time being. With a spear from two connecting on the Prophet, Immortality Field does come out from Vigilante. Now the Ant Matrix will expire on both sides as they lobbed into the back, Lee Sin Min falling down to 35. Doesn't really blink an eye as the Terror Surge now going to be coming in from 2U and is able to find a quick kill. That eye instantly happened to be popped here by Prophet as everybody's just corralling forward looking to try to take him down. And BJ gone swooping in, trying to come to the rescue, does inevitably lose his life as well. So a tick and a half going to be gained here for the side of Runaway, but half the time bank going to be drained down as they wait to respawn. Yeah, Ice Water in the veins. Lee Su Min's Batiste has been a big part of SPG's success this evening so far just getting a little bit better immortality fields being a little bit more patient taking a little bit better angles and so far the defense holding strong and right now seth we've only got two minutes left time is dwindling 
do give themselves a jumping off point, though, to run away. They're able to find that first tick. There's the Deadeye now going to be popped right as that spear spin gets ready to expire. Good interrupt, though, from Mag. Able to push him back. Stopping that ult from finding any additional value to you. On the high ground there, receiving the sound barrier shielding. Pulled in by Hyunjae, now matched by Lee Jae-gun. As I say Lee Jae-gun's name, he just gets taken out of the equation. Aid with a shot, able to find him, finds the follow-up support there as Vigilante will fall. And everybody now just piling their way up the staircase, looking for more. Hungry for blood here, RSPG, and they are feasting well. Another good window for Lee Soo Min. Vigilante is going to have a chance for a window of their own to bring it through. And this is kind of the last gasp for Runaway on offense. As you mentioned, they do have a single tick, so if they do win the fight, they will take the point, it would seem. But yeah, it's it's kind of going to come down to where they can set up to get good value out of the amplification matrix. Oh, the drop down and oh. look for the terror surge, perhaps. Yes, it is. Pulls them together. Mag going for one of his own, but not going to be able to find any value. Immortality and profit both going to be claimed, but follow up fight here. Looking decent for the side of runaways. They come up with multiple kills. Now just two you corral into the alleyway. Will fall for an extended team kill. And that might just be it here for runaway. I mean, the fight start was looking good here for Simpress, but maybe a little bit overcooked. I, it's, it reminds me of when they were on the verge of winning Control Center and they kind of threw that away by being a little too aggressive. Just a little too aggressive because you have to follow to you in there. You have to try to make him live with the immortality field, but that puts Lee Soo Min out of position. They lose their Baptiste, they lose the Orisa, and it, it reminds me of that. I think they could have played it a little slower as they had been playing it the whole time, but I guess, you know, there's something fun about Batmaning off the top and trying to Terra Surge. Well, I, I see what Mag was going for there. He was actually going for the straight up zoning Terra Surge and it worked a treat. He used his right in front of 2U's. The rest of the team couldn't come to 2U's aid. He ends up getting right. isolated. They get picked off. Okay, Mag actually with the 300 IQ play. Definitely not just a, a complete win. <laughs> That's the cart now. Getting ready to start rotating down here into the underpass. And Matrix is at the ready here from Lee Soo Min, though, and he's going to jump up on the high ground Ooh. and instantly just domes Lee Jang on. <laughs> Holy. All right. Cool play. He's got hops. <clears throat> he's got the movement. Zess not getting the pulse bomb. Mag will be able to find two of you in the meantime as Zess tries to keep himself alive. We'll receive some healing now. So even... With the miss there on the ultimate, still going to be finding value and goes right back into a neutral fight to take down Argon. So Runaway now building up a little bit of momentum, but needs as much time remaining in that bank as they possibly can get. Plenty of time to get another decent fight here. No need to force um, it. Okay. Eight is, eight is unscouted. Okay, well now they know. What? Yeah. Why would you do that? I thought that, that was going to be pretty dangerous there for a moment. Nice interrupt once again. Coming through there. It's to you. Getting that javelin through. Got two taps coming in. Sound barrier now going to be forced out from Hyunjae as he falls low. Backpedal coming through. Down into the underpass once more. Four runaways. We get ready to hit a minute remaining. For the repush back in. Sound barrier for tempo. Terra Surge, however, looking to intercept. Let's drop in, but still not going to be found. Argon with a pulse bomb will be able to claim one. Answering Terra Surge now out here from Mag. For an elimination, but the immortality field is all that's there to greet him. He's going to be taken out of the able to find one. He himself, though, and Mag is going to be taken so very low. As they get tucked away here alongside Vigilante, trying to stay alive. To you, however, stepping to them, trying to get this fight victory here in their favor. Just now backpedaling, bailed out a little bit, and oh, spins the spear perfectly timed to just go ahead and absorb that pulse bomb. So Zest not getting anything, and the cart remains in place. Yeah, final fight territory yet again. To you, must stay alive here. Don't go too aggressive. Get out of there, to you. Don't you hear the music? <laughs> He's playing on the flank, but... Heels being spammed out from Lee Min, just trying to keep him sustained. So far, faultless on either side as Vigilante is going to be the closest one here for Runaway, trying to build up that all. Profit able to find aid. Lee Jigon going to be lost out to you, broken down, but trade backs do come in. Tank available here for the side of Runaway, but now the cleanup continuing as Vigilante also falls. So supportless here are the Runaway members as Mag will get taken out and no one can get themselves over to the cart. So just in front of point B is where it will rest. And Prissa give themselves a very realistic win condition here on Midtown. 
it was really interesting where, you know, I was, I was worried for two year where there's about 20 seconds left. He's alone on that one side. The focus gets drawn to two you and all of SPG rotates up to the other side. And it causes chaos up there. No one's expecting the cast to be behind them, for the tracer to be there. They end up dropping down. And then SPG is able to take the prime position of high ground on the bridge. And you saw Lee Su Min just cleaning it up. Tuyu's aggression has paid off a couple of times. There's some times where maybe he hasn't, but if anything, it's it's confusing uh runaway. You're not expecting the Orisa to be there kind of alone, and then the other the rest of the team to come up and flank you on that weird angle so oh, well. uh, they're they're throwing them away or yeah. throwing them for a loop well hello pause screen my old friend <laughs> cropping back up maybe another headset issue here on the side of runaway we'll get uh, confirmation on that soon and share with you guys but yeah i mean this is brutal and i mean to you you know we, we were talking about it that that overextension on the first map um kind of costing them dearly on control center but this time i mean really limit testing himself and looking way cleaner getting away with way more than yeah. it feels like he should be uh you know capable of just given that he's he's putting himself in a position where he's surrounded by three players on the side of runaway and yes one of them is you know a lucio but he's still just chasing in and then is able to backpedal out of there so just incredible uh line towing i suppose there from to you thus far yeah as we mentioned it's survivability and damage mitigation and arissa has both of those in spades and there there's times where Everyone's shooting at Arissa, and you're looking at it like, surely Arissa must die here. Surely. And clearly not. Clearly not. Just playing it right to the edge. Uh, did get punished that very first map in the control center stage. Um, but so far, a couple of those times, and it's it's strange because we we look at the, the Zarya comp composition, and it seems like the cast is the focus of that. Whereas here, the cast is a complement to the ultra aggressive uh, battle cattle that is Arissa and Lee Su Min just putting all of the support into uh, into to you. It's it's been yeah. a really interesting wrinkle. Yeah, this has been a, a big kind of just change up. You know, just bring this uh, this Arissa into the fold. But I mean, to you right now, looking so comfortable, so on point. I mean, every single javelin it, it feels like is connecting and it feels like every time somebody's trying to go for some form of channeled alt we see that interrupt come through twice in this map already stopping profit from being able to to use the dead eye uh the double cancel earlier on uh you know on to mag when he was playing the sigma stopping those fluxes from coming through setting him off the side of the map and then just immediately turning and and forcing an ajax out of lee, uh, lee jay gone the man is looking very much on point and as right. we continue to see these different tanks being, you know, kind of put out here on display, I'm curious, like, how much more shakeup we're going to be seeing in the meta? Because this is just a very different look <laughs> from Simprisa compared to what we were seeing in the previous set. Uh, but it also looks incredibly strong. Uh, here's the nice thing. We have six more matches over the next couple of days to, to really kind of figure this one out. Um, what I really like with that SPG is doing, and it's something I've always advocated for, is if on paper, perhaps you're outmatched and outgunned by the other team, do something that's going to throw them off. And maybe that's a composition pick, but right now it's aid in the back line um, on cast doing weird stuff. Argon is hiding everywhere. Argon's having one of his better uh, matches that I've seen so far, ha having oh, yeah. some of those individual picks. Uh, so they're playing in a style that's not, we're going to go face, you know, heads up with you. We're going to do weird stuff and you don't know what's coming. Um, so it's, I love that curveball style. And so far uh, they put themselves in a position now to go up to zero on runaway. And I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we touched on it at the beginning of the day, like coming into the series and Prisa hadn't gotten map wins, right? Like I believe they were zero and nine uh, with a zero and three overall match score. So- Well, yeah, I mean, if, if it's, it was all three zero until tonight. So yes, if you lost yeah. three matches, you lost uh, nine yeah. maps. So I mean, um, I don't, yeah. what a turnaround it would be to just take down this team that in the opening series of, of the OWCS Korea was challenging Falcons. That would be such a big boost of confidence here for these players. As for now, waiting, but not seeing anything with the Widowmaker scope. So we'll just be swapping right back over onto that Cassidy. 
Yeah, no uh, no changes here from compositions. Uh, we're in a mirror, but I'm okay with it because it's a mirror I haven't seen before. Uh, <laughs> re really, really fun to watch. And we're going to see if that aggression from some Prusa Gaming continues. It is going to be a little more difficult for them to find the weird flanks that they, they were able to cash in on earlier, uh, on first point especially. Good damage out on the TU on this approach, but that's also just... Comes with the territory of being on the attacking side as he tries to tuck inside there a Firehouse. Not really pushing in to try to challenge him out though, and he's actually going to break back across the street, get into the alleyway here with the rest of his squad. Bang trying to play forward, trying to find some picks here. The Immortality Field does get taken down, and eventually he will be rewarded for that forward push as two you will get clipped. And are going to be cleaned up here on the back side as his men just trying to slide all the way back over towards the spawn to keep himself alive. Looks like he will be able to do so successfully, but Kanjay, the same cannot be said. Yeah, it's like you're watching Runaway learn in real time here. We're not falling for the uh, two of you on one side and then everyone else on the other. We'll just wait. It's two of you. You have to stay there. They forced two of you down so low with a couple of beautiful headshots from Profit to have to try to spin and jump to the team. And that's when the collapse came, able to punish you clean it up. Going now for the reapproach here. To get down to 25 remaining in the time bank. Amp Matrix available for Lee Soon Min. To set it up right here alongside the fire truck. Try to keep two of you alive, but Argon in the meantime going to be taken down. Zest is able to find that elimination. Lee Jae gone. However, they get down to a sliver, finished off by the Deadeye. Eventual opening here for the side of Simprissa, but as I say that, Aiden will just get hounded down as Mag comes sprinting in. I mean, this is just such a bloody back and forth between the two teams. It feels like, realistically, neither of them coming out on top, but given that Runaway gets to just maintain control of the point for the time being, it's a fight win for them. Absolutely. Below two minutes, we've got two pushes left. Simprissa Gaming again. If they get to second point or near it, up 2-0 on Runaway. Runaway, everything on the line here. Uh, nothing really to work with. The big thing to look forward coming up is Tuyu is going to have Terra Surge, and right. it's an ult that can be difficult to get value out of, but Tuyu's managed it. I mean, right now, Runaway oh, are fairly clumped up as well, so could potentially get a big collection of players as that ult is now available. Pulse Bomb as well from Argon about to be online. Sunder is there from Lee Jae Gon. Will be instrumental in trying to turn the tides of the upcoming fight here. As Tuyu for now just looking to shove them back. Taking position here on the stairs. And that spear woven through as well as a good amount of damage down to the mag. Who has to just tail and hide behind this fire truck for the time being. And it will also actually force up the sound barrier shielding. Terra Surge going in, just going to be taking out a lot of that green HP, but widely not going to be find, finding any eliminations. Instead, I pop from profit, not going to be able to find anything either. Aid in a good spot, however, up here on this mid ground, clearing out the immortality field very quickly and immediately finding profit as soon as that is gone. Pulse Pop from Zest will come in off the flank, finding that elimination, but now not going to be taken out and that street player is gone here for the side of Runaways. The Simprissa having the man advantage with you now swapping over onto the Doomfist, looking to rejoin, but Zest has some other ideas. Managing to find one, he's going to be taken low as the Lucio and Argon pushing forward, trying to take him out. Zest looking to push back, dashing in, right click comes through, he gets forced back, the recall coming in, now turns the center to you, takes down the enemy Doomfist, and that second tick has not yet been found. Runaway now in a position where they could very well get this full hold. It looks like that is going to be the case. Tuyu has to switch back to the drawing board. We'll retain 15% of that all charge, but they're going to have to push into Mag's Terra Surge. That's just a, a nice 2v2 takedown from Runaway. Zest and Vigilante, I believe, able to clean it up on the defense. Desperation time for some Prissa's offense here. Nothing Waiting to work for the with. Touch. Waiting for a touch. There it is. Okay. Does eventually come in. And Zest is going to be taken down off the rip, but now Aid traded out. Profit stunned up, taken down to you with the kill. Immortality Field just going to be absorbing the lion's share of that Terra Surge. Just to you getting juggled backward, stuck into the wall. Young Jay unable to escape. Mag able to find the elimination to you, putting Mag down on the floor. The spin comes back through once again, just trying to keep himself alive here, to keep himself relevant in the fight, but Argon with the Pulse Bomb is going to be able to take him down. Lisa been traded out of the It's a Pulse Bomb stick of his own. Cap not going to be there. No one on the point. The overtime bleeds away and Runaway will be able to clinch the win here on Midtown to tie us up. I want to go back about 90 seconds and give uh, Lee Jae Gon all the props in the world for uh, you know, suppressing every instinct in their body to come out and peek and shoot and just played <laughs> really safe with that sound barrier. So that's when you had the surge. That was the only thing that was going to bring them back into it. And you can see Lee Jae Gon wanted to turn around or wanted to peek, but if Lee Jae Gon dies there, they don't have the barrier. They probably all get cleaned up against every instinct in their body, able, <laughs> able to actually hide for about 10 seconds, come in and be the hero with the uh, fight-saving beats. Runaway will tie up the series. 
I mean, still uh, narrow margins here for Runaway to, to be able to get that win there. Attacking side, like uh, a, a cause for concern. It was uh, at least looking that way, but the defense looking a lot stronger here for them. Those defensive sight lines, the uh, advantages that you can get cannot be uh, overstated, I suppose. But uh, I mean, interesting scenes there as it was in fact to you who was then forced to swap off, try to come back here in desperation with that yeah. Sigma. and was the one who was very much suffering at the end. Those last two fights were absolutely knife's edge uh, as far as you've got like Zest down to 20 HP in a 1v1 at Argon and then able to win that and then it goes the other way. Like you mentioned, it was a, a bloodbath is the absolute correct term for most of those fights, really. Uh, not very clean. The next map pick is also, uh, I'm not sure exactly what it is, I don't remember, but it's Runaways. Um, that's that's how the format goes. One, three, and five would be Runaways pick. Um, so yeah, this is much closer than anyone anticipated. I'm, I'm loving what I'm seeing out of some Prisa gaming. Um, I, I wanted a player to step up, and it seems like all the players are stepping up. Yeah, they really have been. That's why this is so darn close. So one-to-one -one the scoreline as we get ready to go to push. That's going to be, I believe, Coliseo coming up next. But first, we're going to go to a quick little break. We'll see you guys in a minute.
Alrighty, welcome back. We are tied up one to one here in our final series of the evening. Runaway able to pull off the full hold there on Midtown to pick up the map victory and deny the match point away from Sinpressa. Now we go over to Coliseo, which as you were just talking about, Hex, is the map pick here for Runaway, but at the same time, so is Lijiang Tower. So it doesn't necessarily mean anything, <laughs> but right. it is a, a bit of a different look compared to Esperanza as far as like what comps become a little bit more viable. So I'm curious if they have something different cooked up for us coming into this map and what that's going to be. Yeah, previously uh, Runaway had been playing on Esperanza. So really, you know, any of the data that we gathered in week one, not really applicable to week two, which is the way Overwatch should be anyway. So it's been great. Some Brizzy Gaming though, all the credit in the world for how well they've played. I mentioned that, you know, we needed a player to step up. One player whose name hasn't been called, uh, Hyunjae, which is a great thing for Hyunjae because you don't really want to call your Lucio's name very often. You want to be, I use this analogy all the time, sorry for bringing up sports, but you want to be the offensive lineman if you're a Lucio. Just don't call my name when I'm doing my job. Because also in some of their losses for SPG, Hyunjae died with beat like three times in a row when they got pushed all the way to the end on Esperanza. So there's a couple of moments where you would like to see them play a little bit better, but so far, so far, if you're not calling the Kyung Jae's name, perfect. Doing your job. All right. Well, we'll see if he can remain in the shadows and out of our ire, or if uh, things are going to go a little bit pear-shaped for the side of Sinpress as we get ready to go into Coliseo and see what these teams are going to be bringing to the table. So this is a map that we can also... Oh, I'm sorry. I spoke over that chance. My bad. I'll get used to it. <laughs> um, I get excited. Uh, this is a map where you can end up seeing uh, Sojourn, especially with those that initial mid fight, because the long sight lines can be really good. We've even seen it, uh, you know, when the meta was not Sojourn, you know, that meta uh, five days ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, it'd be interesting to see what these teams want to run. Um, we don't necessarily know yet. I think Runaway will probably stick on what they're on. I don't trust that Simprisa Gaming is done switching up yet. Surely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I mean, like, Aid, you've been having a good day. The cast that he's been looking solid. Let's not ruin it now by trying to make the somber work because many have tried. Actually, not that many have tried because it just hasn't been looking good. So we'll be straying away from that one. So you will stick with that segment that we were seeing at the back end of Midtown. It's, I mean, Sass, holy hell, taking a ton of damage there on the approach. Lucky to get away with his life. I will think better of it, and they will back up to... The long mid fight. All right, straight back in now over towards the bot. And shielding coming through to you. Quite a bit of green HP there. The spirit just looking to mitigate as much as possible here from aid, deny him getting value. And uh oh, Gunjay, there he is. Prophet gonna find the opening pick, taking him down. As he continues to push forward, we'll also be able to find aid. So opening volley here, very much gonna be in the hands of Runaway as Zest also getting involved. Yeah, the cleanup there and Runaway's damage healers come out and take absolutely no prisoners there. Uh, really nice start for them. And it's, it's always curious to me where teams want to set up on second of Coliseo. You kind of have to play here-ish because you don't want to be automatic low ground and just let them rain on you for a while. But they will back up to the low ground. Pushing down the stairs, Zest on a bit of a walkabout. Has not been scouted yet. Doesn't have a pulse bomb though for a backstab, but it's just gonna look to dive in here. As the Ant Matrix comes through to you now, set out on an island, drop down the rest of the team distracted. Perfect time to strike there from Zest. Even if he doesn't come up with elimination, he just draws the attention of so many players on the side of Simprissa. And now they're starting to run away with this one. Pun not intended, as they get themselves closer and closer to this checkpoint. I mean, I wonder if they thought the Pulse Bomb was incoming because of that. Uh, I didn't see if the Immortality Field was dropped, but it seems like that might be something that, that could happen in those instances. A nice boop is going to send them all off the high ground. Yeah, and then Prophet just duking it out point blank. Range there against Argon. Oh, the two-tap into Hyundai into Aid. Prophet oh. is filling the kill feed. Good God. Team kill here at the hands of Runaway. Just waiting out the checkpoint here. And now that the bot's done with something. his break, they are just going to keep on pushing. Prophet with a wry smile, and I think hands off of the mouse for a second. Might have been typing something, who knows? Uh, that's just speculation. This is the fastest push possible right now on uh, Coliseo. It, it's basically just not been hindered at all, aside from the opening neutral fight. Terra search there from Magnock, not going to be able to find too much, but Argon's already going to be taken down as the sound barrier comes through from Hyunjae. 
not early enough to try to save him. Immortality field now going to be cleared out. There's Aid trying to find a pick here on this high ground, but he's coming up just a little bit short. Mag grenade through, though. Prophet not really paying attention to the flank. He will end up falling, and Aid now having his own pop-off mo pop moment. Comes up with two, looks for a little bit more. Cleanup is complete. Bot can now start pushing here for the Cytosin Prisoner, at least can try to get it back into a pushable position. As Runaway will be respawning with those forward spawns. Zest on a mission again, but the important thing is some Prisa can breathe. Just take a second, breathe, recap. Okay, that just happened. All right, regroup, let's go. Finally gonna put some meterage on the board, I believe, here momentarily, but Zest is still lurking back there. Yeah, he's at it again, it has been noted. You can see his HP bar getting whittled away at ever so slightly there off screen. And Matrix now is gonna be coming through with 2U once again, getting kind of pushed out here onto an island, up into the air. Mag with a spear, able to take him down. Another dead eye nearly available as Prophet just sending out that mag grenade to try to go ahead and cut off any potential flank, but he's noting the players here through the window. Mag will swoop in to save Vigilante's life. Cleanup continuing here. Sion trying to get out with his life intact. Takes a tap, that headshot nearly connecting. Sion will be able to stay alive for the time being. I say that as he is getting chased. He does get out. Uh, offense will continue. Two U's just been getting absolutely bullied. It seems like the call has been made that if someone's going to beat us, it's not going to be their tank play. Okay, well, they actually left the bot on the low ground, and it's going to be stolen away here. So Argon kind of shifting that one back, doing the zest against zest. As aid working. <laughs> just fishing for a headshot, and Prophet eventually gives it to him by accident. And Simprisa will go ahead and regain control. It's like that clip of like when a fish just jumps into the boat. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I was just sitting here. I don't know what you're up to. Uh, yeah, going to be able to pull that one back. Runway, or runaway rather, is going to have to back up a little bit, but they're still in really good position. At 88 and counting forward, they can re-engage whenever they want. This is that, that kind of thing that we talk about every time, or at least I talk about every time on push. Need a couple of fights in a row for some Prisa to come back into this. Okay, Flux now at the ready. To you trying to make up his mind. Sends it, gets the pick up on the one. It's going to be Prophet off screen, though, and not under any pressure. Fortify coming through there from Mag. Make sure that he doesn't get stunned up. And Vigilante, in the meantime, up here onto the high ground. And then Ant Matrix finds Lee Sumin, immediately drops down to join with the rest of the team who are having their own fun. And Jake on finding <laughs> the opposing Lucio. And there you go. Clean up as the mag grenade will take down to you. And once again, the bot moving back here in favor of Runaway. And it was just one ult that they had to use to get this control back. Oh, that was crazy. Everyone took down their opposing number. Prophet took down Aid. Yep. Lee Gon <laughs> took down Hyunjae. <laughs> uh, yeah, Vigilante took down Lee Soo-min. So it's like they're taking it personally now. They're, they're tired of it. Wrap around from behind here. Prophet just... Storming his way forward, finding two quick kills again as the Terra Search will be able to take down Argon and Vigilante will finally zoom in to you. Trying to exit Pulse Bomb Stick here, gonna whittle him lower and lower. Can they finish the kill before he makes it back? No, they cannot. Zest not wanting to over pursue for that one. Roll just back, pedal with the bot again. Now getting to triple digits for Runaway. This is where Senprisa Gaming has fallen apart before on push maps on these very last seconds where it seems like you have all the advantages in the world, but then they just get pushed all the way back to the spawn. We'll see if they can find some muster to uh, hold this defense. Yeah, I mean, even with there being nearly four minutes remaining, this is still a huge amount of distance to try to fall back. They do have a decent amount of tools to try to work with here as they drop down onto the low ground, needing to try to get the bot pushed through this underpass. Spear is going to be exchanged on either side as they just get a bit of a stalemate here in the hall. Mortality fields need to be cleared out. Pulse Bomb goes in, Argon's able to find two. Profit and Lee Jay gone, both blown to smithereens. Zest will only be able to find a single, singular elimination, and now he's trying to backpedal his way out to safety. A handedly won here from the side of Sintrissa, but it cost him damn near everything. Uh, it, I don't think it's too early to say that Sintrissa kind of has to be perfect the rest of the way through. Uh, just the way that the bot ends up slowing down when oh, they actually have to push. Zest so trying to disrupt gonna, this taxi here. A menace. Yeah, you can see him just whittling him away, but Aid, good opening kill, we'll find Prophet. It's to you, just stays tucked in the corner, waiting for those heals to come in. Stick goes in though, Lee Sumin is going to be taken down. Solid one there from the side of Zest, as HP bar is starting to dwindle here on the side of Simprisa, and Mag moving forward, is able to find one Vigilante with a quick check over on the left, spotting Genjai, taking him out. The kills continue to fly, and as soon as it seems like Simprisa are getting themselves back into the driver's seat, they're just getting ripped right back out of the car, GTA style. I mean, Vigilante has had such a good map. It's been 
crazy the amount of value they've been able to get out of these these windows hitting every single shot there was a time when we called baptiste better soldier and vigilante's kind of showing you why off and making up his mind as far as which approach he wants to go with. Looks like the decision's going to be called for him to play alongside Mag. Terra Surge is at the ready. As there's going to be the pushback, and Immortality Field will spare them for the time being. Probably going to be taken out now. Vigilante's going to be taken down. As Mag is able to equalize on that Baptiste front. So, so far, it's just going to be the same players getting taken out on either side. So you continues to be under a bit of fire. Healing, trying to get pumped out there from Hyun Jae. It's just not enough to keep him alive through this volley that just slays down. But Argon quickly does trade it back. Keeps them back into a winning position in that fight. But again, a bot in their control. Forward spawns right. available for Runaway. Can they go further? Can they actually start this push again? Runaway hasn't been fighting SPG for about the last eight minutes. They're fighting the clock, and that's all that really matters. If these fights take long, as, as long as there's a stalemate, Runaway's gonna win it. Like, that's all that really matters. And on top of it, they've been winning every single 1v1 one, one, one one that they've taken. Argon trying to pressure, but two players facing off against him there. Statue side. As Deadeye will force them back here for the time being. Profit really just... We were playing with fire there. It takes a little bit of damage from the Deadeye in the end. The 8 Matrix now is now, it is now going to be coming through. Both on Lobden from Argon. Not really able to find too much other than the Immortality Field. A getting profit, but still going to be a 2 for 1 now. A 3 for 1 exchange here. And very much in Runaway's favor. They'll add to it because Argon will also get dropped. Runaway now very much in full control. And I mean, you were talking about it before. That it's already in dire straits for the Citus in prison. Now this is basically miracle territory for them if they want to be able to come away with a win. They have to be perfect, and these fights have to be like full-on clean team fights. You can't keep someone alive that's, that's going to straggle behind and, and draw you even that much further back. Uh, and this kind of goes against what Simprisa Gaming was successful at, uh, of being chaos and being attacking at all angles. They kind of have to stay together, and it's it's a miracle situation, you're right. Push in, just looking to isolate this Cassidy into the back line. The die forward is gorgeous. Argon, in the meantime, does find Vigilante. But without that Cassidy, things are going to be that much more difficult here for the side of Simprissa. Argon, doing his damage, is able to find one. Gets rid of Prophet, and DJ Gone going to be taken down. Bot now starting to move forward here. Possessed still making his presence known. Comes away with the kill onto the Lucio, so a trade-off in that regard. Now with a closer run back, so it went away at full advantage. It's a good kill on Vigilante, that's almost all they're healing, but here comes Vigilante back, looking for the Pound of Flesh. Matrix set up here onto the high ground. Terra Surge coming down. Immortality Field's gonna be popped. That's all the two is gonna be able to find. His own Immortality Field spares him for a little bit longer, but Zest eventually will find that kill. Vigilante's cleaned up and Mag just sprinting around the back, getting right in on top of Aid. Finding the kill, getting the spear, pushing him back. And that is gonna be Runaway very dominantly taking the win here on Colosseo and taking the lead. I would love to know why they chose Coliseo. Part of me wants to think that Vigilante wanted it because if you noticed every chance that they got to just moon boots to high ground, um, I forgot what the boots are actually called, Exo something. Um, I call them moon boots. Anyway, the jump mechanic for Baptiste, you take halfway through like the, the mid push, the mid fight push, and then you're able to get to the, the perfect platform for the distance. That's where lived lived their life, able to drop matrixes, get so much damage going in. Really, really well played there from Vigilante as Runaway will bring it back. And after some shaky starts, that's the dominant performance we expected. Yeah, it was looking very, very good for them. And I mean, just given what we're, we're seeing from Mag as well, it seems like Arisa very much in his wheelhouse. And uh, mm -hmm. I, for one, I think he should just keep playing that and only that for the time being. Because everything else was looking uh, pretty catastrophic. But right now, it's been clean with the Arisa. The only small nitpick on Runaway for that map, if we had to find one, and I'm only going to do it because it's funny, was that Prophet was trying to catch bullets with his teeth. Uh, like uh, once, more than once, yeah. stepping out and just trying to perform a little uh, old-timey magic trick there. But beyond that, it was pretty picture-perfect for Runaway. Yeah, not everybody can be pet and Teller, and that's why they say don't try it at all. <laughs> so they did get punished a couple times there, just walking into the spam, but sometimes you're pre-firing an angle and you're just able to able to come away with it we've seen it time and time again in uh multiple games but right away now yeah, in a position say, you, you know you know about it <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit you know about it pretty well yeah but yeah we are going to go to a break though before we get into flashpoint we'll see if that is going to be the final map of this series or if simpressa can in fact take us all the way to escort when we come back
And we are back. Runaway looking dominant on Coliseo. Now take the lead here in this series. Two to one. And Sinprissa, a last chance to fight back to try to get their second map win here of the tournament. As well as extend us over to our first escort here in Korea. <laughs> if nothing else, I'm rooting for that because I'd like to see the first escort map uh, so <laughs> far. Uh, SPG you know, pulled it off on Li Lijong Tower. They brought some interesting stuff, some really aggressive gameplay, even on their defense on Midtown, the aggression and confusion, chaos that they brought really kind of threw Runaway for a loop. Uh, but Runaway was able to pull a better defense there. And then Coliseo was uh, completely one-sided, nothing but dominant from Runaway from every single player on that squad. We're gonna go into Flashpoint, which is SPG's map pick. I don't think we're gonna see anything wild as these teams kind of have settled into their own little meta yeah it seems like it's just been you know maybe after the the first maps and some handshakes were exchanged they said you know what let's just be good with go to the risa okay cool so are we uh but maybe that will change <laughs> as we do get ready to go into this one i forget which map we have is it saravasa it is saravasa okay yes it was one of the two uh, so saravasa is gonna be coming up <laughs> yeah uh first time we've seen saravasa uh, obviously, since uh, we've only seen one Flashpoint so far, and that was uh, Junker City, I believe it's called. Uh, New Junk, yeah. Yeah, New Junk City. That's right. All right. Well, production, they have hit the dubstep button, so we are getting ready to go into this map to see whether or not it is going to be the final one of the series and of the evening, or if we can have that ever elusive yeah, so escort. Somewhere Wolf's out there with a surge of energy and he doesn't know why. And it's because the dove step button got hit. Because that is a stagnant crocodile? Alligator? I don't know how to identify the difference. <laughs> uh, it's something to do with snout shape, but I don't know if that one's distinct enough to tell if it's an alligator or a crocodile. Yeah, I... I just usually avoid areas where those creatures are, so I don't have to worry about trying to identify <laughs> uh, where they, what they, what they are. As, okay, already the fight hath begun. Big damage out here onto Mag. Fan of the hammer only had two bullets loaded up, so not gonna be able to find too much there. But to you will be able to find Mag in the end. Zest trading one back. We zoom in, but up into the air go the supports here from Runaway, and as they hit the ground, they will stay there. A clean opening fight from the side of Sin Prissa as they look to get the first lockdown here at the flashpoint. Ah, uh, the bloodbath continues, and it's just absolute chaos there uh, through, but the, the throughput from some Prisa Gaming a little bit stronger, and it, those those first kills are so critical uh, to be able to take down Mag on the other side. It's just so much sustain, so much uh, bullet negation that you don't have. It's going to be very tough. Mag spinning the spear. Kind of just using that to really peek forward and get an idea of where the enemies are going to be playing out here on the point. Now, let's start working their way forward. It's to you under a great deal of pressure. As that immortality field coming through, trying to bail him out. Mag grenade sent in. Not going to be finding an elimination there, but Zest will be able to get me zoom in in the back end. Let's recall use here from Argon. Building up now, pulse bomb online. You're not finding anything there, excuse me, as I'm choking on my water. And that's going to be the cleanup coming through from Runaways. The go ahead and establish some control. Yeah, able to take that one back, and maybe maybe this is the pick that they wanted over New Junk City um, because of some of these weird angles. I only infer that because Aid was taking that very strange off angle, trying to get some picks going. But both these maps play very similarly. Um, yeah, we'll see if the Simprisa Gaming can get set up again in a way that I think they should go as aggressive as possible. It's been their bread and butter. Aggressive onto the point, Terra Surge, windows up. Okay. Matrix does go through. Immortality is going to be cleared on either side. Four more ultimates to work with on this here on the side of Simprissa as Vigilante now going to be using his own amp matrix. And I coming through. Eight again, just inching forward, looking for some line of sight. And in the meantime, Runaway have to give over this cap. So Simprissa back in control for now. Counterattack coming in now. It's Runaway charging forward to you, however, trying to get himself into the back lines. The sound barriers are exchanged. Terra Surge going to be coming through to you, looking for the kill. He's going to be able to find one. Lee on going to be eliminated. Aid going to be traded up at the same time. As the point continues to tick up here. Zest coming up with two eliminations. Now looking for this effective back cap here as the rest of Sin Prince are very much distracted as they're falling to the wayside. The kills come in. The flip comes through right as they hit 99%. And Runaway might just be able to rug pull this one. 
yeah, uh, 99%, 86, counting up. Yeah, last fight incoming. I wonder if... Okay, they are going to try to fight this one. Uh, sorry, I was answering a message. I don't think they can and... make it. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, it's going to be frustrating I'm... there for Simprissa, but the timings of the deaths just kind of brutal. Now they find themselves in a bit right. of a neutral spot, though, as far as getting over to the point with Lee Jay gone dead. That means they absolutely can take first control here. Yeah, if there's any silver lining, it's that they're in a nice position now, at least. Getting the defensive setup can be everything. <laughs> Aiden knows Zest is back here, but you can't sit there and babysit that corner all day. We'll have to redirect his sights here eventually. This looks like Runaway just going to look to rotate up onto that high ground a bit, so Aid will get forced back. We're here into the many pack rooms. Some shots flying. A couple decent connections here is the point. Now going to be unlocked. Simprissa, can they hold on to that first arrival? Will it get taken away from them? Amp Matrix is making things damn difficult for them, though, as 2U nearly gets taken down. Immortality Field was forced out, and Runaway are going to get the opening lockdown here as they look to use their own Amp Matrix, but Prophet immediately just takes it away from them. These two men dominated as the Jedi cancel into the headshot on the Argon. It is beautiful from Prophet. And uh, a team kill as Runaway say, no, this is ours. You love to hear that bell, and right now it's just the windows are working out so well, and that's been the big value proposition from one side or the other. Runaway able to drop it on the point, force everyone back, force two you extremely low. Some Prisa Gaming regroups, does their own window, and Runaway does the thing that you love to do every time when someone drops an ant mage, just run through it to the other side. Okay, hello Mag, just goes diving forward and instantly finds two kills. Aiden, Lee, Sue, Min, both gonna be taken out here. As Runaway is getting so aggro with it. Effectively catch them off guard here at Simprissa. Once again, said the respawn waiting for Tuyu, and I think it might be a similar situation where they just might not be able to touch this. I don't think he can come back in. Uh, right now, run away completely in control of the tempo. Okay, and they're working their way back. Waiting to see the touch coming through 99%. No, can't get it. A lead now here, significantly for Runaway as they bring this up to map and match points. And Prissa needing to reverse sweep here on Suravasa. They want to get us over to Escort. I mean, use him if you got him. Every Q in the bank for some Prissa except for the window. But meanwhile, on the other side, Runaway's got the important ones. Both support ultimates coming up for Runaway. And the window has been the big difference right now, and Vigilante has it. Yeah, I mean, even with the five ults that they had, you know, getting ready to, to fight over that first point, it didn't go the way of Sinfressa. Window coming through. Aid now going to be using that dead eye, but has no angle whatsoever, so has to cancel that one. Quick one. As he rolls around, but is immediately being met with an immense amount of damage. Prophet sliding over to the side, just trying to really hound him down. Aid does manage to win out that fight, but it's still going to be two players now going to the side of Sinfressa. As Hyunjae will also go off the side of the map, I believe. Uh, Mag going to be taken out here. A little bit of reprieve found as they just look to isolate and finish off to you. With that happening, Runaway are going to get the initial lockdown once more here now on the final point. Do the can-can because you can can Zest. Uh, Zest with a 15-player kill streak has done everything that, that he wants so far. And also just being such a distraction and annoyance. You can see whenever we get AIDS POV look uncertain always checking corners and they've been right zest is around that corner but there's nothing you can do about it okay zoning dead eye from profit slows him up by some crucial percentage here but now ant matrix down staring over towards the point can they utilize this runaway just pulling back looking to break those lines of sight mortality field cleared up aid will find an opening kill here as Lee Gone will get taken down and run away. Widely just respecting this, we'll just back off. Well, we've mentioned it all throughout the night, and it, I think it still bears repeating because we haven't seen much Flashpoint, but at 58%, that is a single win for Runaway uh, that needs to come through, just based on how quickly it, it counts up, uh, like double the time, I think, of control. So uh, it counted as 75 or 80 at the very least, and we'll see if Mag continues to play the, the aggressive Orisa. Um, That's worked out really well. Okay, both well, going to be hindered as the Mag Grenades do get exchanged, but Prophet continues to try to push forward, and to you is happy to collect that kill. Finds one, gets himself a second as Lee Jae Gong going to be taken down. Now the third as the melee punch comes across. Things start looking very good here for the Citizen Prison to close this one out. Now it's Runaway who desperately needed to try to respawn in time. 
it's, I don't hate the instinct of going in and then Li Jigong trying to save them. If they would have just left, it would have been a good value proposition because the immortality had to be burned and they put Semprissa into a very strange position. As it stands, though, Semprissa is going to hold on to this point. Wish I had an overhead. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like Runaway's coming back. Okay, and they do manage to get over here. The force up the overtime, and they have the Ant Matrix to help try to get this flip back into their favor. But then from there, they would have to try to hold this one out. Pulse Bomb, able to find Prophet. Aiden going to be taken down. Back and forth here between the two squads as Mag is able to find to you, and Hyunjae going to be committing the beat here. Has to for them to try to maintain control of this one, but now it's been taken away. Run away. Taking the point to themselves. The sound barrier not going to be resulting in any form of win here. Hyunjae probably wishing that he had held on to it for a future fight. They will get one yeah. more chance. Hyunjae getting out is absolutely enormous. They don't have to wait for the respawn, so the taxi will show up a little bit quicker, but this is it. Down to it. This is match fight. Gonna be close enough for this touch. Contest was there. Just tiptoeing across the line to force that one out. Profit gonna be knocked down a little bit low there. The spear comes across. Could be a dead eye if you dead eye situation, but now the Ant Matrix invested here from Lee Soon Min. Aid immediately having to cancel on that one. The shielding is there from Lee Jae Gone. Terror Surge coming through. Able to find Aid. Hyun Jae going to be taken out, and it's looking like it's all going to go the way of Runway. Runaway, as it's just the final kill coming through. Prophet getting some squats in, working on, uh, you know, not ignoring his leg day workouts. And that will be Runaway getting the win in the end. A bit of a rocky start for them from sure, dropping that Lee Shan Tower looking lost when it came down to what composition, what tank they wanted to be running. But as we got over into Midtown, got them on that defensive side, everything really started to click. It seems like years ago now where Mag switched to MAGA, doesn't it? It seems, <laughs> seems like a very long time ago where that interesting swap came in. Uh, once Mag figured out not only to switch to the Orisa, which I think was like the, the swap that needed to come in on Midtown, but then as the series went on, got much more comfortable playing the Orisa, was managing the cools. And I think once we got to Flashpoint, started to really understand the, just how aggressive uh, they could be with the Orisa, especially given the amount of support they were getting. This is a strange composition because it's not the same as Protect the President, um, not the same as Protect the Cass. Speaking of Cass, yet another Cass player of the match, it's Profit. It is indeed. Profit coming away with this one. I, I mean, look, I think that this one could go a, a multitude of different directions as far as who you're going to be voting for, for player of the match. Zest in these last two maps in particular was looking like the Zest of old, the one that was there on mm -hmm. the, you know, the Soul Infernal coming through alongside MN3, just being an absolute god of that Tracer play. His flanks were, were just scary and constantly dragging the attention. Uh, of the enemy yep. players there on Coliseo, but Prophet able to get it in the end. You and I also were saying we went for Vigilante because we thought that he was so instrumental in the turnaround here right. to run away. Yeah, and I mean, like you said, it could have gone to a lot of different people. I'll be honest, I went Vigilante because we were debating. I'm like, Vigilante, your Prophet, and I was. I just said, I've got a little bit of cast fatigue right now, to be honest, so I'm going to give it to Vigilante, and I also, it was recency bias based on the, the great Coliseo that Vigilante put down, but Zest showing up big. It's it's a team award, so let's give it to Profit. Why not? And hey, especially with the very last shot of the match being Profit working on those quads uh, and glutes, you know, give it to him. Why not? Uh, today was where it's Cass's world and we're just living in it. But this last match with the Orisa stuff was super interesting and super different than the uh, than the Zarya composition too. They play so differently. I would love to see these compositions clash. Yeah, I mean, maybe in some future matchups, perhaps, we'll get to see those comps kind of come together here. Seems depending, but I mean, yeah, it, it, there's some great moments here. This Coliseo is really where you could just kind of feel the, the, the tide shifting. You know, even with the full hold on Midtown, it still felt like it was going to end up being a lot closer uh, than it was going into this third map. Runaway just so very confident and not not even necessarily showing you know why they picked the map uh because we just saw them continue to run the same comps but i think we saw a good amount of comfort from them uh there so uh, whether it's comp dependent whether it's just they like call sam more than new queen street and, and whatnot or esperanza i don't know but they look so good there and flashpoint while well, they're able to take it away so an unfortunate loss for the side of Prissa, but a great one here for runaway as they get themselves out into the positive figures, but let's hand it over to Quest for the translation for our interview. Thank you very much, casters. The final POTM interview 
of the day is with Prophet from Runaway. 네, 승리팀 런어웨이의 프로펫 선수와 인터뷰 나눠보도록 하겠는데요. 프로펫 선수. So please introduce yourself, Prophet. 런어웨이. 런어웨이에서. And I am the main DPS for Runaway. 민빈이라고 Prophet. 네, 반갑습니다. 자, 오늘 경기 4세트까지 접전에 접전을 The match was a close one today with Runaway taking the victory at map 4. So tell us how today's match went from your perspective. And he says that I think the match went as expected. Runaway beat SPG in the open qualifiers and beat them again today as well. So what was the mindset? And he says that we just played our own game. After his runaway's victory on Midtown, the momentum shifted completely. So what was the team atmosphere like on your end? And he says he doesn't know? Oh, he didn't hear the question properly. Okay. Was the atmosphere a little bit more positive? And he gives a little nod. On map three, you went on a five kill streak with, and with all the Cassidy's receiving POTM today. So, um, how do you rank your own Cassidy? And he thinks that today he feels that a little bit he played a little bit worse than he used to. Um, and that, um, in the remaining matches, he will make sure to show up his um, or showcase a better Cassidy performance. And he thinks that he's the first, he is the best, ca best Cassidy player among the other Cassidy's that received POTM today. And a lot of fans here for on the runaway side, so who, would you like to say anything to the fans? Says, despite being a weekday, thank you for coming to cheer us on today. And that was the interview with Prophet. Congratulations once again, and back to the casters. All right, thank you very much, Quest, for the translation. And I mean, honestly, I think that uh, Prophet, I'm kind of glad that he's taking the approach of like, you know what, this was still a rough day. We were expecting a 3-0. Runner came out in that opening interview and said, you know, this is the lowest ranked team. We think that we're, we should be able to get out of here quickly. Um, so it tells you, shows you that he's taking every single match very seriously. It's the mindset you have to have if you're Runaway. Runaway, a, a team that's... I don't, you know, there's a lot of nostalgia about there. There were some pundits saying, like, they it's not the best squad, but they're the only team. Well, I mean, look, it's very, very early, but they're the team that look best against uh, Falcons. Falcons, who everyone already anointed as champions. Sure. Um, so, yeah, you have to get better all the time. And it's it's got to be a disappointment for them to have the, the kind of sloppy showing that they did against a team that was 0-3 to come into the day. Um, but, you know, the, the great thing about today's matchups is that there's finally... One's on the board, at least on the <laughs> side, and here are the standings. Well, maybe that will be the trend moving forward, but for the side of Simprisa, yes, that first match victory is still going to be eluding them much like that before them. At least we're able to, you know, get that first map out of the way, play overall a, a decently close series aside from, you know, that that Coliseo, which clearly is going to need some some workshopping. FTG, in the meantime, will find themselves at least somewhat, you know, maybe temporarily in that first place spot, having played three series and only dropping the one map thus far. But Falcons are going to be very much hungry to go ahead and retake that position with their upcoming matches as well. 
Yeah, I mean, maybe it's just the format, but it feels like every game is absolutely critical because it feels like there's a, a really tight race uh, in the in those top spots. And yeah. I'm just really stoked to see how it all shakes out here. And when you've got a team like SPG able to really uh, put the screws to run away, that, that's amazing as well. All right, well, let's take a look at the matches that we're going to be seeing here tomorrow, as it's going to be Vec going up against Falcons. So we're cut out for them for sure, as Falcons continue to look very dominant overall. And we've got Yeti versus Whack. I'm going to continue going with Whack here, because uh, I think that that one could honestly be a damn good set. Well, you get you get Whack, so... I mean, there's just individual stuff I'm looking forward to if this meta kind of sticks. Lip gets to play Cassidy. Shu gets to play Baptiste. Like, there's so many interesting stuff that could happen in that matchup. Uh, should be great to see. And even on that same point, Genesis is a team we've only seen play once. But then imagine, like, Decay gets to play Cassidy. Uh, you know, Kalios can play whatever tank they choose. So, uh, really, if today is the blueprint of kind of where the meta is shifting, then there's a lot of really interesting players and teams that I want to see how they adopt to it and who plays what. It's going to be really fun. Yeah, I mean, clearly right now, just all these matches, people coming out here with the Cassidy, it is a, a bit of a new wave here in the meta, something changing rapidly over the course of you know a week, but it feels like this might just be here to stay, at least until somebody can come up with something that can you know crush this, as you were talking about. Who is going to be the one that kind of engineers the the counteraction to this this Cassidy comp, we'll have to just wait and see. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't me, it was Runner. He's like, we've, we've got people working on how to beat this. Uh, I just thought it was a really funny way to phrase it so that uh, we're trying to solve the meta, trying to solve a counter. And that's the great thing about Overwatch at the very highest levels. It's like, this is the meta right now. And people are like, well, does it have to be? What if we did this instead? Like, there's got to be a way to beat it. And it's always going to be evolving the, this kind of constant rock, paper, scissors, which really at the core of the game is what Overwatch at, uh, should be at, the, at its yeah. best. That's uh, where Overwatch is the most fun to watch. I mean, there's a reason why you can change heroes after you leave the spawn room doors. It's so that you can try to counteract it, you know, the comps and the actions of your opponents and whatnot. So if it's not working out, be able to make those adjustments on the fly. And uh, yeah, as, as they continue, as Runner has his best people on it, uh, maybe we'll see what that, that counter comp is going to end up being. Maybe it's just one little piece that needs to be shifted and then everything else is going to be aligned. We'll have to just wait and see. But I mean, very different looks here across the board. We had Reinhardt being, uh, Reinhardt being played unironically. We saw Orissa coming through, uh, you know, Sigma, everything coming out here as well as those Zarya compositions. So I'm excited to see what tomorrow is going to be holding for us as well as we do have those three matches coming up. And I believe it's going to be myself and Hex once again, bringing you guys those, that action. But it's been an absolute pre pleasure to uh, come into week two here alongside you, Hex. Been a very long time, so it's going to be back alongside you. But that's going to do it from us tonight. So make sure you guys tune in tomorrow, same place, same time.